The Blue Poetry Book by Andrew Lang Introduction The purpose of this collection is to put before children, and young people, poems which are good in themselves, and especially fitted to live, as Theocritus says, on the lips of the young. The editor has been guided to a great extent, in making his choice, by recollections of what particularly pleased himself in youth. As a rule, the beginner in poetry likes what is called, objective, art, verse with a story in it, the more vigorous the story the better. The old ballads satisfy this taste, and the editor would gladly have added more of them, but for two reasons. First, there are parents who would see harm, where children see none, in Tam Lane and Clerk Saunders. Next, there was reason to dread that the volume might become entirely too Scottish. It is certainly a curious thing that, in Mr. Palgrave's Golden Treasury, where some seventy poets are represented, scarcely more than a tenth of the number were born north of Tweed. In this book, however, intended for lads and lassies, the poems by Campbell, by Sir Walter Scott, by Burns, by the Scottish songwriters, and the Scottish minstrels of the ballad, are in an unexpectedly large proportion to the poems by English authors. The editor believes that this predominance of northern verse is not due to any exorbitant local patriotism of his own. The singers of the north, for some reason or other, do excel in poems of action and of adventure, or to him they seem to excel. He is acquainted with no modern ballad by a southern Englishman, setting aside Cristobal and the Ancient Mariner, poems hardly to be called ballads, which equals The Eve of St. John. For spirit-stirring martial strains few Englishmen since Drayton have been rivals of Campbell, of Scott, of Burns, of Hogg with his song of Donald MacDonald. Two names, indeed, might be mentioned here, the names of the late Sir Francis Doyle and of Lord Tennyson. But the scheme of this book excludes a choice from contemporary poets. It is not necessary to dwell on the reasons for this decision. But the editor believes that some anthologist of the future will find in the poetry of living English authors, or of English authors recently dead, a very considerable garden of that kind of verse which is good both for young and old. To think for a moment of this abundance is to conceive more highly of Victorian poetry. There must still, after all, be youth and metal in the nation which could produce the Ballad of the Revenge, Lucknow, the Red Thread of Honor, the Loss of the Birkenhead, the Forsaken Merman. How they brought the good news from Ghent to Ikes, the Pied Piper of Hamelin, and many a song of Charles Kingley's, not to mention here the work of still later authors. But we only glean the fields of men long dead. For this reason, then, namely, because certain admirable contemporary poems, like Lucknow and The Red Thread of Honor, are unavoidably excluded, the poems of action, of war, of adventure, chance to be mainly from Scottish hands. Thus Campbell and Scott may seem to hold a preeminence which would not have been so marked had the works of living poets, or of poets recently dead, been available. Yet in any circumstances these authors must have occupied a great deal of the field, Campbell for the vigor which the unfriendly Leiden had to recognize, Scott for that Homeric quality which, since Homer, no man has displayed in the same degree. Extracts from his long poems do not come within the scope of this selection. But, estimated even by his lyrics, Scott seems, to the editor, to justify his right, now occasionally disdained, to rank among the great poets of his country. He has music, speed, and gaiety, as in, The Hunting Song or in, Nora's Vow. For all the gold, for all the gear. For all the lands both far and near. That ever valor lost or won. I would not wed the early sun. Lines like these sing themselves naturally in a child's memory, while there is a woodland freshness and a daring note in. Oh, Brignall banks are wild and fair. And Greta woods are green. Young Lachinvar goes, as dauntingly as wantonly, to his bridal, as the heir of Macpherson's rant to his death, in a wonderful swing and gallop of verse. While still, out of dim years of childhood far away, one hears how all the bells are ringing in Dunfermline town for the wedding of Alice Brand. From childhood, too, one remembers the quietism of Lucy Ashton's song, and the monotone of the measure. Vacant heart and hand and eye. Easy live and quiet die. 
The wisdom of it is as perceptible to a child as that other lesson of Scots, which rings like a clarion. To all the sensual world proclaim. One glorious hour of crowded life. Is worth an age without a name. Then there are his martial pieces, as the gathering song of Donald D.H.U. and the Cavalier, and there is the inimitable simplicity and sadness of Proud Maisie, like the dirge for Clearista by Meliager, but with a deeper tone, a stronger magic. And there is the song, which the fates might sing in a Greek chorus, the song which Meg merrily sang. Twist ye, twine ye, even so. These are but a few examples of Scott's variety, his spontaneity, his hardly conscious mastery of his art. Like Phineas of Ithaca, he might say, None has taught me but myself, and the God has put into my heart all manner of lays, all but the conscious and elaborate manner of lays. Which has now such power over some young critics that they talk of Scott's redeeming his bad verse by his good novels. The taste of childhood and of maturity is simpler and more pure. In the development of a love of poetry it is probable that simple, natural, and adventurous poetry like Scott's comes first. And that it is followed later, followed but not superseded, by admiration of such reflective poetry as is plain and even obvious, like that of Longfellow, from whom a number of examples are given. But, to the editor at least, it seems that a child who cares for poetry is hardly ever too young to delight in mere beauty of words, in the music of meter and rhyme, even when the meaning is perhaps still obscure and little considered. A child, one is convinced, would take great pleasure in Mr. Swinburne's choruses in Atlanta, such as Before the Beginning of Years, and in Shelley's Cloud and his Arethusa. For this reason a number of pieces of Edgar Poe's are given, and we have not shrunk even from including the faulty Yulalum, because of the mere sound of it, apart from the sense. The three most famous poems of Coleridge may be above a child's full comprehension, but they lead him into a world not realized, an unsubstantial fairy place, bright in a morning mist, like our memories of childhood. It is probably later, in most lives, that the mind wakens to delight in the less obvious magic of style, and the less ringing, the more intimate melody of poets like Keats and Lord Tennyson. The songs of Shakespeare, of course, are for all ages, and the needs of youth comparatively mature are met in Dryden's Ode on Alexander's Feast, and in Lycidas and the Hymn for the Nativity. It does not appear to the editor that poems about children, or especially intended for children, are those which a child likes best. A child's imaginative life is much spent in the unknown future, and in the romantic past. He is the contemporary of Leonidas, of Agincourt, of Bannockburn, of the Forty-Five, he is living in an heroic age of his own, in a fiatia where the gods walk visibly. The poems written for and about children, like Blake's and some of Wordsworth's, rather appeal to the old, whose own childhood is now to them a distant fairy world, as the man's life is to the child. The editor can remember having been more mystified and puzzled by Lucy Gray than by the Eve of St. John at a very early age. He is convinced that Blake's Nurse's Song, for example, which brings back to him the long, the endless evenings of the northern summer, when one had to go to bed while the hills beyond Ettrick were still clear in the silver light, speaks more intimately to the grown man than to the little boy or girl. Hoods, I remember, I remember, in the same way, brings in the burden of reflection on that which the child cannot possibly reflect upon, namely, a childhood which is past. There is the same tone in Mr. Stevenson's Child's Garden of Verse, which can hardly be read without tears, tears that do not come and should not come to the eyes of childhood. For, beyond the child and his actual experience of the world as the ballads and poems of battle are, he can forecast the years, and anticipate the passions. What he cannot anticipate is his own age, himself, his pleasures and griefs, as the grown man sees them in memory, and with a sympathy for the thing that he has been, and can never be again. It is his excursions into the untraveled world which the child enjoys, and this is what makes Shakespeare so dear to him, Shakespeare who has written so little on childhood. In the Midsummer Night's Dream the child can lose himself in a world familiar to him, in the fairy age, and can derive such pleasure from Puck, or from Ariel, as his later taste can scarce recover in the same measure. 
Falstaff is his playfellow, a child's Falstaff, an innocent creature, as Dickens says of Tom Jones in David Copperfield. A boy prefers the wild prince and coins to Barbara Luthwaite, the little girl who moralis to the lamb. We make a mistake when we write down to children, still more do we err when we tell a child not to read this or that because he cannot understand it. He understands far more than we give him credit for, but nothing that can harm him. The half-understanding of it, too, the sense of a margin beyond, as in a wood full of unknown glades, and birds, and flowers unfamiliar, is great part of a child's pleasure in reading. For this reason many poems are included here in which the editor does not suppose that the readers will be able to pass an examination. For another reason a few pieces of no great excellence as poetry are included. Though they may appear full of obviousness to us, there is an age of dawning reflection to which they are not obvious. Longfellow, especially, seems to the editor to be a kind of teacher to bring readers to the more reflective poetry of Wordsworth, while he has a sort of simple charm in which there is a foretaste of the charm of Tennyson and Keats. But everyone who attempts to make such a collection must inevitably be guided by his own recollections of childhood, of his childish likings, and the development of the love of poetry in himself. We have really no other criterion, for children are such kind and good-natured critics that they will take pleasure in whatever is given or read to them, and it is hard for us to discern where the pleasure is keenest and most natural. The editor trusts that this book may be a guide into romance and fairyland to many children. Of a child's enthusiasm for poetry, and the life which he leads by himself in poetry, it is very difficult to speak. Words cannot easily bring back the pleasure of it, now discerned in the far past like a dream, full of witchery, and music, and adventure. Some children, perhaps the majority, are of such a nature that they weave this dream for themselves, out of their own imaginings, with no aid or with little aid from the poets. Others, possibly less imaginative, if more bookish, gladly accept the poet's help, and are his most flattering readers. There are moments in that remote life which remain always vividly present to memory, as when first we followed the chase with Fitz James, or first learned how the Baron of Smailhomey rose with day. Or first heard how. All day long the noise of battle rolled. Among the mountains by the winter sea. Almost the happiest of such moments were those lulled by the sleepy music of The Castle of Indolence, a poem now perhaps seldom read, at least by the young. Yet they may do worse than visit the drowsy castle of him who wrote. So when a shepherd of the Hebrid Isles, placed far amid the melancholy main, childhood is the age when a love of poetry may be born and strengthened, a taste which grows rarer and more rare in our age, when examinations spring up and choke the good seed. By way of lending no aid to what is called education, very few notes have been added. The child does not want everything to be explained, in the unexplained is great pleasure. Nothing, perhaps, crushes the love of poetry more surely and swiftly than the use of poems as schoolbooks. They are at once associated in the mind with lessons, with long, with endless hours in school, with puzzling questions and the agony of an imperfect memory, with grammar and etymology, and everything that is the enemy of joy. We may cause children to hate Shakespeare or Spencer as Byron hated Horace, by inflicting poets on them, not for their poetry, but for the valuable information in the notes. This danger, at least, it is not difficult to avoid in the Blue Poetry Book. How do you find this book? Any thoughts about the book or the author? Any suggestion for improvement? Please take a moment to share your thoughts in a comment. If you like it, share it with your friends who might enjoy it as well. Subscribe to keep in touch. Visit CompleteAudiobooks.com for more quality content. Nurse's Song When the voices of children are heard on the green And laughing is heard on the hill My heart is at rest within my breast And everything else is still Then come home, my children, the sun is gone down And the dews of night arise Come, come, leave off play, and let us away Till the morning appears in the skies. No, no, let us play, for it is yet day. And we cannot go to sleep. Besides in the sky the little birds fly.
and the hills are all covered with sheep. Well, well, go and play till the light fades away. And then go home to bed. The little ones leaped and shouted and laughed. And all the hills echoed. W. Blake. A boy's song. Where the pools are bright and deep. Where the grey trout lies asleep. Up the river and o'er the lea. That's the way for Billy and me. Where the blackbird sings the latest. Where the hawthorn blooms the sweetest. Where the nestlings chirp and flee. That's the way for Billy and me. Where the mowers mow the cleanest. Where the hay lies thick and greenest. There to trace the homeward bee. That's the way for Billy and me. Where the hazel bank is steepest. Where the shadow falls the deepest. Where the clustering nuts fall free. That's the way for Billy and me. Why the boys should drive away. Little sweet maidens from the play. Or love to banter and fight so well. That's the thing I never could tell. But this I know, I love to play. Through the meadow, among the hay. Up the water and o'er the lea. That's the way for Billy and me. J. Hogg. I remember, I remember. I. I remember, I remember. The house where I was born. The little window where the sun. Came peeping in at morn. He never came a wink too soon. Nor brought too long a day. But now, I often wish the night. Had borne my breath away. Two. I remember, I remember. The roses, red and white. The sixlets, and the lily cups. Those flowers made of light. The lilacs where the robin built. And where my brother sat. The laburnum on his birthday. The tree is living yet. Three. I remember, I remember. Where I was used to swing. And thought the air must rush as fresh. To swallows on the wing. My spirit flew in feathers then. That is so heavy now. And summer pools could hardly cool. The fever on my brow. 4. I remember, I remember. The fir trees dark and high. I used to think their slender tops. Were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance. But now, tis little joy. To know I'm farther off from he then. Than when I was a boy. T. Hood. The Lamb. Little Lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? Gave thee life, and bid thee feed. By the stream and o'er the mead. Gave thee clothing of delight. Softest clothing, woolly, bright. Gave thee such a tender voice. Making all the valets rejoice. Little lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? Little lamb, I'll tell thee. Little lamb, I'll tell thee. He is called by thy name. For he calls himself a lamb. He is meek and he is mild. He became a little child. I a child, and thou a lamb. We are called by his name. Little lamb, God bless thee. Little lamb, God bless thee. W. Blake. Night. The sun descending in the west. The evening star does shine. The birds are silent in their nest. And I must seek for mine. The moon, like a flower. In heaven's high bower. With silent delight. Sits and smiles on the night. Farewell, green fields and happy groves. Where flocks have tamed delight. Where lambs have nibbled, silent moves. The feet of angels bright. Unseen, they pour blessing. And joy without ceasing. On each bud and blossom. And each sleeping bosom. They look in every thoughtless nest. Where birds are covered warm. They visit caves of every beast. To keep them all from harm. If they see any weeping. That should have been sleeping. They pour sleep on their head. And sit down by their bed. W. Blake. 
on a spaniel called Bo, killing a young bird. A spaniel, Bo, that fares like you. Well fed, and at his ease. Should wiser be than to pursue. Each trifle that he sees. But you have killed a tiny bird. Which flew not till today. Against my orders, whom you heard. Forbidding you the prey. Nor did you kill that you might eat. And ease a doggish pain. For him, though chased with furious heat. You left where he was slain. Nor was he of the thievish sort or one whom blood allures. But innocent was all his sport. Whom you have torn for yours. My dog. What remedy remains? Since, teach you all I can. I see you, after all my pains. So much resemble man. Bo's reply. Sir, when I flew to seize the bird. In spite of your command. A louder voice than yours I heard and harder to withstand. You cried, forbear. But in my breast. A mightier cried, proceed. Twas nature, sir, whose strong behest. Impelled me to the deed. Yet much as nature I respect. I ventured once to break. As you perhaps may recollect. Her precept for your sake. And when your linnet on a day. Passing his prison door had fluttered all his strength away, and panting pressed the floor, well knowing him a sacred thing, not destined to my tooth. I only kissed his ruffled wing, and licked the feathers smooth. Let my obedience then excuse, my disobedience now, nor some reproof yourself refuse, from your aggrieved bow-wow. If killing birds be such a crime, which I can hardly see, what think you, sir, of killing time? With verse addressed to me. W. Cooper. Lucy Gray, or, Solitude. Oft I had heard of Lucy Gray. And, when I crossed the wild. I chanced to see at break of day. The solitary child. No mate, no comrade Lucy knew. She dwelt on a wide moor. The sweetest thing that ever grew. Beside a human door. You yet may spy the fawn at play. The hair upon the green. But the sweet face of Lucy Gray. Will never more be seen. Tonight will be a stormy night. You to the town must go. And take a lantern, child, to light. Your mother through the snow. That, father. Will I gladly do. Tis scarcely afternoon. The minster clock has just struck two. And yonder is the moon. At this the father raised his hook. And snapped a faggot band. He plied his work, and Lucy took. The lantern in her hand. Not blither is the mountain row. With many a wanton stroke. Her feet disperse the powdery snow. That rises up like smoke. The storm came on before its time. She wandered up and down. And many a hill did Lucy climb. But never reached the town. The wretched parents all that night. Went shouting far and wide. But there was neither sound nor sight. To serve them for a guide. At daybreak on a hill they stood. That overlooked the moor. And thence they saw the bridge of wood. A furlong from their door. They wept, and, turning homeward, cried. In heaven we all shall meet. When in the snow the mother spied. The print of Lucy's feet. Then downwards from the steep hill's edge. They tracked the footmark small. And through the broken hawthorn hedge. And by the long stone wall. And then an open field they crossed. The marks were still the same. They tracked them on, nor ever lost and to the bridge they came. They followed from the snowy bank. Those footmarks, one by one. Into the middle of the plank. And further there were none. Yet some maintain that to this day. She is a living child. That you may see sweet Lucy Gray. Upon the lonesome wild. 
o'er rough and smooth she trips along, and never looks behind, and sings a solitary song, that whistles in the wind. W. Wordsworth. Hunting Song. Waken, lords and ladies gay. On the mountain dawns the day. All the jolly chase is here. With hawk, and horse, and hunting spear. Hounds are in their couples yelling. Hawks are whistling, horns are knelling. Merrily, merrily, mingle they. Waken, lords and ladies gay. Waken, lords and ladies gay. The mist has left the mountain gray. Springlets in the dawn are steaming. Diamonds on the brake are gleaming. And foresters have busy been. To track the buck in thicket green. Now we come to chant our lay. Waken, lords and ladies gay. Waken, lords and ladies gay. To the greenwood haste away. We can show you where he lies. Fleet of foot, and tall of size. We can show the marks he made. When gainst the oak his antlers frayed. You shall see him brought to bay. Waken, lords and ladies gay. Louder, louder chant the lay. Waken, lords and ladies gay. Tell them youth, and mirth, and glee. Run a course as well as we. Time, stern huntsman. Who can balk? Stanch as hound, and fleet as hawk. Think of this, and rise with day. Gentle lords and ladies gay. Sir W. Scott. Lord Olin's daughter. A chieftain, to the highlands bound. Cries, boatman, do not tarry. And I'll give thee a silver pound. To row us o'er the ferry. Now who be ye, would cross Loch Guile. This dark and stormy water. Oh, I'm the chief of Ulva's Isle. And this Lord Olin's daughter dot. And fast before her father's men. Three days we fled together. For should he find us in the glen. My blood would stain the heather. His horsemen hard behind us ride. Should they our steps discover. Then who will cheer my bonny bride. When they have slain her lover. Outspoke the hardy highland white. I'll go, my chief, I'm ready. It is not for your silver bright. But for your winsome lady. And by my word. The bonny bird in danger shall not tarry. So though the waves are raging white. I'll row you o'er the ferry. By this the storm grew loud apace. The water wraith was shrieking, one. And in the scowl of heaven each face. Grew dark as they were speaking. But still as wilder blew the wind. And as the night grew drearer. Adown the glen rode armed men. Their trampling sounded nearer dot. Oh haste thee, haste, the lady cries. Though tempests round us gather. I'll meet the raging of the skies. But not an angry father. The boat has left a stormy land. A stormy sea before her. When, oh. Too strong for human hand. The tempest gathered o'er her. And still they rode amidst the roar. Of waters fast prevailing. Lord Olin reached that fatal shore. His wrath was changed to wailing. For sore dismayed, through storm and shade. His child he did discover. One lovely hand she stretched for aid. And one was round her lover. Come back. Come back. He cried in grief. Across this stormy water. And I'll forgive your highland chief. My daughter, oh my daughter. Twas vain, the loud waves lashed the shore. Return or aid preventing. The waters wild went o'er his child. And he was left lamenting. T. Campbell. The chimney sweeper. When my mother died I was very young. And my father sold me while yet my tongue. Could scarcely cry, weep. 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 So your chimneys I sweep, and in soot I sleep. There's little Tom Dacre, who cried when his head. That curled like a lamb's back, was shaved, so I said. Hush, Tom. 
never mind it, for when your head's bare. You know that the soot cannot spoil your white hair. And so he was quiet, and that very night. As Tom was a-sleeping, he had such a sight. That thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jack. Were all of them locked up in coffins of black. And by came an angel, who had a bright key. And he opened the coffins, and set them all free. Then down a green plain, leaping, laughing they run. And wash in a river, and shine in the sun. Then, naked and white, all their bags left behind. They rise upon clouds, and sport in the wind. And the angel told Tom, if he'd be a good boy. He'd have God for his father, and never want joy. And so Tom awoke. And we rose in the dark. And got with our bags and our brushes to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. So, if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. W. Blake. Nora's vow. I. Hear what Highland Nora said. The early sun I will not wed. Should all the race of nature die. And none be left but he and I. For all the gold, for all the gear. And all the lands both far and near. That ever valor lost or won. I would not wed the early sun. 2. A maiden's vows, old Callum spoke. Are lightly made, and lightly broke. The heather on the mountain's height. Begins to bloom in purple light. The frost wind soon shall sweep away. That luster deep from glen and bray. Yet Nora, ere its bloom be gone. May blithely wed the early sun. 3. The swan, she said, the lake's clear breast. May barter for the eagle's nest. The Oz fierce stream may backward turn. Ben Croatian fall, and crush Kilchin. Our kilted clans, when blood is high. Before their foes may turn and fly. But I, were all these marvels done. Would never wed the early sun. 4. Still in the water lily's shade. Her wanted nest the wild swan made. Ben Croatian stands as fast as ever. Still downward foams the Oz fierce river. To shun the clash of foeman's steel. No highland brogue has turned the heel. But Nora's heart is lost and won. She's wedded to the early sun. Sir W. Scott. Ballad of Agincourt. Fair stood the wind for France. When we our sails advance. Nor now to prove our chance. Longer will tarry. But putting to the main. At Cox, the mouth of Seine. With all his martial train. Landed King Harry. And, taking many a fort. Furnished in warlike sort. Marcheth to RDS Agincourt. In happy hour. Skirmishing day by day. With those oppose his way. Where the French general lay. With all his power. Which in his height of pride. King Henry to deride. His ransom to provide. To the king sending. Which he neglects the while. As from a nation vile. Yet with an angry smile. Their fall portending. And, turning to his men. Quoth our brave Henry then. Though they to one be ten. Be not amazed. Yet have we well begun. Battles so bravely won. Have ever to the sun. By fame been raised. And for myself, quoth he. This my full rest shall be. England ne'er mourn for me. Nor more esteem me. Victor the first will remain. Or on this earth lie slain. Never shall she sustain. Lost to redeem me. Poitiers and Cressy tell. When most their pride did swell. Under our swords they fell. No less our skill is. Than when our grandsire great. Claiming the regal seat. By many a warlike feat. Lopped the French lilies. The Duke of York so dread. The eager Van Ward led. With the main Henry sped. Amongst his henchmen. 
Exeter had the rear. A braver man not there. O oh Lord! How hot they were! On the false Frenchmen! They now to fight are gone. Armor on armor shone. Drum now to drum did groan. To hear was wonder. That with the cries they make. The very earth did shake. Trumpet to trumpet spake. Thunder to thunder. Well it thine age became. O noble Erpingham! Which didst the signal aim? To our hid forces. When from a meadow by. Like a storm suddenly. The English archery. Stuck the French horses. With Spanish you so strong. Arrows a cloth yard long. That like to serpent stung. Piercing the weather. None from his fellow starts. But, playing manly parts. And like true English hearts. Stuck close together. When down their bows they threw. And forth their bilbos drew. And on the French they flew. Not one was tardy. Arms from the shoulders sent. Scalps to the teeth were rent. Down the French peasants went. Our men were hardy. This while our noble king. His broadsword brandishing. Into the host did fling. As to o'erwhelm it. And many a deep wound lent. His arms with blood besprent. And many a cruel dent. Bruised his helmet. Gloucester, that duke so good. Next of the royal blood. For famous England stood. With his brave brother. Clarence, in steel so bright. Though but a maiden knight. Yet in that furious fight. Scarce such another. Warwick in blood did wade. Oxford the foe invade. And cruel slaughter made. Still as they ran up. Suffolk his axe did ply. Beaumont and Willoughby. Bear them right doughtily. Ferrars and Fanhope. Upon St. Crispin's day. Fought was this noble fray. Which fame did not delay. To England to carry. Oh when shall Englishmen. With such axe fill a pen. Or England breed again. Such a King Harry. M. Drayton. Ye mariners of England. A naval ode. I. Ye mariners of England. That guard our native seas. Whose flag has braved a thousand years. The battle and the breeze. Your glorious standard launch again. To meet another foe. And sweep through the deep. While the stormy tempests blow. While the battle rages loud and long. And the stormy tempests blow. 2. The spirits of your fathers. Shall start from every wave. For the deck it was their field of fame. And ocean was their grave. Where Blake and mighty Nelson fell. Your manly hearts shall glow. As ye sweep through the deep. While the stormy tempests blow. While the battle rages loud and long. And the stormy tempests blow. 3. Britannia needs no bulwark. No towers along the steep. Her march is o'er the mountain waves. Her home is on the deep. With thunders from her native oak. She quells the floods below. As they roar on the shore. When the stormy tempests blow. When the battle rages loud and long. And the stormy tempests blow. 4. The meteor flag of England. Shall yet terrific burn. Till danger's troubled night depart. And the star of peace return. Then, then, ye ocean warriors. Our song and feast shall flow. To the fame of your name. When the storm has ceased to blow. When the fiery fight is heard no more. And the storm has ceased to blow. T. Campbell. The girl describes her fawn. With sweetest milk and sugar first. I it at my own fingers nursed. And as it grew, so every day. It waxed more white and sweet than they. It had so sweet a breath. And oft. I blushed to see its foot more soft. 
and white, shall I say, than my hand. Nay, any ladies of the land. It is a wandrouse thing how fleet. Twas on those little silver feet. With what a pretty skipping grace. It oft would challenge me the race. And when T had left me far away, twould stay, and run again, and stay. For it was nimbler much than Heinz. And trod as if on the four winds. I have a garden of my own. But so with roses overgrown. And lilies, that you would it guess. To be a little wilderness. And all the springtime of the year. It only loved to be there. Among the beds of lilies I. Have sought it oft, where it should lie. Yet could not, till itself would rise. Find it, although before mine eyes. For, in the flaxen lily's shade. It like a bank of lilies laid. Upon the roses it would feed. Until its lips e'en seemed to bleed. And then to me t'would boldly trip. And print those roses on my lip. But all its chief delight was still. On roses thus itself to fill. And its pure virgin limbs to fold. In whitest sheets of lilies cold. Had it lived long, it would have been. Lilies without, roses within. A. Marvel. The soldier's dream. Our bugle sang truce, for the night cloud had lowered. And the sentinel stars set their watch in the sky. And thousands had sunk on the ground overpowered. The weary to sleep, and the wounded to die. When reposing that night on my pallet of straw. By the wolf-scaring faggot that guarded the slain. At the dead of the night a sweet vision I saw. And thrice ere the morning I dreamt it again. Methought from the battlefield's dreadful array. Far, far, I had roamed on a desolate track. Twas autumn, and sunshine arose on the way. To the home of my fathers, that welcomed me back. I flew to the pleasant fields traversed so oft. In life's morning march, when my bosom was young. I heard my own mountain goats bleeding aloft. And knew the sweet strain that the corn reapers sung. Then pledged we the wine cup, and fondly I swore. From my home and my weeping friends never to part. My little ones kissed me a thousand times o'er. And my wife sobbed aloud in her fullness of heart. Stay, stay with us, rest. Thou art weary and worn. And fain was their war-broken soldier to stay. But sorrow returned with the dawning of morn. And the voice in my dreaming ear melted away. T. Campbell. John Gilpin. John Gilpin was a citizen. Of credit and renown. A train band Captain Eek was he. Of famous London town. John Gilpin's spouse said to her dear. Though wedded we have been. These twice ten tedious years, yet we. No holiday have seen. Tomorrow is our wedding day. And we will then repair. Unto the bell at Edmonton. All in a chaise and pair. My sister and my sister's child. Myself, and children three. We'll fill the chaise, so you must ride. On horseback after we. He soon replied, I do admire. Of womankind but one. And you are she, my dearest dear. Therefore it shall be done. I am a linen draper bold. As all the world doth know. And my good friend, the calendar. Will lend his horse to go. Quoth Mistress Gilpin, that's well said. And for that wine is dear. We will be furnished with our own. Which is both bright and clear. John Gilpin kissed his loving wife. O'er joy d was he to find. That though on pleasure she was bent. She had a frugal mind. The morning came, the chaise was brought. But yet was not allowed. To drive up to the door, lest all. Should say that she was proud. So three doors off the chaise was stayed. Where they did all get in. Six precious souls, and all agog. To dash through thick and thin. Smack went the whip, round went the wheels. Were never folk so glad. 
The stones did rattle underneath. As if Cheapside were mad. John Gilpin at his horse's side. Seized fast the flowing mane. And up he got in haste to ride. But soon came down again. For saddle tree scarce reached had he. His journey to begin. When turning round his head he saw. Three customers come in. So down he came, for loss of time. Although it grieved him sore. Yet loss of pence, full well he knew. Would trouble him much more. Twas long before the customers. Were suited to their mind. When Betty screaming came downstairs. The wine is left behind. Good lack. Quoth he, yet bring it me. My leathern belt likewise. In which I bear my trusty sword. When I do exercise. Now Mistress Gilpin, careful soul. Had two stone bottles found. To hold the liquor that she loved. And keep it safe and sound. Each bottle had a curling ear. Through which the belt he drew. And hung a bottle on each side. To make his balance true. Then over all, that he might be. Equipped from top to toe. His long red cloak well brushed and neat. He manfully did throw. Now see him mounted once again. Upon his nimble steed. Full slowly pacing o'er the stones. With caution and good heed. But finding soon a smoother road. Beneath his well-shod feet. The snorting beast began to trot. Which galled him in his seat. So, fair and softly. John he cried. But John he cried in vain. That trot became a gallop soon. In spite of curb and rein. So stooping down, as needs he must. Who cannot sit upright? He grasped the mane with both his hands. And eke with all his might. His horse, who never in that sort. Had handled been before. What thing upon his back had got. Did wonder more and more. Away went Gilpin neck or not. Away went hat and wig. He little dreamt, when he set out. Of running such a rig. The wind did blow, the cloak did fly. Like streamer long and gay. Till, loop and button failing both. At last it flew away. Then might all people well discern. The bottles he had slung. A bottle swinging at each side. As hath been said or sung. The dogs did bark, the children screamed. Up flew the windows all. And every soul cried out, well done. As loud as he could bawl. Away went Gilpin, who but he. His fame soon spread around. He carries weight, he rides a race. Tis for a thousand pound. And still as fast as he drew near. Twas wonderful to view. How in a trice the turnpike men. Their gates wide open through. And now as he went bowing down. His reeking head full low. The bottles twain behind his back. Were shattered at a blow. Down ran the wine into the road. Most piteous to be seen. Which made his horse's flanks to smoke. As they had basted been. But still he seemed to carry weight. With leathern girdle braced. For all might see the bottlenecks. Still dangling at his waist. Thus all through Mary Islington. These gambles he did play. Until he came unto the wash. Of Edmonton so gay. And there he threw the wash about. On both sides of the way. Just like unto a trundling mop. Or a wild goose at play. At Edmonton his loving wife. From the balcony spied. Her tender husband, wondering much. To see how he did ride. Stop, stop, John Gilpin, here's the house. They all at once did cry. The dinner waits, and we are tired. Said Gilpin, so am I. But yet his horse was not a whit. Inclined to tarry there. For why? His owner had a house. Full ten miles off, at where? So like an arrow swift he flew. 
shot by an archer strong. So did he fly, which brings me to the middle of my song. Away went Gilpin, out of breath, and sore against his will, till at his friend the calendars. His horse at last stood still. The calendar, amazed to see his neighbor in such trim, laid down his pipe, flew to the gate, and thus accosted him. What news? What news? Your tidings tell. Tell me you must and shall. Say, why bareheaded you are come? Or why you come at all? Now Gilpin had a pleasant wit. And loved a timely joke. And thus unto the calendar. In merry guise he spoke. I came because your horse would come. And if I well forebode. My hat and wig will soon be here. They are upon the road. The calendar, right glad to find. His friend in merry pin. Returned him not a single word. But to the house went in. Went straight he came with hat and wig. A wig that flowed behind. A hat not much the worse for wear. Each comely in its kind. He held them up, and in his turn. Thus showed his ready wit. My head is twice as big as yours. They therefore needs must fit. But let me scrape the dirt away. That hangs upon your face. And stop and eat, for well you may. Be in a hungry case. Said John, it is my wedding day. And all the world would stare. If wife should dine at Edmonton. And I should dine at where. So, turning to his horse, he said. I am in haste to dine. Twas for your pleasure you came here. You shall go back for mine. Ah, luckless speech, and bootless boast. For which he paid full dear. For while he spake a braying ass. Did sing most loud and clear. Whereat his horse did snort as he. Had heard a lion roar. And galloped off with all his might. As he had done before. Away went Gilpin, and away. Went Gilpin's hat and wig. He lost them sooner than at first. For why? They were too big. Now Mistress Gilpin, when she saw. Her husband posting down. Into the country far away. She pulled out half a crown. And thus unto the youth she said. That drove them to the bell. This shall be yours, when you bring back. My husband safe and well. The youth did ride, and soon did meet. John coming back amain. Whom in a trice he tried to stop. By catching at his rein. But not performing what he meant. And gladly would have done. The frightened steed he frightened more. And made him faster run. Away went Gilpin, and away. Went postboy at his heels. The postboy's horse right glad to miss. The lumbering of the wheels. Six gentlemen upon the road. Thus seeing Gilpin fly. With postboy scampering in the rear. They raised the hue and cry. Stop thief, stop thief, a highwayman. Not one of them was mute. And all and each that passed that way. Did join in the pursuit. And now the turnpike gates again. Flew open in short space. The tollmen thinking as before. That Gilpin rode a race. And so he did and won it too. For he got first to town. Nor stopped till where he had got up. He did again get down. Now let us sing, Long live the king. And Gilpin long live he. And when he next doth ride abroad. May I be there to see. W. Cooper. Hohenlinden. On Linden, when the sun was low. All bloodless lay th untrodden snow. And dark as winter was the flow. Of Iser, rolling rapidly. But Linden saw another sight. When the drum beat, at dead of night. Commanding fires of death to light. The darkness of her scenery. By torch and trumpet fast arrayed. Each horseman drew his battle blade. And furious every charger nate. 
to join the dreadful revelry. Then shook the hills with thunder riven. Then rushed the steed to battle driven. And louder than the bolts of heaven. Far flashed the red artillery. But redder yet that light shall glow. On Linden's hills of stained snow. And bloodier yet the torrent flow. Of Iser, rolling rapidly. Tis morn, but scarce yon level sun. Can pierce the war clouds, rolling dun. Where furious Frank, and fiery Hun. Shout in their sulfrous canopy. The combat deepens. On, ye brave. Who rush to glory, or the grave. Wave, Munich. All thy banners wave. And charge with all thy chivalry. Few, few, shall part, where many meet. The snow shall be their winding sheet. And every turf beneath their feet. Shall be a soldier's sepulchre. T. Campbell. The village blacksmith. Under a spreading chestnut tree. The village smithy stands. The smith, a mighty man is he. With large and sinewy hands. And the muscles of his brawny arms. Are strong as iron bands. His hair is crisp, and black, and long. His face is like the tan. His brow is wet with honest sweat. He earns whatever he can. And looks the whole world in the face. For he owes not any man. Week in, week out, from morn till night. You can hear his bellows blow. You can hear him swing his heavy sledge. With measured beat and slow. Like a sexton ringing the village bell. When the evening sun is low. And children coming home from school. Look in at the open door. They love to see the flaming forge. And hear the bellows roar. And catch the burning sparks that fly. Like chaff from a threshing floor. He goes on Sunday to the church. And sits among his boys. He hears the parson pray and preach. He hears his daughter's voice. Singing in the village choir. And it makes his heart rejoice. It sounds to him like her mother's voice. Singing in paradise. He needs must think of her once more. How in the grave she lies. And with his hard, rough hand he wipes. A tear out of his eyes. Toiling, rejoicing, sorrowing. Onward through life he goes. Each morning sees some task begin. Each evening sees it close. Something attempted, something done. Has earned a night's repose. Thanks, thanks to thee, my worthy friend. For the lesson thou hast taught. Thus at the flaming forge of life. Our fortunes must be wrought. Thus on its sounding anvil shaped. Each burning deed and thought. H. W. Longfellow. Elegy on the death of a mad dog. Good people all, of every sort. Give ear unto my song. And if you find it wondrous short. It cannot hold you long. In Islington there was a man. Of whom the world might say. That still a godly race he ran. Weener he went to pray. A kind and gentle heart he had. To comfort friends and foes. The naked every day he clad. When he put on his clothes. And in that town a dog was found. As many dogs there be. Both mongrel, puppy, whelp, and hound. And curs of low degree. This dog and man at first were friends. But when a peak began. The dog, to gain some private ends. Went mad and bit the man. Around from all the neighboring streets. The wondering neighbors ran. And swore the dog had lost his wits. To bite so good a man. The wound it seemed both sore and sad. To every Christian eye. And while they swore the dog was mad. They swore the man would die. But soon a wonder came to light. That showed the rogues they lied. The man recovered of the bite. The dog it was that died. Oh, goldsmith. The outlaw. Oh, Brignall banks are wild and fair. And Greta woods are green. 
and you may gather garlands there. Would grace a summer queen. And as I rode by Dalton Hall, beneath the turrets high, a maiden on the castle wall was singing merrily. Oh, Brignall banks are fresh and fair, and Greta woods are green. I'd rather rove with Edmund there, than reign our English queen. If, maiden, thou wouldst wend with me, to leave both tower and town, thou first must guess what life lead we, that dwell by dale and down. And if thou canst that riddle read, as read full well you may, then to the greenwood shalt thou speed, as blithe as queen of May. Yet sung she, Brignall banks are fair, and Greta woods are green. I'd rather rove with Edmund there, than reign our English queen. I read you by your bugle horn, and by your palfrey good. I read you for a ranger sworn, to keep the king's greenwood. A ranger, lady, wins his horn. And tis at peep of light. His blast is heard at merry morn. And mine at dead of night. Yet sung she, Brignall banks are fair. And Greta woods are gay. I would I were with Edmund there. To reign his queen of May. With burnished brand and musketoon. So gallantly you come. I read you for a bold dragoon. That lists the tuck of drum. I list no more the tuck of drum. No more the trumpet here. But when the beetle sounds his hum. My comrades take the spear. And oh. Though Brignall banks be fair. And Greta woods be gay. Yet Mickle must the maiden dare. Would reign my queen of May. Maiden. A nameless life I lead. A nameless death I'll die. The fiend, whose lantern lights the mead, were better mate than I. And when I'm with my comrades met, beneath the greenwood bough, what once we were we all forget, nor think what we are now. See to our U.S. yet Brignall banks are fresh and fair, and Greta woods are green, and you may gather garlands there. Would grace a summer queen. Sir W. Scott. Battle of the Baltic. Of Nelson and the North. Sing the glorious day's renown. When to battle fierce came forth. All the might of Denmark's crown. And her arms along the deep proudly shone. By each gun the lighted brand. In a bold determined hand. And the prince of all the land. Led them on dot. Like leviathans afloat. Lay their bulwarks on the brine. While the sign of battle flew. On the lofty British line. It was ten of April morn by the chime. As they drifted on their path. There was silence deep as death. And the boldest held his breath. For a time. But the might of England flushed. To anticipate the scene. And her van the fleeter rushed. O'er the deadly space between. Hearts of oak. Our captains cried, when each gun, from its adamantine lips, spread a death shade round the ships, like the hurricane eclipse, of the sun, again, 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 and the havoc did not slack, till a feeble cheer the Dane, to our cheering sent us back, their shots along the deep slowly boom, then ceased, and all is wail, as they strike the shattered sail, or, in conflagration pale, light the gloom. Out spoke the victor then, as he hailed them o'er the wave. Ye are brothers, ye are men, and we conquer but to save. So peace instead of death let us bring. But yield, proud foe, thy fleet, with the crews, at England's feet, and make submission meet to our king. Then Denmark blessed our chief, that he gave her wounds repose, and the sounds of joy and grief, from her people wildly rose, as death withdrew his shades from the day, while the sun looked smiling bright, o'er a wide and woeful sight, 
where the fires of funeral light died away. Now joy, old England, raise for the tidings of thy might by the festal city's blaze, whilst the wine cup shines in light, and yet amidst that joy and uproar, let us think of them that sleep full many a fathom deep by thy wild and stormy steep. Elsinore, brave hearts, to Britain's pride, once so faithful and so true, on the deck of fame that died, with the gallant good Ryu, soft sigh the winds of heaven o'er their grave, while the billow mournful rolls, and the mermaid song condoles, singing glory to the souls, of the brave, T. Campbell, young Lachinvar. Oh, young Lachinvar is come out of the west. Through all the wide border his steed was the best. And save his good broadsword, he weapons had none. He rode all unarmed, and he rode all alone. So faithful in love, and so dauntless in war. There never was knight like the young Lachinvar. He stayed not for break and he stopped not for stone. He swam the Esk River wherefore there was none. But ere he alighted at Netherby Gate, the bride had consented, the gallant came late. For a laggard in love, and a dastard in war, was to wed the fair Ellen of brave Lachinvar. So boldly he entered the Netherby Hall, among bridesmen, and kinsmen, and brothers, and all. Then spoke the bride's father, his hand on his sword. For the poor craven bridegroom said never a word. Oh, come ye in peace here, or come ye in war. Or to dance at our bridal, young Lord Lachinvar. I long wooed your daughter, my suit you denied. Love swells like the Solway, but ebbs like its tide. And now am I come with this lost love of mine. To lead but one measure, drink one cup of wine. There are maidens in Scotland more lovely by far. That would gladly be bride to the young Lachinvar. The bride kissed the goblet, the knight took it up. He quaffed off the wine and he threw down the cup. She looked down to blush, and she looked up to sigh. With a smile on her lips, and a tear in her eye. He took her soft hand, ere her mother could bar. Now tread we a measure, said young Lachinvar. So stately his form, and so lovely her face. That never a hall such a galliard did grace. While her mother did fret, and her father did fume. And the bridegroom stood dangling his bonnet and plume. And the bride maidens whispered, Twere better by far. To have matched our fair cousin with young Lachinvar. One touch to her hand, and one word in her ear. When they reached the hall door, and the charger stood near. So light to the croup the fair lady he swung. So light to the saddle before her he sprung. She is one. We are gone, over bank, bush, and score. They'll have fleet steeds that follow, quoth young Lachinvar. There was mounting Mong Grams of the Netherby clan. Forsters, Fenwicks, and Musgraves, they rode and they ran. There was racing and chasing, on Canaby Leah. But the lost bride of Netherby ne'er did they see. So daring in love, and so dauntless in war. Have ye e'er heard of gallant like young Lachinvar? Sir W. Scott. The wreck of the Hesperus. It was the schooner Hesperus. That sailed the wintry sea. And the skipper had taken his little daughter. To bear him company. Blue were her eyes as the fairy flax. Her cheeks like the dawn of day and her bosom white as the hawthorn buds. That opened the month of May. The skipper he stood beside the helm. His pipe was in his mouth. And he watched how the veering flaw did blow. The smoke now west, now south. Then up and spake an old sailor. Had sailed the Spanish main. I pray thee, put into yonder port. For I fear a hurricane. Last night, the moon had a golden ring. And tonight no moon we see. The skipper, he blew a whiff from his pipe. And a scornful laugh laughed he. Colder and louder blew the wind. 
A gale from the northeast. The snow fell hissing in the brine. And the billows frothed like yeast. Down came the storm, and smote amain. The vessel in its strength. She shuddered and paused, like a fright steed. Then leaped her cable's length. Come hither. Come hither. My little daughter. And do not tremble so. For I can weather the roughest gale. That ever wind did blow. He wrapped her warm in his seaman's coat. Against the stinging blast. He cut a rope from a broken spar. And bound her to the mast. O oh father! I hear the church bells ring. O oh say, what may it be? Tis a fog bell, on a rock-bound coast. And he steered for the open sea. O oh father! I hear the sound of guns. O oh say, what may it be? Some ship in distress that cannot live. In such an angry sea. O oh father! I see a gleaming light. O oh say, what may it be? But the father answered never a word. A frozen corpse was he. Lashed to the helm, all stiff and stark. With his face turned to the skies. The lantern gleamed through the gleaming snow. On his fixed and glassy eyes. Then the maiden clasped her hands and prayed. That saved she might be. And she thought of Christ, who stilled the waves. On the lake of Galilee. And fast through the midnight dark and drear. Through the whistling sleet and snow. Like a sheeted ghost, the vessel swept. Towards the reef of Norman's woe. And ever the fitful gusts between. A sound came from the land. It was the sound of the trampling surf. On the rocks and the hard sea sand. The breakers were right beneath her bows. She drifted a dreary wreck. And a whooping billow swept the crew. Like icicles from her deck. She struck where the white and fleecy waves. Looked soft as carded wool. But the cruel rocks, they gored her sides. Like the horns of an angry bull. Her rattling shrouds, all sheathed in ice. With the masts went by the board. Like a vessel of glass, she stove and sank. Ho! Ho! The breakers roared. At daybreak, on the bleak sea beach. A fisherman stood aghast. To see the form of a maiden fair. Lashed close to a drifting mast. The salt sea was frozen on her breast. The salt tears in her eyes. And he saw her hair like the brown seaweed. On the billows fall and rise. Such was the wreck of the Hesperus. In the midnight and the snow. Christ save us all from a death like this. On the reef of Norman's woe. H. W. Longfellow. The dog and the water lily. The noon was shady, and soft airs. Swept oozes silent tide. When, scaped from literary cares. I wandered on his side. My spaniel, prettiest of his race. And high in pedigree. Two nymphs adorned with every grace. That spaniel found for me. Now wanton lost in flags and reeds. Now, starting into sight. Pursued the swallow o'er the meads. With scarce a slower flight. It was the time when ooze displayed. His lilies newly blown. Their beauties I intent surveyed. And one I wished my own. With cane extended far I sought. To steer it close to land. But still the prize, though nearly caught. Escaped my eager hand. Bow marked my unsuccessful pains. With fixed considerate face. And puzzling set his puppy brains. To comprehend the case. But with a chirrup clear and strong. Dispersing all his dream. I thence withdrew, and followed long. The windings of the stream. My ramble ended, I returned. Bow, trotting far before. The floating wreath again discerned. And plunging left the shore. I saw him with that lily cropped. Impatient swim to meet. My quick approach, and soon he dropped. 
the treasure at my feet. Charmed with the sight, the world, I cried. Shall hear of this thy deed. My dog shall mortify the pride. Of man superior breed. But chief myself I will enjoin. Awake at duty's call. To show a love as prompt as thine. To him who gives me all. W. Cooper. To flush, my dog. Loving friend, the gift of one. Who her own true faith hath run. Through thy lower nature. Be my benediction said. With my hand upon thy head. Gentle fellow creature. Like a lady's ringlets brown. Flow thy silken ears adown. Either side demurely. Of thy silver suited breast. Shining out from all the rest. Of thy body purely. Darkly brown thy body is. Till the sunshine, striking this. Alchemize its dullness. When the sleek curls manifold. Flash all over into gold. With a burnished fullness. Underneath my stroking hand. Startled eyes of hazel bland. Kindling, growing larger. Up thou leapest with a spring. Full of prank and curvetting. Leaping like a charger. Leap. Thy broad tail waves a light. Leap. Thy slender feet are bright. Canopied in fringes. Leap, those tasseled ears of thine. Flicker strangely, fair and fine. Down their golden inches. Yet, my pretty sportive friend. Little is to such an end. That I praise thy rareness. Other dogs may be thy peers. Haply in these drooping years. And this glossy fairness. But of thee it shall be said. This dog watched beside a bed. Day and night unweary. Watched within a curtained room. Where no sunbeam break the gloom. Round the sick and dreary. Roses, gathered for a vase. In that chamber died apace. Beam and breeze resigning. This dog only, waited on. Knowing that when light is gone. Love remains for shining. Other dogs in timey do. Track the hares and followed through. Sunny moor or meadow. This dog only, crept and crept. Next a languid cheek that slept. Sharing in the shadow. Other dogs of loyal cheer. Bounded at the whistle clear. Up the woodside hying. This dog only, watched in reach. Of a faintly uttered speech. Or a louder sighing. And if one or two quick tears. Dropped upon his glossy ears. Or a sigh came double. Up he sprang in eager haste. Fawning, fondling, breathing fast. In a tender trouble. And this dog was satisfied. If a pale thin hand would glide. Down his dewlap sloping. Which he pushed his nose within. After, platforming his chin. On the palm left open. This dog, if a friendly voice. Call him now to blither choice. Then such chamber keeping. Come out, praying from the door. Press Seth backward as before. Up against me leaping. Therefore to this dog will I. Tenderly not scornfully. Render praise and favor. With my hand upon his head. Is my benediction said. Therefore, and for ever. And because he loves me so. Better than his kind will do. Often, man or woman. Give I back more love again. Then dogs often take of men. Leaning from my human. Blessings on thee, dog of mine. Pretty collars make thee fine. Sugared milk make fat thee. Pleasures wag on in thy tail. Hands of gentle motions fail. Nevermore, to pat thee. Downy pillow take thy head. Silken coverlet bestead. Sunshine help thy sleeping. No flies buzzing wake thee up. No man break thy purple cup. Set for drinking deep in. Whiskered cats arointed flee. Sturdy stoppers keep from thee. Cologne distillations. 
nuts lie in thy path for stones. And thy feast day macaroons. Turn to daily rations. Mock I thee, in wishing wheel. Tears are in my eyes to feel. Thou art made so straightly. Blessing needs must straighten too. Little canst thou joy or do. Thou who lovest greatly. Yet be blessed to the height. Of all good and all delight. Pervious to thy nature. Only loved beyond that line. With a love that answers thine. Loving fellow creature. Mrs. Browning. Alice Brand. I. Mary it is in the good greenwood. When the mavis and merle are singing. When the deer sweeps by, and the hounds are in cry. And the hunter's horn is ringing. O oh, Alice Brand, my native land is lost for love of you. And we must hold by wood and wold. As outlaws wont to do. O oh, Alice, twas all for thy locks so bright. And, twas all for thine eyes so blue. That on the night of our luckless flight. Thy brother bold I slew. Now must I teach to hew the beech. The hand that held the glaive. For leaves to spread our lowly bed. And stakes to fence our cave. And for vest of Paul, thy fingers small. That won't on harp to stray. A cloak must shear from the slaughtered deer. To keep the cold away. O oh Richard! If my brother died. Twas but a fatal chance. For Darkling was the battle tried. And fortune sped the lance. If Paul and Ver no more I wear. Nor thou the crimson sheen. As warm, we'll say, is the russet grey. As gay the forest green. And, Richard, if our lot be hard. And lost thy native land. Still Alice has her own Richard. And he is Alice Brand. 2. Tis merry, tis merry, in good greenwood. So blithe Lady Alice is singing. On the beech's pride, and oak's brown side. Lord Richard's axe is ringing. Up spoke the moody elfin king. Who wand within the hill. Like wind in the porch of a ruined church. His voice was ghostly shrill. Why sounds yon stroke on beech and oak? Our moonlight circles scream. Or who comes here to chase the deer? Beloved of our elfin queen. Or who may dare on wold to wear? The fairy's fatal green. Up, Bergen, up. To yon mortal high. For thou wert christened man. For cross or sign thou wilt not fly. For muttered word or ban. Lay on him the curse of the withered heart. The curse of the sleepless eye. Till he wish and pray that his life would part. Nor yet find leave to die. 3. Tis merry, tis merry, in good greenwood. Though the birds have stilled their singing. The evening blaze doth Alice raise. And Richard is faggots bringing. Up Ergen starts, that hideous dwarf. Before Lord Richard stands. And as he crossed and blessed himself. I fear not sign, quoth the grisly elf. That is made with bloody hands. But out then spoke she, Alice Brand. That woman void of fear. And if there's blood upon his hand. Tis but the blood of deer. Now loud thou least, thou bold of mood. It cleaves unto his hand. The stain of thine own kindly blood. The blood of Ether Brand. Then forward stepped she, Alice Brand. And made the holy sign. And if there's blood on Richard's hand. A spotless hand is mine. And I conjure thee, demon elf. By him whom demons fear. To show us whence thou art thyself. And what thine errand here. 4. Tis merry, tis merry, in fairyland. When fairy birds are singing. When the court doth ride by their monarch's side. With bit and bridle ringing. And gaily shines the fairy land. But all is glistening show. Like the idle gleam that December's beam. Can dart on ice and snow. And fading, like that varied gleam. Is our inconstant shape. 
who now like knight and lady seem, and now like dwarf and ape. It was between the night and day, when the fairy king has power, that I sunk down in a sinful fray, and, twixt life and death, was snatched away, to the joyless elfin bower. But wist I of a woman bold, who thrice my brow durst sign, I might regain my mortal mould, as fair a form as thine. She crossed him once, she crossed him twice. That lady was so brave. The fowler grew his goblin hue. The darker grew the cave. She crossed him thrice, that lady bold. He rose beneath her hand. The fairest knight on Scottish mould. Her brother, Ethert Brand. Mary it is in good greenwood. When the Mavis and Merle are singing. But merrier were they in Dumfermline Grey. When all the bells were ringing. Sir W. Scott. Oh, wert thou in the cold blast? Oh, wert thou in the cold blast? On yonder Leah, on yonder Leah. My platy to the angry ert. I'd shelter thee, I'd shelter thee. Or did misfortune's bitter storms. Around thee blaw, around thee blaw. Thy beeld should be my bosom. To Sherida, to Sherida. Or were I in the wildest waste. Of earth and air, of earth and air. The desart were a paradise. If thou wert there, if thou wert there. Or were I monarch, O, oh, the globe. Why, thee to reign, why, thee to reign. The only jewel in my crown. Wad be my queen, wad be my queen. R. Burns. I love my Jean. Of a, the earth's the wind can blaw. I dearly like the West. For there the bony lassie lives. The lassie I lowe best. There wild woods grow, and rivers row. And money a hill between. But day and night my fancy's flight. Is ever why, my Jean. I see her in the dewy flowers. I see her sweet and fair. I hear her in the tune of few birds. I hear her charm the air. There's not a bony flower that springs. By fountain, shaw, or green. There's not a bony bird that sings. But minds me, oh, my Jean. R. Burns. There'll never be peace till Jamie comes hame. A song beyond Castle Wa, at the close of the day. I heard a man sing, though his head it was grey. And as he was singing, the tears fast down came. There'll never be peace till Jamie comes hame. The church is in ruins, the state is in jars. Delusions, oppressions, and murderous wars. We dare na will say, but we can was to blame. There'll never be peace till Jamie comes hame. My seven bra sons for Jamie drew sword. And now I greet round their green beds in the yurt. It brack the sweet heart, oh, my faithful bald dame. There'll never be peace till Jamie comes hame. Now life is a burden that bows me down. Sin, I tint my bairns, and he tint his crown. But till my last moment my words are the same. There'll never be peace till Jamie comes hame. R. Burns. The banks, O oh, Dune. Ye flowery banks, O oh, bony Dune. How can ye bloom as a ye fair? How can ye chant, ye little birds? And I say ye foo, O oh, care. Thou lt break my heart, thou bony bird. That sings upon the bough. Thou minds me, O, oh, the happy days. When my fa's love was true. Thou lt break my heart, thou bony bird. That sings beside thy mate. For sae I sat, and sae I sang. And wist na, o, oh, my fate. Aft hay I roved by bony dune. To see the woodbine twine. And ilka bird sang, o, oh, its love. And sae did I, o, oh, mine. Why, lightsome heart I pee you to rose. Fray off its thorny tree. And my fa's lover staw the rose. But left the thorn wide me. R. Burns. As slow our ship. 
as slow our ship her foamy track. Against the wind was cleaving. Her trembling pennant still looked back. To that dear isle, t'was leaving. So loath we part from all we love. From all the links that bind us. So turn our hearts, where'er we rove. To those we've left behind us. When, round the bowl, of vanished years. We talk, with joyous seeming. With smiles, that might as well be tears. So faint, so sad they're beaming. While memory brings us back again. Each early tie that twined us. Oh, sweet's the cup that circles then. To those we've left behind us. And when, in other climes, we meet. Some isle or vale enchanting. Where all looks flowery, wild, and sweet. And not but love is wanting. We think how great had been our bliss. If heaven had but assigned us. To live and die in scenes like this. With some we've left behind us. As travelers oft look back, at eve. When eastward darkly going. To gaze upon that light they leave. Still faint behind them glowing. So, when the close of pleasure's day. To gloom hath near consigned us. We turn to catch one fading ray. Of joy that's left behind us. T. More. A red, red rose. Oh, my love's like a red, red rose. That's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love's like the melody. That's sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bonny lass. So deep in love am I. And I will love thee still, my dear. Till at the seas gang dry. Till at the seas gang dry, my dear. And the rocks melt why, the sun. I will love thee still, my dear. While the sands, O oh, life shall run. And fare thee weal, my only love. And fare thee weal a while. And I will come again, my love. Though, it were ten thousand mile. Bannockburn. Robert Bruce's address to his army. Scots, wa hey why, Wallace bled. Scots, wham Bruce has afton led. Welcome to your gory bed. Or to glorious victory. Now's the day, and now's the hour. See the front, O, oh, battle lower. See approach proud Edward's power. Edward. Chains and slavery. What will be a traitor knave? What can fill a coward's grave? What say ye base as be a slave? Traitor. Coward. Turn and flee. Wa for Scotland's king and law. Freedom's sword will strongly draw. Free man stand, or free man F.A. Caledonian. On why me? By oppression's woes and pains. By your sons in servile chains. We will drain our dearest veins. But they shall, they shall be free. Lay the proud usurpers low. Tyrants fall in every foe. Liberties in every blow. Forward. Let us do, or die. R. Burns. The Minstrel Boy. The Minstrel Boy to the war is gone. In the ranks of death you'll find him. His father's sword he has girded on. And his wild harp slung behind him. Dot. Land of song. Said the warrior bard. Though all the world betrays thee. One sword, at least, thy rights shall guard. One faithful harp shall praise thee. The minstrel fell, but the foeman's chain. Could not bring his proud soul under. The harp he loved ne'er spoke again. For he tore its cords asunder. And said, No change shall sully thee. Thou soul of love and bravery. Thy songs were made for the brave and free. They shall never sound in slavery. T. More. The farewell. It was a, for our rightful, king. We left fair Scotland's strand. It was a, for our rightful, king. We e'er saw Irish land. My dear. We e'er saw Irish land. Now a, is done that men can do. And a, is done in vain. 
My love and native land farewell. For I'm on cross the main. My dear. For I'm on cross the main. He turned him right and round about. Upon the Irish shore. And gee his bridle reins a shake. With ado for evermore. My dear. With ado for evermore. The sodger from the wars returns. The sailor fray the main. But I hey parted fray my love. Never to meet again. My dear. Never to meet again. When day is gain, and night is come. And a folk bound to sleep. I think on him that's far awa. The lee lang night, and weep. My dear. The lee lang night, and weep. R. Burns. The harp that once through Terra's halls. The harp that once through Terra's halls. The soul of music shed. Now hangs as mute on Terra's walls. As if that soul were fled. So sleeps the pride of former days. So glory's thrill is o'er. And hearts, that once beat high for praise. Now feel that pulse no more. No more to chiefs and ladies bright. The harp of Terra swells. The chord alone, that breaks at night. Its tale of ruin tells. Thus freedom now so seldom wakes. The only throb she gives. Is when some heart indignant breaks. To show that still she lives. T. More. Stanzas. Could love forever. Run like a river. And time's endeavor. Be tried in vain. No other pleasure. With this could measure. And like a treasure. We'd hug the chain. But since our sighing. Ends not in dying. And, formed for flying. Love plumes his wing. Then, for this reason. Let's love a season. But let that season be only spring. When lovers parted. Feel broken hearted. And, all hopes thwarted. Expect to die. A few years older. Ah. How much colder. They might behold her. For whom they sigh. Lord Byron. A sea dirge. Full fathom five thy father lies. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade. But doth suffer a sea change. Into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs hourly ring his knell. Hark! Now I hear them. Ding, dong, bell. W. Shakespeare. Rose Aylmer. Ah! What avails the sceptred race? Ah! What the form divine! What every virtue, every grace! Rose Aylmer, all were thine! Rose Aylmer, whom these wakeful eyes! May weep, but never see! A night of memories and of sighs! I consecrate to thee! W. S. Landor! Song! Who is Sylvia? What is she? That all our swains commend her. Holy, fair and wise is she. The heaven such grace did lend her. That she might admired be. Is she kind, as she is fair? For beauty lives with kindness. Love doth to her eyes repair. To help him of his blindness. And, being helped, inhabits there. Then to Sylvia let us sing. That Sylvia is excelling. She excels each mortal thing. Upon the dull earth dwelling. To her let us garlands bring. W. Shakespeare. Lucy Ashton's song. Look not thou on beauty's charming. Sit thou still when kings are arming. Taste not when the wine cup glistens. Speak not when the people listens. Stop thine ear against the singer. From the red gold keep thy finger. Vacant heart, and hand, and eye. Easy live and quiet die. Sir W. Scott. Evening. The sun upon the lake is low. The wild birds hush their song. The hills have evening's deepest glow. Yet Leonard tarries long. 
now all whom varied toil and care from home and love divide in the calm sunset may repair each to the loved one's side the noble dame on turret high who waits her gallant knight looks to the western beam to spy the flash of armor bright the village maid with hand on brow the level ray to shade upon the footpath watches now for Colin's darkening plaid. Now to their mates the wild swans row. By day they swam apart. And to the thicket wanders slow. The hind beside the heart. The woodlark at his partner's side. Twitters his closing song. All meet whom day and care divide. But Leonard tarries long. Sir W. Scott. Song. Orpheus with his lute made trees and the mountain tops that freeze bow themselves when he did sing to his music plants and flowers ever sprung as sun and showers there had made a lasting spring everything that heard him play even the billows of the sea hung their heads and then lay by in sweet music is such art killing care and grief of heart fall asleep or hearing Die. W. Shakespeare. The T. W. A. Corbis. As I was walking all alone, I heard T. W. A. Corbis making a main. The tain unto the t'other say. War saw we gang and dine the day. In behint yon old fail to dyke. I what there lies a new slain knight. And nobody kens that he lies there. But his hawk, his hound, and lady fair. His hound is to the hunting game. His hawk to fetch the wild fowl hame. His ladies tame another mate. So we may make our dinner sweet. Ye'll sit on his white house a bane. And I'll pike out his bonny blue e'en. Why a e lock o oh, his gowden hair. We'll feek our nest when it grows bare. Mony a one for him makes main. But none a saul ken way he is game. O'er his white banes, when they are bare. The wind saw blaw for ever mare. To one in paradise. I. Thou wast all to me, love. For which my soul did pine. A green isle in the sea, love. A fountain and a shrine. All wreathed with fairy fruits and flowers. And all the flowers were mine. Two. Ah, dream too bright to last. Ah, starry hope. That didst arise. But to be overcast. A voice from out the future cries. On. On. But o'er the past. Dim gulf, my spirit hovering lies. Mute, motionless, aghast. Three. Four, alas. Alas. With me. The light of life is o'er. No more, no more, no more. Such language holds the solemn sea. To the sands upon the shore. Shall bloom the thunder-blasted tree. Or the stricken eagle soar. 4. And all my days are trances. And all my nightly dreams. Are where thy dark eye glances. And where thy footstep gleams. In what ethereal dances? By what eternal streams? E. Poe. Him to Diana. Queen and huntress, chaste and fair. Now the sun is laid to sleep. Seated in thy silver chair. Stayed in wanted manner keep. Hesperus entreats thy light. Goddess excellently bright. Earth, let not thy envious shade. Dare itself to interpose. Cynthia's shining orb was made. He then to clear, when day did close. Bless us then with wished sight. Goddess excellently bright. Lay thy bow of pearl apart. And thy crystal shining quiver. Give unto the flying heart. Space to breathe, how short soever. Thou that makest a day of night. Goddess excellently bright. B. Johnson. County Guy. Ah! County Guy, the hour is nigh. 
The sun has left the Leah. The orange flower perfumes the bower. The breeze is on the sea. The lark, his lay who trilled all day. Sits hushed his partner nigh. Breeze, bird, and flower, confess the hour. But where is County Guy? The village maid steals through the shade. Her shepherd suit to hear. To beauty shy, by lattice high. Sings highborn cavalier. The star of love, all stars above. Now reigns o'er earth and sky. And high and low the influence know. But where is County Guy? Sir W. Scott. Gathering song of Donald D.H.U. Pebrock of Donuel D.H.U. Pebrock of Donuel. Wake thy wild voice anew. Summon Clan Conuel. Come away, come away. Hark to the summons. Come in your war array. Gentles and commons. Come from deep glen, and. From mountain so rocky. The war pipe and pennon. Are at Inverloci. Come every hill plaid, and. True heart that wears one. Come every steel blade, and. Strong hand that bears one. Leave untended the herd. The flock without shelter. Leave the corpse unintaired. The bride at the altar. Leave the deer, leave the steer. Leave nets and barges. Come with your fighting gear. Broadswords and targes. Come as the winds come, when. Forests are rend. Come as the waves come, when. Navies are stranded. Faster come, faster come. Faster and faster. Chief, vassal, page and groom. Tenant and master. Fast they come, fast they come. See how they gather. Wide waves the eagle plume. Blended with heather. Cast your plaids, draw your blades. Forward each man set. Pebrock of Donuel D.H.U. Nell for the onset. Sir W. Scott. The destruction of Sennacherib. The Assyrian came down like the wolf on the fold. And his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold. And the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea. When the blue wave rolls nightly on deep Galilee. Like the leaves of the forest when summer is green. That host with their banners at sunset were seen. Like the leaves of the forest when autumn hath blown. That host on the morrow lay withered and strown. For the angel of death spread his wings on the blast. And breathed in the face of the foe as he passed. And the eyes of the sleepers waxed deadly and chill. And their hearts but once heaved, and forever grew still. And there lay the steed with his nostril all wide. But through it there rolled not the breath of his pride. And the foam of his gasping lay white on the turf. And cold as the spray of the rock beating surf. And there lay the rider distorted and pale. With the dew on his brow, and the rust on his mail. And the tents were all silent, the banners alone. The lances unlifted, the trumpet unblown. And the widows of Asher are loud in their wail. And the idols are broke in the temple of Baal. And the might of the Gentile, unsmote by the sword. Hath melted like snow in the glance of the Lord. Lord Byron. The Cavalier. While the dawn on the mountain was misty and grey. My true love has mounted his steed, and away. Over hill, over valley, o'er dale, and o'er down. Heaven shield the brave gallant that fights for the crown. He has doffed the silk doublet the breastplate to bear. He has placed the steel cap o'er his long flowing hair. From his belt to his stirrup his broadsword hangs down. Heaven shield the brave gallant that fights for the crown. For the rights of fair England that broadsword he draws. Her king is his leader, her church is his cause. His watchword is honor, his pay is renown. God strike with the gallant that strikes for the crown. They may boast of their Fairfax, their Waller, and all. The roundhead rebels of Westminster Hall. But tell these bold traitors of London's proud town. That the spears of the north have encircled the crown. 
There's Derby and Cavendish, dread of their foes. There's Aaron's High Ormond, and Scotland's Montrose. Would you match the base Skippen, and Massey, and Brown? With the barons of England, that fight for the crown. Now joy to the crest of the brave cavalier. Be his banner unconquered, resistless his spear. Till in peace and in triumph his toils he may drown. In a pledge to fair England, her church, and her crown. Sir W. Scott. On first looking into Chapman's Homer. Much have I travelled in the realms of gold. And many goodly states and kingdoms seen. Round many western islands have I been. Which bards in fealty to Apollo hold. Oft of one wide expanse had I been told. That deep-browed Homer ruled as his domain. Yet did I never breathe its pure serene. Till I heard Chapman speak out loud and bold. Then felt I like some watcher of the skies. When a new planet swims into. His ken. Or like stout Cortez when with eagle eyes. He stared at the Pacific, and all his men. Looked at each other with a wild surmise. Silent, upon a peak in Darien. J. Keats. Song. For music a lake and a ferry boat. To sail in the moonlight clear. And merrily we would float. From the dragons that watch us here. Thy gown should be snow-white silk. And strings of orient pearls. Like gossamers dipped in milk. Should twine with thy raven curls. Red rubies should deck thy hands. And diamonds should be thy dower. But fairies have broke their wands. And wishing has lost its power. T. Hood. Ode written in MDCCXLVI. How sleep the brave, who sink to rest. By all their country's wishes blessed. When spring, with dewy fingers cold. Returns to deck their hallowed mold. She there shall dress a sweeter sod. Then fancy's feet have ever trod. By fairy hands their knell is rung. By forms unseen their dirge is sung. Their honor comes, a pilgrim gray. To bless the turf that wraps their clay. And freedom shall a while repair. To dwell a weeping hermit there. W. Collins. To daffodils. Fair daffodils, we weep to see. You haste away so soon. As yet the early rising sun. Has not attained his noon. Stay, stay. Until the hasting day. Has run. But to the even song. And, having prayed together, we. Will go with you along. We have short time to stay, as you. We have as short a spring. As quick a growth to meet decay. As you, or anything. We die. As your hours do, and dry. Away. Like to the summer's rain. Or as the pearls of mornings do. Ne'er to be found again. R. Herrick. The solitary reaper. Behold her, single in the field. Yon solitary highland lass. Reaping and singing by herself. Stop here, or gently pass. Alone she cuts and binds the grain. And sings a melancholy strain. Oh listen. For the veil profound. Is overflowing with the sound. No nightingale did ever chaunt. More welcome notes to weary bands. Of travellers in some shady haunt. Among Arabian sands. A voice so thrilling there was heard. In springtime from the cuckoo bird. Breaking the silence of the seas. Among the farthest Hebrides. Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow. For old, unhappy, far off things. And battles long ago. Or is it some more humble lay? Familiar matter of today. Some natural sorrow, loss, or pain. That has been, and may be again. Whatever the theme, the maiden sang. As if her song could have no ending. I saw her singing at her work. And o'er the sickle bending. I listened, motionless and still. 
And, as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore. Long after it was heard no more. W. Wordsworth. To blossoms. Fair pledges of a fruitful tree. Why do ye fall so fast? Your date is not so past. But you may stay yet here a while. To blush and gently smile. And go at last. What, were ye born to be? An hour or half's delight. And so to bid good night. Twas pity nature brought ye forth. Merely to show your worth. And lose you quite. But you are lovely leaves, where we. May read how soon things have. Their end, though ne'er so brave. And after they have shown their pride. Like you, a while, they glide. Into the grave. R. Herrick. Proud Maisie. Proud Maisie is in the wood. Walking so early. Sweet Robin sits on the bush. Singing so rarely. Tell me, thou bonny bird. When shall I marry me? When six broad gentlemen. Kirkward shall carry ye. Who makes the bridal bed? Birdie, say truly. The grey-headed sexton. That delves the grave duly. The glowworm o'er grave and stone. Shall light thee steady. The owl from the steeple sing. Welcome, proud lady. Sir W. Scott. Sleep. Come, sleep. O oh, sleep, the certain knot of peace. The baiting place of wit, the balm of woe. The poor man's wealth, the prisoner's release. Th. Indifferent judge between the high and low. With shield of proof shield me from out the press. Of those fierce darts despair at me doth throw. O oh, make in me those civil wars to cease. I will good tribute pay, if thou do so. Take thou of me smooth pillows, sweetest bed. A chamber deaf of noise and blind of light. A rosy garland and a weary head. And if these things, as being thine in right. Move not thy heavy grace, thou shalt in me. Livelier than elsewhere. Stella's image see. Sir Philip Sidney. Him for the dead. That day of wrath, that dreadful day. When heaven and earth shall pass away. What power shall be the sinner's stay? How shall he meet that dreadful day? When, shriveling like a parched scroll. The flaming heavens together roll. When louder yet, and yet more dread. Swells the high trump that wakes the dead. Oh! On that day, that wrathful day. When man to judgment wakes from clay. Be thou the trembling sinner's stay. Though heaven and earth shall pass away. Sir W. Scott. The poplar field. The poplars are felled, farewell to the shade. And the whispering sound of the cool colonnade. The winds play no longer and sing in the leaves. Nor ooze on his bosom their image receives. Twelve years have elapsed since I last took a view. Of my favorite field, and the bank where they grew. And now in the grass behold they are laid. And the tree is my seat that once lent me a shade. The blackbird has fled to another retreat. Where the hazels afford him a screen from the heat. And the scene where his melody charmed me before. Resounds with his sweet flowing ditty no more. My fugitive years are all hasting away. And I must ere long lie as lowly as they. With a turf on my breast and a stone at my head. Ere another such grove shall arise in its stead. Tis a sight to engage me, if anything can. To muse on the perishing pleasures of man. Short-lived as we are, our pleasures, I see. Have a still shorter date, and die sooner than we. W. Cooper. Winter. When icicles hang by the wall. And Dick the shepherd blows his nail. And Tom bears logs into the hall. And milk comes frozen home in pail. When blood is nipped, and ways be foul. Then nightly sings the staring owl, Tuhu. Tuhit. Tuhu. A merry note. While greasy Joan doth keel the pot. 
When all around the wind doth blow. And coughing drowns the parson's saw. And birds sit brooding in the snow. And Marion's nose looks red and raw. When roasted crabs hiss in the bowl. Then nightly sings the staring owl. Tohu. Tohit. Tohu. A merry note. While greasy Joan doth keel the pot. W. Shakespeare. Annabel Lee. It was many and many a year ago. In a kingdom by the sea. That a maiden there lived whom you may know. By the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought. Than to love and be loved by me. I was a child, and she was a child. In this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love. I and my Annabel Lee. With a love that the winged seraphs of heaven. Coveted her and me. And this was the reason that, long ago. In this kingdom by the sea. A wind blew out of a cloud, chilling. My beautiful Annabel Lee. So that her highborn kinsman came. And bore her away from me. To shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven. Went envying her and me. Yes. That was the reason, as all men know. In this kingdom by the sea. That the wind came out of the cloud by night. Chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love it was stronger by far than the love. Of those who were older than we. Of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above. Nor the demons down under the sea. Can ever dissever my soul from the soul. Of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams, without bringing me dreams. Of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise, but I see the bright eyes. Of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so, all the night tide, I lie down by the side. Of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride. In her sepulchre there by the sea. In her tomb by the sounding sea. E. Poe. To Mary. If I had thought thou couldst have died. I might not weep for thee. But I forgot, when by thy side. That thou couldst mortal be. It never through my mind had passed. The time would e'er be o'er. And I on thee should look my last. And thou shouldst smile no more. And still upon that face I look. And think, twill smile again. And still the thought I will not brook. That I must look in vain. But when I speak, thou dost not say. What thou ne'er left'st unsaid. And now I feel, as well I may. Sweet Mary. Thou art dead. If thou wouldst stay, e'en as thou art. All cold and all serene, I still might press thy silent heart. And where thy smiles have been. While e'en thy chill, bleak course I have. Thou see me as still mine own. But there I lay thee in thy grave. And I am now alone. I do not think, where'er thou art. Thou hast forgotten me. And I, perhaps, may soothe this heart. In thinking too of thee. Yet there was round thee such a dawn. Of light ne'er seen before. As fancy never could have drawn. And never can restore. See, wolf. Twist ye, twine ye. Twist ye, twine ye. Even so. Mingle shades of joy and woe. Hope, and fear, and peace, and strife. In the thread of human life. While the mystic twist is spinning. Aid the infant's life beginning. Dimly seen through twilight bending. Lo, what varied shapes attending. Passions wild, and follies vain. Pleasures soon exchanged for pain. Doubt, and jealousy, and fear. In the magic dance appear. Now they wax, and now they dwindle. Whirling with the whirling spindle. Twist ye, twine ye. Even so. Mingle human bliss and woe. Sir W. Scott. To Lucasta, on going to the wars. 
Tell me not, sweet, I am unkind. That from the nunnery. Of thy chaste breast and quiet mind. To war and arms I fly. True, a new mistress now I chase. The first foe in the field. And with a stronger faith embrace. A sword, a horse, a shield. Yet this inconstancy is such. As you too shall adore. I could not love thee, dear, so much. Loved I not honor more. Colonel Lovelace. The Demon Lover. Oh, where have you been, my long, long love? This long seven years and mare. Oh, I'm come to seek my former vows. Ye granted me before. Oh, hold your tongue of your former vows. For they will breed sad strife. Oh, hold your tongue of your former vows. For I am become a wife. He turned him right and round about. And the tear blinded his ee. -e. I wad never hae trodden on Irish ground. If it had not been for thee. I might hae had a king's daughter. Far, far beyond the sea. I might have had a king's daughter. Had it not been for love o oh, thee. If ye might have had a king's daughter. Your cell ye had to blame. Ye might have taken the king's daughter. For ye kenned that I was nane. O oh, false are the vows o oh, womankind. But fair is their false body. I never wad hae trodden on Irish ground. Had it not been for love o oh, thee. If I was to leave my husband dear. And my two babes also. Oh what have you to take me to? If with you I should go. I hae seven ships upon the sea. The eighth brought me to land. With four and twenty bold mariners. And music on every hand. She has taken up her two little babes. Kissed them baith cheek and chin. O oh, fare ye weel, my ein twa babes. For I'll never see you again. She set her foot upon the ship. No mariners could she behold. But the sails were o oh, the taffety. And the masts o oh, the beaten gold. She had not sailed a league, a league. A league but barely three. When Dismal grew his countenance. And Drumlie grew his ee. -e. The masts, that were like the beaten gold. Bent not on the heaving seas. But the sails, that were o oh, the taffety. Filled not in the east land breeze. They had not sailed a league, a league. A league but barely three. Until she espied his cloven foot. And she wept right bitter lie. Oh hold your tongue of your weeping, says he. Of your weeping now let me be. I will show you how the lilies grow. On the banks of Italy. Oh what hills are yon, yon pleasant hills. That the sun shines sweetly on. O oh, yon are the hills of heaven, he said. Where you will never win. O oh, what an a mountain is yon, she said. All so dreary why, frost and snow. O oh, yon is the mountain of hell, he cried. Where you and I will go. And I when she turned her round about. I taller he seemed to be. Until that the tops o oh, the gallant ship. Nay taller were than he. The clouds grew dark, and the wind grew loud. And the laven filled her ee. -e. And waysome wailed the snow-white sprites. Upon the gully sea. He struck the tapmast why his hand. The foremast why his knee. And he break that gallant ship in twain. And sank her in the sea. Minstrelsy of the Scottish border. The Lawlands of Holland. The love that I have chosen. I'll therewith be content. The salt sea shall be frozen. Before that I repent. Repent it shall I never. Until the day I dee. But the lawlands of Holland. Have twinned my love and me. My love he built a bonny ship. And set her to the main. With twenty-four brave mariners. To sail her out and hame. But the weary wind began to rise. The sea began to rout. And my love and his bonny ship. Turned with her shins about. There shall no mantle cross my back. No comb go in my hair. 
neither shall coal nor candlelight shine in my bower mare, nor shall I choose another love, until the day I dee, since the Lollands of Holland have twinned my love in me. Now hod your tongue, my daughter dear. Be still, and bide content. There's other lads in Galloway. Ye need ne ser lament. Oh there is none in Galloway. There's none at all for me. I never loved a lad but one. And he's drowned in the sea. Unknown. The valley of unrest. Once it smiled a silent dell. Where the people did not dwell. They had gone unto the wars. Trusting to the mild-eyed stars. Nightly from their azure towers. To keep watch above the flowers. In the midst of which all day. The red sunlight lazily lay. Now each visitor shall confess. The sad valley's restlessness. Nothing there is motionless. Nothing save the airs that brood. Over the magic solitude. Ah, by no wind are stirred those trees. That palpitate like the chill seas. Around the misty Hebrides. Ah, by no wind those clouds are driven. That rustle through the unquiet heaven. Unceasingly, from morn till even. Over the violets there that lie. In myriad types of the human eye. Over the lilies there that wave. And weep above a nameless grave. They wave, from out their fragrant tops. Eternal dews come down in drops. They weep, from off their delicate stems. Perennial tears descend in gems. E. Poe. The burial of Sir John Moore at Corona. Not a drum was heard, not a funeral note. As his course to the rampart we hurried. Not a soldier discharged his farewell shot. O'er the grave where our hero we buried. We buried him darkly at dead of night. The sods with our bayonets turning. By the struggling moonbeam's misty light. And the lantern dimly burning. No useless coffin enclosed his breast. Not in sheet nor in shroud we wound him. But he lay like a warrior taking his rest. With his martial cloak around him. Few and short were the prayers we said. And we spoke not a word of sorrow. But we steadfastly gazed on the face that was dead. And we bitterly thought of the morrow. We thought, as we hollowed his narrow bed. And smoothed down his lonely pillow. That the foe and the stranger would tread o'er his head. And we far away on the billow. Lightly they'll talk of the spirit that's gone. And o'er his cold ashes upbraid him. But little he'll wreck, if they let him sleep on. In the grave where a Briton has laid him. But half of our heavy task was done. When the clock struck the hour for retiring. And we heard the distant and random gun. That the foe was sullenly firing. Slowly and sadly we laid him down. From the field of his fame fresh and gory. We carved not a line, and we raised not a stone. But we left him alone with his glory. See, Wolf. St. Swithin's chair. On Hallowmas Eve, ere you bound ye to rest. Ever beware that your couch be blessed. Sign it with cross, and sain it with bead. Sing the Ave, and say the Creed. For on Hallowmas Eve the night hag will ride. And all her ninefold sweeping on by her side. Whether the wind sing lowly or loud. Sailing through moonshine or swathed in the cloud. The lady she said in his tea. Swithin's chair. The dew of the night has damped her hair. Her cheek was pale, but resolved and high was the word of her lip and the glance of her eye. She muttered the spell of swift and bold. When his naked foot traced the midnight wold. When he stopped the hag as she rode the night. And bade her descend, and her promise plight. He that dare sit on stee. Swithin's chair. When the night hag wings the troubled air. Questions three, when he speaks the spell. He may ask, and she must tell. The baron has been with King Robert his liege. These three long years in battle and siege. 
News are there none of his weal or his woe. And fain the lady his fate would know. She shudders and stops as the charm she speaks. Is it the moody owl that shrieks? Or is that sound, betwixt laughter and scream? The voice of the demon who haunts the stream? The moan of the wind sunk silent and low. And the roaring torrent had ceased to flow. The calm was more dreadful than raging storm. When the cold grey mist brought the ghastly form. Sir W. Scott. Stands as written on the road between Florence and Pisa. Oh, talk not to me of a name great in story. The days of our youth are the days of our glory. And the myrtle and ivy of sweet two and twenty. Are worth all your laurels, though ever so plenty. What are garlands and crowns to the brow that is wrinkled? Tis but as a dead flower with may do besprinkled. Then away with all such from the head that is hoary. What care I for the wreaths that can only give glory? O oh fame! If I e'er took delight in thy praises, Twas less for the sake of thy high-sounding phrases, Than to see the bright eyes of the dear one discover. She thought that I was not unworthy to love her. There chiefly I sought thee, there only I found thee. Her glance was the best of the rays that surround thee. When it sparkled o'er aught that was bright in my story, I knew it was love, and I felt it was glory. Lord Byron. Barthram's dirge. They shot him dead on the nine stone rig. Beside the headless cross. And they left him lying in his blood. Upon the moor and moss. They made a bier of the broken bough. The sotch and the aspen grey. And they bore him to the lady chapel. And waked him there all day. A lady came to that lonely bower. And threw her robes aside. She tore her ling, long, yellow hair. And knelt at Barthram's side. She bathed him in the lady well. His wounds so deep and sere. And she plaited a garland for his breast. And a garland for his hair. They rode him in a lily sheet. And bare him to his earth. And the grey friars sung the dead man's mass. As they passed the chapel garth. They buried him at, the murk, midnight. When the dew fell cold and still. When the aspen grey forgot to play. And the mist clung to the hill. They dug his grave but a bare foot deep. By the edge of the nine stone burn. And they covered him, o'er with the heather flower. The moss and the, lady, fern. A grey friar stayed upon the grave and sang till the morning tide. And a friar shall sing for Barthram's soul, while headless cross shall bide. Art certes. To the cuckoo. O blithe newcomer. I have heard. I hear thee and rejoice. O cuckoo. Shall I call thee bird? Or but a wandering voice? While I am lying on the grass. Thy twofold shout I hear. From hill to hill it seems to pass. At once far off, and near. Though babbling only to the veil. Of sunshine and of flowers. Thou bringest unto me a tale. Of visionary hours. Thrice welcome, darling of the spring. Even yet thou art to me. No bird, but an invisible thing. A voice, a mystery. The same whom in my schoolboy days. I listened to, that cry. Which made me look a thousand ways. In bush, and tree, and sky. To seek thee did I often rove. Through woods and on the green. And thou wert still a hope, a love. Still longed for, never seen. And I can listen to thee yet. Can lie upon the plain. And listen, till I do beget. That golden time again. O oh, blessed bird! The earth we pace. Again appears to be. An unsubstantial, fairy place. That is fit home for thee. W. Wordsworth. Helen of Kirkconnell. I wish I were where Helen lies. Night and day on me she cries. Oh that I were where Helen lies. On fair Kirkconnell Lee.
Cursed be the heart that thought the thought. And cursed the hand that fired the shot. When in my arms bird Helen dropped. And died to succor me. Oh think na ye my heart was sere. When my love dropped down and spack nay mare. There did she swoon white meekle care. On fair Kirk Connolly. As I went down the water side. None but my foe to be my guide. None but my foe to be my guide. On fair Kirk Connolly. I lighted down, my sword did draw. I hacked him into pieces SMA. I hacked him into pieces SMA. For her sake that died for me. O oh, Helen fair, beyond compare. I'll make a garland of thy hair. Shall bind my heart for ever mare. Until the day I die. Oh that I were where Helen lies. Night and day on me she cries. Out of my bed she bids me rise. Says, haste, and come to me. O oh, Helen fair. O oh, Helen chaste. If I were with thee, I were blessed. Where thou lies low, and takes thy rest. On fair Kirk Connolly. I wish my grave were growing green. A winding sheet drawn o'er my een. And I in Helen's arms lying. On fair Kirk Connolly. I wish I were where Helen lies. Night and day on me she cries. And I am weary of the skies. For her sake that died for me. Unknown. To Althea from prison. When love with unconfined wings. Hovers within my gates. And my divine Althea brings. To whisper at the grates. When I lie tangled in her hair. And fettered to her eye. The gods that wanton in the air. Know no such liberty. When flowing cups run swiftly round. With no allaying Thames. Our careless heads with roses bound. Our hearts with loyal flames. When thirsty grief in wine we steep. When healths and draughts go free. Fishes that tipple in the deep. Know no such liberty. When, like committed linnets, I. With shriller throat shall sing. The sweetness, mercy, majesty. And glories of my king. When I shall voice aloud, how good. He is, how great should be. Enlarged winds that curl the flood. No no such liberty. Stone walls do not a prison make. Nor iron bars a cage. Minds innocent and quiet take. That for an hermitage. If I have freedom in my love. And in my soul am free. Angels alone that soar above. Enjoy such liberty. Colonel Lovelace. I wandered lonely. I wandered lonely as a cloud. That floats on high o'er valleys and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd. A host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees. Fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine. And twinkle on the milky way. They stretched in never-ending line. Along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance. Tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced. But they. Outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay. In such a jocund company. I gazed, and gazed, but little thought. What wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie. In vacant or in pensive mood. They flash upon that inward eye. Which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills. And dances with the daffodils. W. Wordsworth. Hester. When maidens such as Hester die. Their place ye may not well supply. Though ye among a thousand try. With vain endeavor. A month or more hath she been dead. Yet cannot I by force be led. To think upon the wormy bed. And her together. A springy motion in her gait. A rising step, did indicate. Of pride and joy no common rate. That flushed her spirit. 
I know not by what name beside. I shall it call, if twas not pride. It was a joy to that allied. She did inherit. Her parents held the Quaker rule. Which doth the human feeling cool. But she was trained in nature's school. Nature had blessed her. A waking eye, a prying mind. A heart that stirs, is hard to bind. A hawk's keen sight ye cannot blind. Ye could not Hester. My sprightly neighbor. Gone before. To that unknown and silent shore. Shall we not meet, as heretofore? Some summer morning. When from thy cheerful eyes a ray. Hath struck a bliss upon the day. A bliss that would not go away. A sweet forewarning. See, lamb. To evening. If aught of Oten stop, or pastoral song. May hope, chaste Eve, to soothe thy modest ear. Like thy own brawling springs. Thy springs, and dying gales. O nymph reserved, while now the bright-haired sun. Sits in yon western tent, whose cloudy skirts. With breed ethereal wove. O'erhang his wavy bed. Now air is hushed. Save where the weak-eyed bat. With short shrill shriek flits by on leathern wing. Or where the beetle winds. His small but sullen horn. As oft he rises midst the twilight path. Against the pilgrim born in heedless hum. Now teach me. Made composed. To breathe some softened strain. Whose numbers, stealing through thy darkening veil. May not unseemly with its stillness suit. As, musing slow, I hail. Thy genial loved return. For when thy folding star arising shows. His poly circlet at his warning lamp. The fragrant hours, and elves. Who slept in buds the day. And many a nymph who wreathes her brows with sedge. And sheds the freshening dew, and, lovelier still. The pensive pleasure sweet. Prepare thy shadowy car. Then let me rove some wild and heathy scene. Or find some ruin midst its dreary dells. Whose walls more awful nod. By thy religious gleams. Or, if chill blustering winds, or driving rain. Prevent my willing feet, be mine the hut. That from the mountain side. Views wilds, and swelling floods. And hamlets brown, and dim discovered spires. And hears their simple bell, and marks o'er all. Thy dewy fingers draw. The gradual dusky veil. While spring shall pour his showers, as oft he want. And bathe thy breathing tresses, meekest Eve. While summer loves to sport. Beneath thy lingering light. While sallow autumn fills thy lap with leaves. Or winter, yelling through the troublous air. Affrights thy shrinking train. And rudely rends thy robes. So long, regardful of thy quiet rule. Shall fancy, friendship, science, smiling peace. Thy gentlest influence own. And love thy favorite name. W. Collins. The sun upon the weird law hill. The sun upon the weird law hill. In Ettrick's vale, is sinking sweet. The westland wind is hush and still. The lake lies sleeping at my feet. Yet not the landscape to mine eye. Bears those bright hues that once it bore. Though evening, with her richest dye. Flames o'er the hills of Ettrick's shore. With listless look along the plain. I see Tweed's silver current glide. And coldly mark the holy fane. Of Melrose rise in ruined pride. The quiet lake, the balmy air. The hill, the stream, the tower, the tree. Are they still such as once they were? Or is the dreary change in me? Alas, the warped and broken board. How can it bear the painter's die? The harp of strained and tuneless chord. How to the minstrel's skill reply? To aching eyes each landscape lowers. To feverish pulse each gale blows chill. And Araby's or Eden's bowers. Were barren as this moorland hill. 
Sir W. Scott. The wife of Usher's Well. There lived a wife at Usher's Well. And a wealthy wife was she. She had three stout and stalwart sons. And sent them o'er the sea. They hadna been a week from her. A week but barely ain. When word came to the Carline wife. That her three sons were gain. They had not been a week from her. A week but barely three. When word came to the Carline wife. That her sons she'd never see. I wish the wind may never cease. Nor fishes in the flood. Till my three sons come hame to me. In earthly flesh and blood. It fell about the Martinus. When nights are lang and murk. The Carline wife's three sons came hame. And their hats were o' oh, the birk. It neither grew in syke nor ditch. Nor yet in oni shiug. But at the gates o' oh, paradise. That birk grew fair enough. Blow up the fire, my maidens. Bring water from the well. For a, my house shall feast this night. Since my three sons are well. And she has made to them a bed. She's made it large and wide. And she's tain her mantle her about. Sat down at the bedside. Up then crew the red red cock. And up and crew the grey. The eldest to the youngest said. Tis time we were away. The cock he hadna crawed but once. And clapped his wings at a. One the youngest to the eldest said. Brother, we must awa. The cock doth craw, the day doth daw. The channerin worm doth chide. If we be missed out o oh, our place. A sair pain we maun bide. Fare ye well, my mother dear. Farewell to barn and byre. And fare ye weel, the bonny lass. That kindles my mother's fire. Unknown. Allenadale. Allenadale has no faggot for burning. Allenadale has no furrow for turning. Allenadale has no fleece for the spinning. Yet Allenadale has red gold for the winning. Come, read me my riddle. Come, hearken my tale. And tell me the craft of bold Allenadale. The Baron of Ravensworth prances in pride. And he views his domains upon Arkendale's side. The mere for his net, and the land for his game. The chase for the wild, and the park for the tame. Yet the fish of the lake, and the deer of the vale. Are less free to Lord Dacre than Allen Adale. Allen Adale was ne'er belted a knight. Though his spur be as sharp, and his blade be as bright. Allen Adale is no baron or lord. Yet twenty tall yeomen will draw at his word. And the best of our nobles his bonnet will veil. Who at rear cross on Stanmore meets Allen Adale. Allen Adale to his wooing is come. The mother, she asked of his household and home. Though the castle of Richmond stand fair on the hill. My hall, quoth bold Allen, shows gallantier still. Tis the blue vault of heaven, with its crescent so pale. And with all its bright spangles, said Allen Adale. The father was steel, and the mother was stone. They lifted the latch, and they bade him be gone. But loud, on the morrow, their wail and their cry. He had laughed on the lass with his bonny black eye. And she fled to the forest to hear a love tale. And the youth it was told by was Allen Adale. Sir W. Scott. The Beleaguered City. I have read, in some old marvellous tale. Some legend strange and vague. That a midnight host of spectres pale. Beleaguered the walls of Prague. Beside the Moldau's rushing stream. With the wan moon overhead. There stood, as in an awful dream. The army of the dead. White as a sea fog, landward bound. The spectral camp was seen. And, with a sorrowful, deep sound. The river flowed between. No other voice nor sound was there. No drum, nor sentry's pace. The mist-like banners clasped the air. As clouds with clouds embrace. But, when the old cathedral bell. Proclaimed the morning prayer. 
The white pavilions rose and fell. On the alarmed air. Down the broad valley, fast and far. The troubled army fled. Up rose the glorious morning star. The ghastly host was dead. I have read, in the marvelous heart of man. That strange and mystic scroll. That an army of phantoms vast and wan. Beleaguer the human soul. Encamped beside life's rushing stream. In fancy's misty light. Gigantic shapes and shadows gleam. Portentous through the night. Upon its midnight battleground. The spectral camp is seen. And, with a sorrowful, deep sound. Flows the river of life between. No other voice, nor sound is there. In the army of the grave. No other challenge breaks the air. But the rushing of life's wave. And, when the solemn and deep church bell. Entreats the soul to pray. The midnight phantoms feel the spell. The shadows sweep away. Down the broad veil of tears afar. The spectral camp is fled. Faith shineth as a morning star. Our ghastly fears are dead. H. W. Longfellow. Alexander's Feast or, The Power of Music. Twas at the royal feast for Persia won. By Philip's warlike son, aloft in awful state. The godlike hero sate. On his imperial throne. His valiant peers were placed around. Their brows with roses and with myrtles bound. So should desert in arms be crowned. The lovely Thais by his side. Sate like a blooming eastern bride. In flower of youth and beauty's pride. Happy, happy, happy pair. None but the brave. None but the brave. None but the brave deserves the fair. Timothy is placed on high. Amid the tuneful choir. With flying fingers touch the lyre. The trembling notes ascend the sky. And heavenly joys inspire. The song began from Jove. Who left his blissful seats above. Such is the power of mighty love. A dragon's fiery form belied the god. Sublime on radiant spires he rode. When he to fair Olympia pressed. And while he sought her snowy breast. Then round her slender waist he curled. And stamped an image of himself, a sovereign of the world. The listening crowd admire the lofty sound. A present deity. They shout around. A present deity. The vaulted roofs rebound. With ravished ears. The monarch hears. Assumes the god. Affects to nod. And seems to shake the spheres. The praise of Bacchus then the sweet musician sung. Of Bacchus ever fair and ever young. The jolly god in triumph comes. Sound the trumpets, beat the drums. Flushed with a purple grace. He shows his honest face. Now give the hoboy's breath. He comes, he comes. Bacchus, ever fair and young. Drinking joys did first ordain. Bacchus' blessings are a treasure. Drinking is the soldier's pleasure. Sweet the pleasure. Sweet is pleasure after pain. Soothed with the sound, the king grew vain. Fought all his battles o'er again. And thrice he routed all his foes, and thrice he slew the slain. The master saw the madness rise. His glowing cheeks, his ardent eyes. And while he heaven and earth defied. Changed his hand and checked his pride. He chose a mournful muse. Soft pity to infuse. He sung Darius great and good. By too severe a fate. Fallen, 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 fallen. Fallen from his high estate. And weltering in his blood. Deserted, at his utmost need. By those his former bounty fed. On the bare earth exposed he lies. With not a friend to close his eyes. With downcast looks the joyless victor sate. Revolving in his altered soul. The various turns of chance below. And now and then a sigh he stole. And tears began to flow. 
the mighty master smiled to see. That love was in the next degree. Twas but a kindred sound to move. For pity melts the mind to love. Softly sweet, in Lydian measures. Soon he soothed his soul to pleasures. War, he sung, is toil and trouble. Honor but an empty bubble. Never ending, still beginning. Fighting still, and still destroying. If the world be worth thy winning. Think, oh think, it worth enjoying. Lovely Thais sits beside thee. Take the good the gods provide thee. The many rend the skies with loud applause. So love was crowned, but music won the cause. The prince, unable to conceal his pain, gazed on the fair. Who caused his care? And sight and looked, sight and looked. Sight and looked. And sight again. At length with love and wine at once oppressed. The vanquished victor sunk upon her breast. Now strike the golden lyre again. A louder yet, and yet a louder strain. Break his bands of sleep asunder. And rouse him like a rattling peal of thunder. Hark, hark. The horrid sound. Has raised up his head. As awaked from the dead. And amazed he stares around. Revenge, revenge, Timotheus cries. See the furies arise. See the snakes that they rear. How they hiss in their hair. And the sparkles that flash from their eyes. Behold a ghastly band. Each a torch in his hand. Those are Grecian ghosts, that in battle were slain. And unburied remain. Inglorious on the plain. Give the vengeance due. To the valiant crew. Behold how they toss their torches on high. How they point to the Persian abodes. And glittering temples of their hostile gods. Dot. The princes applaud with a furious joy. And the king seized a flambeau with zeal to destroy. Thais led the way. To light him to his prey. And like another Helen, fired another Troy. Thus, long ago. Ere heaving bellows learned to blow. While organs yet were mute. Timotheus, to his breathing flute. And sounding lyre. Could swell the soul to rage, or kindle soft desire. At last divine Cecilia came. Inventress of the vocal frame. The sweet enthusiast from her sacred store. Enlarged the former narrow bounds. And added length to solemn sounds. With nature's mother wit, and arts unknown before. Let old Timotheus yield the prize. Or both divide the crown. He raised a mortal to the skies. She drew an angel down. J. Dryden. The passionate shepherd to his love. Come live with me and be my love. And we will all the pleasures prove. That hills and valleys, dales and fields. And woods or steepy mountain yields. And we will sit upon the rocks. Seeing the shepherds feed their flocks. By shallow rivers to whose falls. Melodious birds sing madrigals. And I will make thee beds of roses. And a thousand fragrant posies. A cap of flowers, and a kirtle. Embroidered all with leaves of myrtle. A gown made of the finest wool. Which from our pretty lambs we pull. Fair lined slippers for the cold. With buckles of the purest gold. A belt of straw and ivy buds. With coral clasps and amber studs. And if these pleasures may thee move. Come live with me, and be my love. Thy silver dishes for thy meat. As precious as the gods do eat. Shall on an ivory table be. Prepared each day for thee and me. The shepherd swains shall dance and sing. For thy delight each May morning. If these delights thy mind may move. Then live with me, and be my love. See, Marlowe. The flowers owe oh, the forest. I've heard them lilting, at the you milking. Lasses up lilting, before dawn o' oh, day. But now they are moaning, on ilka green loaning. The flowers owe oh, the forest are a weed away. 
At butts, in the morning, nay blithe lads are scorning. Lasses are lonely, and dowie, and way. Nay daffing, nay gabbing, but sighing and sabbing. Ilkane lifts her leglin, and hies her away. In harst, at the shearing, nay youths now are jeering. Bansters are lyred, and runkled, and grey. At fair, or at preaching, nay wooing, nay fleeching. The flowers o' oh, the forest are a weed away. At e'en, in the gloaming, nay younkers are roaming. Bout stacks, why, the lasses at bogles to play. But ilk maid sits dreary, lamenting her dearie. The flowers o' oh, the forest are weeded away. Duel and way for the order, sent our lads to the border. The English, for ants, by guile won the day. The flowers owed the forest, that fought I the foremost. The prime of our land, are called in the clay. We'll hear nay mare lilting, at the you milking. Women and bairns are heartless and way. Sighing and moaning, on ilka green loaning. The flowers owed the forest are a weed away. E. Elliot. Yulalum. I. The skies they were ashen and sober. The leaves they were crisped and sere. The leaves they were withering and sere. It was night in the lonesome October. Of my most immemorial year. It was hard by the dim lake of Ober. In the misty mid-region of Weir. It was down by the dank tarn of Ober. In the ghoul-haunted woodland of Weir. 2. Here once, through an alley titanic. Of Cyprus, I roamed with my soul. Of Cyprus, with Psyche, my soul. These were days when my heart was volcanic. As the scoriac rivers that roll. As the lavas that restlessly roll. Their sulfurous currents down Yannick. In the ultimate climes of the pole. That groan as they roll down Mount Yannick. In the realms of the boreal pole. 3. Our talk had been serious and sober. But our thoughts they were palsied and sear. Our memories were treacherous and sear. For we knew not the month was October. And we marked not the night of the year. Ah, night of all nights in the year. We noted not the dim lake of Aubert. Though once we had journeyed down here. Remembered not the dank tarn of Aubert. Nor the ghoul-haunted woodland of Weir. 4. And now, as the night was senescent. And stardials pointed to morn. As the sundials hinted of morn. At the end of our path eloquent. And nebulous luster was born. Out of which a miraculous crescent. Arose with a duplicate horn. A stardust bediamonded crescent. Distinct with its duplicate horn. V. And I said, she is warmer than Dien. She rolls through an ether of sighs. She revels in a region of sighs. She has seen that the tears are not dry on. These cheeks, where the worm never dies. And has come past the stars of the lion. To point us the path to the skies. To the Lethean peace of the skies. Come up in despite of the lion. To shine on us with her bright eyes. Come up through the lair of the lion. With love in her luminous eyes. 6. But Psyche, uplifting her finger, said. Sadly, this star I mistrust. Her pallor I strangely mistrust. Oh, hasten, oh, let us not linger. Oh, fly, let us fly, for we must. In terror she spoke, letting sink her. Wings until they trailed in the dust. In agony sobbed, letting sink her. Plumes till they trailed in the dust. Till they sorrowfully trailed in the dust. 7. I replied, This is nothing but dreaming. Let us on by this tremulous light. Let us bathe in this crystalline light. Its sibyllic splendor is beaming. With hope and in beauty tonight. See, it flickers up the sky through the night. Ah, we safely may trust to its gleaming. And be sure it will lead us aright. We safely may trust to a gleaming. That cannot but guide us aright. Since it flickers up to heaven through the night. 
8. Thus I pacified Psyche and kissed her. And tempted her out of her gloom. And conquered her scruples and gloom. And we passed to the end of a vista. But were stopped by the door of a tomb. By the door of a legend tomb. And I said, What is written, sweet sister? On the door of this legend tomb? She replied, Yulalum, Yulalum. Tis the vault of thy lost Yulalum. 9. Then my heart it grew ashen and sober. As the leaves that were crisped and sear. As the leaves that were withering and sear. And I cried, It was surely October. On this very night of last year. That I journeyed, I journeyed down here. That I brought a dread burden down here. On this night of all nights in the year. Ah, what demon has tempted me here? Well I know, now, this dim lake of Aubert. This misty mid-region of Weir. Well I know, now, this dank tarn of Aubert. This ghoul-haunted woodland of Weir. E. Po. Kubla Khan. A vision in a dream. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan. A stately pleasure dome decree. Where Alf, the sacred river, ran. Through caverns measureless to man. Down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground. With walls and towers were girdled round. And there were gardens bright with sinuous rills. Where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree. And here were forests ancient as the hills. Enfolding sunny spots of greenery. But oh! That deep romantic chasm which slanted. Down the green hill athwart a cedarn cover. A savage place. As holy and enchanted. As e'er beneath a waning moon was haunted. By woman wailing for her demon lover. And from this chasm, with ceaseless turmoil seething. As if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing. A mighty fountain momently was forced. Amid whose swift half intermitted burst. Huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail. Or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail. And, mid these dancing rocks at once and ever. It flung up momently the sacred river. Five miles meandering with a mazy motion. Through wood and dale the sacred river ran. Then reached the caverns measureless to man. And sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean. And, mid this tumult Kubla heard from far. Ancestral voices prophesying war. The shadow of the dome of pleasure. Floated midway on the waves. Where was heard the mingled measure. From the fountain and the caves. It was a miracle of rare device. A sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. A damsel with a dulcimer. In a vision once I saw. It was an Abyssinian maid. And on her dulcimer she played. Singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me. Her symphony and song. To such a deep delight t'would win me. That with music loud and long. I would build that dome in air. That sunny dome. Those caves of ice. And all who heard should see them there. And all should cry, Beware. Beware. His flashing eyes, his floating hair. Weave a circle round him thrice. And close your eyes with holy dread. For he on honeydew hath fed. And drunk the milk of paradise. S. T. Coleridge. L'Allegro. Hence, loathed melancholy. Of Cerberus and blackest midnight born. In Stygian cave forlorn. Mongst horrid shapes, and shrieks, and sights unholy. Find out some uncouth cell. Where brooding darkness spreads his jealous wings. And the night raven sings. There under ebon shades, and low-browed rocks. As ragged as thy locks. In dark Cimmerian desert ever dwell. But come, thou goddess fair and free. In heaven eclept Euphrosyne. And by men, heart-easing mirth. Whom lovely Venus at a birth. With two sister graces more. To ivy-crowned Bacchus bore. Or whether, as some sager sing. 
the frolic wind that breathes the spring. Zephyr, with Aurora playing. As he met her once a maying. There on beds of violets blue. And fresh blown roses washed in dew. Filled her with thee, a daughter fair. So buxom, blithe, and debonair. Haste thee, nymph, and bring with thee. Jest, and youthful jollity. Quips, and cranks, and wanton wiles. Nods, and becks, and wreathed smiles. Such as hang on Hebe's cheek. And love to live in dimple sleek. Sport that wrinkled care derides. And laughter holding both his sides. Come, and trip it as you go. On the light fantastic toe. And in thy right hand lead with thee. The mountain nymph, sweet liberty. And if I give thee honor due. Mirth, admit me of thy crew. To live with her, and live with thee. In unreproved pleasures free. To hear the lark begin his flight. And singing startle the dull night. From his watchtower in the skies. Till the dappled dawn doth rise. Then to come, in spite of sorrow. And at my window bid good morrow. Through the sweetbriar, or the vine. Or the twisted eglantine. While the cock with lively din. Scatters the rear of darkness thin. And to the stack, or the barn door. Stoutly struts his dames before. Oft listening how the hounds and horn. Cheerly rouse the slumbering morn. From the side of some hoar hill. Through the high wood echoing shrill. Sometime walking, not unseen. By hedgerow elms, on hillocks green. Right against the eastern gate. Where the great sun begins his state. Robed in flames and amber light. The clouds in thousand liveries dight. While the plowman, near at hand. Whistles o'er the furrowed land. And the milkmaid singeth blithe. And the mower wets his scythe. And every shepherd tells his tale. Under the hawthorn in the dale. Straight mine eye hath caught new pleasures. Whilst the landscape round it measures. Russet lawns, and fallows grey. Where the nibbling flocks do stray. Mountains, on whose barren breast. The laboring clouds do often rest. Meadows trim with daisies pied. Shallow brooks, and rivers wide. Towers and battlements it sees. Bosomed high in tufted trees. Where perhaps some beauty lies. The cynosure of neighboring eyes. Hard by, a cottage chimney smokes. From betwixt two aged oaks. Where Corydon and Thyrsus, met. Are at their savory dinner set. Of herbs, and other country messes. Which the neat-handed Phyllis dresses. And then in haste her bower she leaves. With the stylus to bind the sheaves. Or, if the earlier season lead. To the tanned haycock in the mead. Sometimes with secure delight. The upland hamlets will invite. When the merry bells ring round. And the jocund rebecks sound. To many a youth and many a maid. Dancing in the checkered shade. And young and old come forth to play. On a sunshine holy day. Till the livelong daylight fail. Then to the spicy nut brown ale. With stories told of many a feat. How fairy mad the junkets eat. She was pinched, and pulled, she said. And he, by friar's lantern led. Tells how the drudging goblin sweat. To earn his cream bowl duly set. When in one night, ere glimpse of morn. His shadowy flail hath threshed the corn. That ten day laborers could not end. Then lies him down the lubber fiend. And, stretched out all the chimney's length. Basks at the fire his hairy strength. And crop full out of doors he flings. Ere the first cock his madden rings. Thus done the tales, to bed they creep. By whispering winds soon lulled asleep. Towered cities please us then. And the busy hum of men. Where throngs of knights and barons bold. In weeds of peace high triumphs hold. With store of ladies, whose bright eyes. 
reign influence, and judge the prize. Of wit or arms. While both contend. To win her grace, whom all commend. There let Hymen oft appear. In saffron robe, with taper clear. And pomp, and feast, and revelry. With mask, and antique pageantry. Such sights as youthful poets dream. On summer eves by haunted stream. Then to the well-trod stage anon. If Johnson's learned sock be on. Or sweetest Shakespeare, fancy's child. Warble his native wood notes wild. And ever against eating cares. Lap me in soft Lydian airs. Married to a mortal verse. Such as the meeting soul may pierce. In notes, with many a winding bout. Of linked sweetness long drawn out. With wanton heed and giddy cunning. The melting voice through mazes running. Untwisting all the chains that tie. The hidden soul of harmony. That Orpheus self may heave his head. From golden slumber, on a bed. Of heaped Elysian flowers, and hear. Such strains as would have won the ear. Of Pluto, to have quite set free. His half regained Eurydice. These delights if thou canst give. Mirth, with thee I mean to live. J. Milton. I. L. Penseroso. Hence, vain deluding joys. The brood of folly without father bred. How little you bestead. Or fill the fixed mind with all your toys. Dwell in some idle brain. And fancies fond with gaudy shapes possess. As thick and numberless. As the gay motes that people the sunbeams. Or likest hovering dreams. The fickle pensioners of Morpheus train. But hail, thou goddess sage and holy. Hail, divinest melancholy. Whose saintly visage is too bright. To hit the sense of human sight. And therefore to our weaker view. Erlaid with black, staid wisdom's hue. Black, but such as in esteem. Prince Memnon's sister might beseem. Or that starred Ethiop queen that strove. To set her beauty's praise above. The sea nymphs, and their powers offended. Yet thou art higher far descended. The bright-haired Vesta. Long of yore. To solitary Saturn bore. His daughter she, in Saturn's reign. Such mixture was not held a stain. Oft in glimmering bowers and glades. He met her, and in secret shades. Of woody Ida's inmost grove. While yet there was no fear of Jove. Come, pensive nun, devout and pure. Sober, steadfast, and demure. All in a robe of darkest grain. Flowing with majestic train. And sable stole of cypress lawn. Over thy decent shoulders drawn. Come, but keep thy wonted state. With even step. And musing gait. And looks commercing with the skies. Thy rapt soul sitting in thine eyes. There, held in holy passion still. Forget thyself to marble, till. With a sad leaden downward cast. Thou fix them on the earth as fast. And join with thee, calm peace, and quiet. Spare fast, that oft with gods doth diet. And hears the muses in a ring. I round about Jove's altar sing. And add to these retired leisure. That in trim gardens takes his pleasure. But first. And chiefest, with thee bring. Him that yon soars on golden wing. Guiding the fiery wheeled throne. The cherub contemplation. And the mute silence hissed along. Less Philomel will deign a song. In her sweetest, saddest plight. Smoothing the rugged brow of night. While Cynthia checks her dragon yoke. Gently o'er the accustomed oak. Sweet bird, that shunts the noise of folly. Most musical, most melancholy. The, chantress, oft, the woods among. I woo, to hear thy even song. And missing thee, I walk unseen. On the dry, smooth-shaven green. To behold the wandering moon. 
riding near her highest noon. Like one that had been led astray. Through the heaven's wide pathless way. And oft, as if her head she bowed. Stooping through a fleecy cloud. Oft, on a plat of rising ground. I hear the far-off curfew sound. Over some wide-watered shore. Swinging slow with sullen roar. Or, if the air will not permit. Some still removed place will fit. Where glowing embers through the room. Teach light to counterfeit a gloom. Far from all resort of mirth. Save the cricket on the hearth. Or the bellman's drowsy charm. To bless the doors from nightly harm. Or let my lamp at midnight hour. Be seen in some high lonely tower. Where I may oft outwatch the bear. With thrice great Hermes, or unsphere. The spirit of Plato, to unfold. What worlds or what vast regions hold. The immortal mind. That hath forsook. Her mansion in this fleshly nook. And of those demons that are found. In fire, air, flood, or underground. Whose power hath a true consent. With planet, or with element. Sometime let gorgeous tragedy. In sceptered Paul come sweeping by. Presenting Thebes, or Pelops line. Or the tale of Troy divine. Or what, though rare, of later age. Ennobled hath the buskin stage. But, O oh sad virgin, that thy power. Might raise Museus from his bower. Or bid the soul of Orpheus sing. Such notes as, warbled to the string. Drew iron tears down Pluto's cheek. And made hell grant what love did seek. Or call up him that left half told. The story of Cambuscan bold. Of Cambal, and of Algersife. And who had Canacy to wife. That owned the virtuous ring and glass. And of the wondrous horse of brass. On which the Tartar king did ride. And if aught else great bards beside. In sage and solemn tunes have sung. Of tourneys, and of trophies hung. Of forests, and enchantments drear. Where more is meant than meets the ear. Thus, night, oft see me in thy pale career. Till civil suited morn appear. Not tricked and frounced as she was wont. With the attic boy to hunt. But kerchiefed in a comely cloud. While rocking winds are piping loud. Or ushered with a shower still. When the gust hath blown his fill. Ending on the rustling leaves. With minute drops from off the eaves. And when the sun begins to fling. His flaring beams, me, goddess bring. To arched walks of twilight groves. And shadows brown, that sylvan loves. Of pine, or monumental oak. Where the rude axe, with heaved stroke. Was never heard the nymphs to daunt. Or fright them from their hallowed haunt. There in close covert by some brook. Where no profaner eye may look. Hide me from day's garish eye. While the bee with honeyed thigh. That at her flowery work doth sing. And the waters murmuring. With such concert as they keep. Entice the dewy feathered sleep. And let some strange mysterious dream. Wave at his wings in airy stream. Of lively portraiture displayed. Softly on my eyelids laid. And, as I wake, sweet music breathe. Above, about, or underneath. Sent by some spirit to mortal's good. Or the unseen genius of the wood. But let my due feet never fail. To walk the studious cloisters pale. And love the high embowed roof. With antique pillars massy proof. And storied windows richly dight. Casting a dim religious light. There let the pealing organ blow. To the full-voiced choir below. In service high and anthems clear. As may with sweetness, through mine ear. Dissolve me into ecstasies. And bring all heaven before mine eyes. And may at last my weary age. Find out the peaceful hermitage. The hairy gown and mossy cell. Where I may sit and rightly spell. 
Of every star that heaven doth show. And every herb that sips the dew. Till old experience do attain. To something like prophetic strain. These pleasures, melancholy, give. And I with thee will choose to live. J. Milton. Jock of Hazeldean. I. Why weep ye by the tide, lady? Why weep ye by the tide? I'll wed ye to my youngest son. And ye saw be his bride. And ye saw be his bride, lady. S.A.E. comely to be seen. But I she loot the tears down F.A. For Jock of Hazeldean. 2. Now let this willful grief be done. And dry that cheek so pale. Young Frank is chief of Arrington. And lord of Langley Dale. His step is first in peaceful ha. His sword in battle keen. But I she loot the tears down F.A. For Jock of Hazeldean. 3. A chain of gold ye saw not lack. Nor braid to bind your hair. Nor meddled hound, nor managed hawk. Nor palfrey fresh and fair. And you, the foremost, O oh, them a. Uh, shall ride our forest queen. But I she loot the tears down F.A. For Jock of Hazeldean. 4. The kirk was decked at morning tide. The tapers glimmered fair. The priest and bridegroom wait the bride. And dame and knight are there. They sought her bath by bower and ha. The lady was not seen. She's o'er the border, and awa. Why, Jock of Hazeldean. Sir W. Scott. The recollection. We wander to the pine forest. That skirts the ocean's foam. The lightest wind was in its nest. The tempest in its home. The whispering waves were half asleep. The clouds were gone to play. And on the bosom of the deep. The smile of heaven lay. It seemed as if the hour were one. Sent from beyond the skies. Which scattered from above the sun. A light of paradise. We paused amid the pines that stood. The giants of the waste. Tortured by storms to shapes as rude. As serpents interlaced. And soothed by every azure breath. That under heaven is blown. To harmonies and hues beneath. As tender as its own. Now all the treetops lay asleep. Like green waves on the sea. As still as in the silent deep. The ocean woods may be. How calm it was. The silence there. By such a chain was bound. That even the busy woodpecker. Made stiller by her sound. The inviolable quietness. The breath of peace we drew. With its soft motion made not less. The calm that round us grew. There seemed, from the remotest seat. Of the white mountain waste. To the soft flower beneath our feet. A magic circle traced. A spirit interfused around. A thrilling silent life. To momentary peace it bound. Our mortal nature's strife. And still, I felt, the center of. The magic circle there. Was one fair form that filled with love. The lifeless atmosphere. We paused beside the pools that lie. Under the forest bough. Each seemed as, twere a little sky. Gulfed in a world below. A firmament of purple light. Which in the dark earth lay. More boundless than the depth of night. And purer than the day. In which the lovely forests grew. As in the upper air. More perfect both in shape and hue. Than any spreading there. There lay the glade, the neighboring lawn. And through the dark green wood. The white sun twinkling like the dawn. Out of a speckled cloud. Sweet views which in our world above. Can never well be seen. Were imaged by the water's love. Of that fair forest green. And all was interfused beneath. With an Elysian glow. An atmosphere without a breath. A softer day below. Like one beloved the scene had lent. 
To the dark water's breast. Its every leaf and lineament. With more than truth expressed. Until an envious wind crept by. Like an unwelcome thought. Which from the mind's too faithful eye. Blots one dear image out. Though thou art ever fair and kind. And forests ever green. Less oft is peace in Shelley's mind. Than calm in water's seen. P. B. Shelley. Old Robin Gray. When the sheep are in the fold, and the kai at hame. And at the world to rest are gain. The ways o, oh, my heart f a, in showers fray my e e. While my goodman lies sound by me. Young Jamie load me wheel, and sought me for his bride. But saving a crown he had naething else beside. To make the crown a pund, young Jamie gee to see. And the crown and the pund were baith for me. He hadna been awa, a week but only twa. When my father brack his arm, and the cow was down awa. My mother she fell sick, and my Jamie at the sea. And old Robin Gray came a courtin' me. My father couldna work, and my mother couldna spin. I toiled day and night, but their bread I couldna win. Old Rob maintained them baith, and why tears in his ee. -e. Said, Jenny, for their sakes, oh, marry me. My heart it said nay, I looked for Jamie back. But the wind it blew high, and the ship it was a rack. His ship it was a rack, why didna Jamie d? Or why do I live to cry, ways me? My father urge it sair, my mother didna speak. But she looked in my face till my heart was like to break. They gi at him my hand, but my heart was at the sea. S.A.E. Old Robin Gray he was goodman to me. I hadna been a wife a week but only four. When morn few, as I sat on the stain at the door. I saw my Jamie's wraith, for I couldna think it he. Till he said, I'm come hame to marry thee. O oh, sir, sir did we greet, and muckle did we say. We took but a e kiss, and I bade him gang away. I wish that I were dead, but I'm no like to dee. And why was I born to say, ways me? I gang like a gayest, and I carina to spin. I dorna think on Jamie, for that wad be a sin. But I'll do my best a good wife I to be. For old Robin Gray he is kind unto me. Lady A. Lindsay. Willie drowned in yarrow. Down in yon garden sweet and gay. Where bonny grows the lily. I heard a fair maid sighing say. My wish be why, sweet Willie. Willie's rare, and Willie's fair. And Willie's wondrous bonny. And Willie hecked to marry me. Gin e'er he married Oni. O gentle wind, that bloweth south. From where my love repaireth. Convey a kiss fray his dear mouth. And tell me how he fareth. O tell sweet Willie to come down. And hear the mavis singing. And see the birds on ilka bush. And leaves around them hinging. The lavrock there. Why, her white breast. And gentle throat sae narrow. There's sport a nooch for gentlemen. On lederhaws and yarrow. O lederhaws are wide and braid. And yarrow haws are bonny. There Willie hecked to marry me. If e'er he married Oni. But Willie's gone, whom I thought on. And does not hear me weeping. Draws many a tear fray true love's ee. -e. When other maids are sleeping. O oh, came ye by yon waterside? Pode you the rose or lily? Or came you by yon meadow green? Or saw you my sweet Willie? She sought him up, she sought him down. She sought him braid and narrow. Sign, in the cleaving of a craig. She found him drowned in yarrow. Unknown. The reverie of poor Susan. At the corner of Wood Street, when daylight appears. Hangs a thrush that sings loud, it has sung for three years. Poor Susan has passed by the spot, and has heard. In the silence of morning the song of the bird. Tis a note of enchantment, what ails her? She sees. A mountain ascending, a vision of trees. 
bright volumes of vapor through Lothbury glide. And a river flows on through the vale of Cheapside. Green pastures she views in the midst of a dale. Down which she so often has tripped with her pail. And a single small cottage, a nest like a dove's. The one only dwelling on earth that she loves. She looks, and her heart is in heaven, but they fade. The mist and the river, the hill and the shade. The stream will not flow, and the hill will not rise. And the colors have all passed away from her eyes. W. Wordsworth. The Armada. A fragment. Attend, all ye who list to hear our noble England's praise. I tell of the thrice famous deed she wrought in ancient days. When that great fleet invincible against her bore in vain. The richest spoils of Mexico, the stoutest hearts of Spain. It was about the lovely close of a warm summer day. There came a gallant merchant ship full sail to Plymouth Bay. Her crew hath seen Castile's black fleet, beyond Origny's isle. At earliest twilight, on the waves lie heaving many a mile. At sunrise she escaped their van, by God's especial grace. And the tall Pinta, till the noon, had held her close in chase. Forth with a guard at every gun was placed along the wall. The beacon blazed upon the roof of Edgecombe's lofty hall. Many a light fishing bark put out to pry along the coast. And with loose rein and bloody spur rode inland many a post. With his white hair unbonneted, the stout old sheriff comes. Behind him march the halberdiers, before him sound the drums. His yeomen round the market cross make clear an ample space. For there behoves him to set up the standard of her grace. And haughtily the trumpets peal, and gaily dance the bells. As slow upon the laboring wind the royal blazon swells. Look how the lion of the sea lifts up his ancient crown. And underneath his deadly paw treads the gay lilies down. So stalked he when he turned to flight, on that famed Picard field. Bohemia's plume, and Genoa's bow, and Caesar's eagle shield. So glared he when at Agincourt in wrath he turned to bay. And crushed and torn beneath his claws the princely hunters lay. Ho! Strike the flagstaff deep, Sir Knight, ho! Scatter flowers, fair maids. Ho! Gunners, fire a loud salute. Ho! Gallants, draw your blades. Thou sun, shine on her joyously, ye breezes, waft her wide. Our glorious Semper Edom, the banner of our pride. The freshening breeze of eve unfurled that banner's massy fold. The parting gleam of sunshine kissed that haughty scroll of gold. Night sank upon the dusky beach, and on the purple sea. Such night in England ne'er had been, nor e'er again shall be. From Eddystone to Berwick Bounds, from Lynn to Milford Bay. That time of slumber was as bright and busy as the day. For swift to east and swift to west the ghastly war flame spread. High on St. Michael's Mount it shone, it shone on Beachy Head. Far on the deep the Spaniard saw, along each southern shire. Cape beyond cape, in endless range, those twinkling points of fire. The fisher left his skiff to rock on Tamar's glittering waves. The rugged miners poured to war from Mendip's sunless caves. O'er Longleat's towers, o'er Cranbourne's oaks, the fiery herald flew. He roused the shepherds of Stonehenge, the rangers of Beaulieu. Right sharp and quick the bells all night rang out from Bristol town. And ere the day three hundred horse had met on Clifton Down. The sentinel on Whitehall Gate looked forth into the night. And saw o'erhanging Richmond Hill the streak of blood-red light. Then bugle's note and cannon's roar the death-like silence broke. And with one start, and with one cry. The royal city woke. At once on all her stately gates arose the answering fires. At once the wild alarum clashed from all her reeling spires. From all the batteries of the tower pealed loud the voice of fear. And all the thousand masts of Thames sent back a louder cheer. And from the farthest wards was heard the rush of hurrying feet. And the broad streams of pikes and flags rushed down each roaring street. And broader still became the blaze, and louder still the din. 
as fast from every village round the horse came spurring in. And eastward straight from wild Blackheath the warlike errand went. And roused in many an ancient hall the gallant squires of Kent. Southward from Surrey's pleasant hills flew those bright couriers forth. High on bleak Hampstead swarthy moor they started for the north. And on, and on, without a pause, untired they bounded still. All night from tower to tower they sprang. They sprang from hill to hill. Till the proud peak unfurled the flag o'er Darwin's rocky dales. Till like volcanoes flared to heaven the stormy hills of Wales. Till twelve fair counties saw the blaze on Malvern's lonely height. Till streamed in crimson on the wind the Recon's crest of light. Till broad and fierce the star came forth on Ely's stately fane. And tower and hamlet rose in arms o'er all the boundless plain. Till Belvoir's lordly terraces the sign to Lincoln sent. And Lincoln sped the message on o'er the wide vale of Trent. Till Skiddaw saw the fire that burned on Gaunt's embattled pile. And the red glare on Skiddaw roused the burghers of Carlisle. Lord Macaulay. Mary Ambry. When captains courageous, whom death cold not Dante. Did march to the siege of the city of Gaunt. They must read their soldiers by two and by three. And the foremost in battle was Mary Ambry. When the brave sergeant major was slain in her sight. Who was her true lover, her joy, and delight? Because he was slain most treacherous lie. Then vowed to revenge him Mary Ambry. She clothed herself from the top to the toe. In buff of the bravest, most seemly to show. A fair shirt of mail then slipped on she. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? A helmet of proof she straight did provide. A strong armange sword she girt by her side. On her hand a goodly fair gauntlet put she. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? Then took she her sword and her target in hand. Bidding all such, as wold, to be of her band. To wait on her person came thousand and three. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? My soldiers, she saith, so valiant and bold. Now follow your captain, whom you do behold. Still foremost in Battelle myself will I be. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? Then cried out her soldiers, and loud they did say. So well thou becomest this gallant array. Thy heart and thy weapons so well do agree. No maiden was ever like Mary Embry. She cheered her soldiers, that foughten for life. With ancient and standard, with drum and with fife. With brave clanging trumpets, that sounded so free. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? Before I will see the worst of you all. To come into danger of death or of thrall. This hand and this life I will venture so free. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? She led up her soldiers in battail array. Gainst three times their number by break of the day. Seven hours in skirmish continued she. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? She filled the skis with the smoke of her shot. And her enemies' bodies with bullets so hot. For one of her own men a score killed she. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? And when her false gunner, to spoil her intent. Away all her pellets and powder had sent. Straight with her keen weapon she slashed him in three. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? Being false lie betrayed for lucre of hire. At length she was forced to make a retire. Then her soldiers into a strong castle drew she. Was not this a brave bonny lasse, Mary Embry? Her foes they beset her on Evry's side. As thinking close siege she cold never abide. To beat down the walls they all did decree. But stoutly defied them brave Mary Embry. Then took she her sword and her target in hand. And mounting the walls all undaunted did stand. They're daring their captains to match any three. Oh what a brave captain was Mary Embry. Now say, English captain, what woldest thou give? 
to ransom thyself, which else must not live. Come yield thyself quickly, or slain thou must be. Then smiled sweet lie brave Mary Embry. Ye captains courageous, a valor so bold. Whom think you before you now you do behold? A knight, sir, of England, and captain so free. Who shortly with us a prisoner must be. No captain of England. Behold in your sight. Two breasts in my bosom, and therefore no knight. No knight, sirs, of England, nor captain you see. But a poor simple maiden called Mary Embry. But art thou a woman, as thou dost declare? Whose valour hath proved so undaunted in war? If England doth yield such brave maidens as thee. Full well may they conquer, fair Mary Embry. The Prince of Great Parma heard of her renown. Who long had advanced for England's fair crown. He wooed her and sued her his mistress to be. And offered rich presents to Mary Embry. But this virtuous maiden despised them all. I'll neer sell my honour for purple nor pall. A maiden of England, sir, never will be. The wench of a monarch, quoth Mary Embry. Then to her own country she back did return. Still holding the foes of fair England in scorn. Therefore English captains of every degree. Sing forth the brave valours of Mary Embry. Relics of ancient English poetry. Elizabeth of Bohemia. You meaner beauties of the night. Which poorly satisfy our eyes. More by your number than your light. You common people of the skies. What are you when the moon shall rise? Ye violets that first appear. By your pure purple mantles known. Like the proud virgins of the year. As if the spring were all your own. What are you when the rose is blown? Ye curious chanters of the wood. That warble forth dame nature's lays. Thinking your passions understood. By your weak accents, what's your praise? When Philomel her voice doth raise. So when my mistress shall be seen. In form and beauty of her mind. By virtue first, then choice, a queen. Tell me, if she were not designed. Th. Eclipse and glory of her kind. Sir H. Watton. Cherry ripe. There is a garden in her face. Where roses and white lilies blow. A heavenly paradise is that place. Wherein all pleasant fruits do grow. Their cherries grow that none may buy. Till cherry ripe themselves do cry. Those cherries fairly do enclose. Of orient pearl a double row. Which when her lovely laughter shows. They look like rosebuds filled with snow. Yet them no peer nor prince may buy. Till cherry ripe themselves do cry. Her eyes like angels watch them still. Her brows like bended bows do stand. Threatening with piercing frowns to kill. All that approach with eye or hand. These sacred cherries to come nigh. Till cherry ripe themselves do cry. Anon. Morning. Pack, clouds, away, and welcome day. With night we banish sorrow. Sweet air blow soft, mount lark aloft. To give my love good morrow. Wings from the wind, to please her mind. Notes from the lark I'll borrow. Bird prune thy wing, nightingale sing. To give my love good morrow. To give my love good morrow. Notes from them all I'll borrow. Wake from thy nest, robin redbreast. Sing birds in every furrow. And from each hill, let music shrill. Give my fair love good morrow. Blackbird and thrush, in every bush. Stare, linnet, and cock sparrow. You pretty elves, amongst yourselves. Sing my fair love good morrow. To give my love good morrow. Sing birds in every furrow. T. Haywood. Death the leveller. The glories of our blood and state. Our shadows, not substantial things. There is no armor against fate. Death lays his icy hand on kings. Scepter and crown. Must tumble down. And in the dust be equal made. 
with the poor crooked scythe and spade. Some men with swords may reap the field, and plant fresh laurels where they kill. But their strong nerves at last must yield. They tame but one another still. Early or late, they stoop to fate, and must give up their murmuring breath. When they, pale captives, creep to death, the garlands wither on your brow. Then boast no more your mighty deeds. Upon death's purple altar now. See where the victor victim bleeds. Your heads must come. To the cold tomb. Only the actions of the just. Smell sweet, and blossom in their dust. J. Shirley. Annan Water. Annan Water's wading deep. And my love Annie's wondrous bonnie. And I am loath she should wet her feet. Because I love her best of Oni. He's Lupin on his bonny grey. He rode the right gate and the ready. For all the storm he wadna stay. For seeking of his bonny lady. And he has ridden o'er field and fell. Through moor, and moss, and many a mire. His spurs of steel were sair to bide. And from her four feet flew the fire. My bonny grey, now play your part. If ye be the steed that wins my dearie. With corn and hay ye'll be fed for I. And never spur shall make you weary. The grey was a mare, and a right good mare. But when she won the Annan water. She could not have ridden a ford that night. Had a thousand mercs been wadded at her. O oh, boatman, boatman, put off your boat. Put off your boat for golden money. But for all the gold in fair Scotland. He dared not take him through to Annie. Oh I was sworn so late yestreen. Not by a single oath, but Moni. I'll cross the Drumley stream tonight. Or never could I face my honey. The side was stay, and the bottom deep. From bank to bray the water pouring. The bonny grey mare she swat for fear. For she heard the water kelpie roaring. He spurred her forth into the flood. I what she swam both strong and steady. But the stream was broad, and her strength did fail. And he never saw his bonny lady. Unknown. To a waterfowl. Whither, midst falling dew. While glow the heavens with the last steps of day. Far through their rosy depths, dost thou pursue. Thy solitary way. Vainly the fowler's eye. Might mark thy distant flight to do thee wrong. As, darkly painted on the crimson sky. Thy figure floats along. Seek'st thou the plashy brink. Of weedy lake, or marge of river wide. Or where the rocking billows rise and sink. On the chafed ocean side. There is a power whose care. Teaches thy way along that pathless coast. The desert and illimitable air. Lone wandering, but not lost. All day thy wings have fanned. At that far height, the cold, thin atmosphere. Yet stoop not, weary, to the welcome land. Though the dark night is near. And soon that toil shall end. Soon shalt thou find a summer home, and rest. And scream among thy fellows, reeds shall bend. Soon o'er thy sheltered nest. Thou art he gone, the abyss of heaven. Hath swallowed up thy form, yet on my heart. Deeply hath sunk the lesson thou hast given. And shall not soon depart. He, who from zone to zone. Guides through the boundless sky thy certain flight. In the long way that I must tread alone. Will lead my steps aright. W. C. Bryant. So, will go no more a roving. I. So, will go no more a roving. So late into the night. Though the heart be still as loving. And the moon be still as bright. 2. For the sword outwears its sheath. And the soul wears out the breast. And the heart must pause to breathe. And love itself have rest. 3. Though the night was made for loving. And the day returns too soon. Yet will go no more a roving. By the light of the moon. Lord Byron. 
Song. Where the bee sucks, there suck I. In a cowslip's bell I lie. There I couch, when owls do cry. On the bat's back I do fly. After summer merrily. Merrily, merrily, shall I live now. Under the blossom that hangs on the bough. Come unto these yellow sands. And then take hands. Courtseed when you have and kissed. The wild waves whist. Foot it featly here and there. And, sweet sprites, the burthen bear. Hark, hark. Bow wow. The watchdogs bark. Bow wow. Hark, hark. I hear. The strain of strutting chanticleer. Cry, cock a diddle dow. W. Shakespeare. The land, o oh, the leal. I'm wearing, awa, jean. Like snow wreaths in thaw, jean. I'm wearing, awa. To the land, o oh, the leal. There's nay sorrow there, jean. There's neither called nor care, jean. The day is I fair. In the land, o oh, the leal. Ye were I leal and true, jean. Your tasks ended no, o oh, jean. And I'll welcome you. To the land, o oh, the leal. Our bonnie bairns there, Jean. She was baith guid and fair, Jean. Oh, we grudged her right sair. To the land, o oh, the leal. Then dry that terfew, ee, -e, Jean. My soul langs to be free, Jean. And angels wait on me. To the land, o oh, the leal. Now fare ye weal, my ein Jean. This world's care is vain, Jean. We'll meet and I be fain. In the land, o oh, the leal. Lady Nairn. Song of the Emigrants in Bermuda. Where the remote Bermudas ride. In the ocean's bosom unespied. From a small boat that rode along. The listening winds received this song. What should we do but sing his praise? That led us through the watery maze. Where he the huge sea monsters racks. That lift the deep upon their backs. Unto an isle so long unknown. And yet far kinder than our own. He lands us on a grassy stage. Safe from the storms, and prelate's rage. He gave us this eternal spring. Which here enamels everything. And sends the fowls to us in care. On daily visits through the air. He hangs in shades the orange bright. Like golden lamps in a green night. And does in the pomegranates close. Jewels more rich than Ormus shows. He makes the figs our mouths to meet. And throws the melons at our feet. But apples plants of such a price. No tree could ever bear them twice. With cedars chosen by his hand. From Lebanon he stores the land. And makes the hollow seas that roar. Proclaim the ambergris on shore. He cast, of which we rather boast. The gospel's pearl upon our coast. And in these rocks for us did frame. A temple where to sound his name. Oh let our voices praise exalt. Till it arrive at heaven's vault. Which then perhaps rebounding may. Echo beyond the Mexique Bay. Thus sung they in the English boat. A holy and a cheerful note. And all the way, to guide their chime. With falling oars they kept the time. A, marvel. The light of other days. Oft in the stilly night. Ere slumber's chain has bound me. Fond memory brings the light. Of other days around me. The smiles, the tears. Of boyhood's years. The words of love then spoken. The eyes that shone. Now dimmed and gone. The cheerful hearts now broken. Thus in the stilly night. Ere slumber's chain has bound me. Sad memory brings the light. Of other days around me. When I remember all. The friends so linked together. I've seen around me fall. Like leaves in wintry weather. I feel like one. Who treads alone. Some banquet hall deserted. Whose lights are fled. Whose garlands dead. 
and all but he departed. Thus in the stilly night. Ere slumber's chain has bound me. Sad memory brings the light. Of other days around me. T. More. The fire of driftwood. We sat within the farmhouse old. Whose windows, looking o'er the bay. Gave to the sea breeze, damp and cold. An easy entrance, night and day. Not far away we saw the port. The strange, old-fashioned, silent town. The lighthouse, the dismantled fort. The wooden houses, quaint and brown. We sat and talked until the night. Descending, filled the little room. Our faces faded from the sight. Our voices only broke the gloom. We spake of many a vanished scene. Of what we once had thought and said. Of what had been, and might have been. And who was changed, and who was dead. And all that fills the hearts of friends. When first they feel, with secret pain. Their lives thenceforth have separate ends. And never can be one again. The first light swerving of the heart. That words are powerless to express. And leave it still unsaid in part. Or say it in too great excess. The very tones in which we spake. Had something strange, I could but mark. The leaves of memory seemed to make. A mournful rustling in the dark. Oft died the words upon our lips. As suddenly, from out the fire. Built of the wreck of stranded ships. The flames would leap and then expire. And, as their splendor flashed and failed. We thought of wrecks upon the main. Of ships dismasted, that were hailed. And sent no answer back again. The windows, rattling in their frames. The ocean, roaring up the beach. The gusty blast, the bickering flames. All mingled vaguely in our speech. Until they made themselves a part. Of fancies floating through the brain. The long-lost ventures of the heart. That send no answers back again. O oh, flames that glowed. O oh, hearts that yearned. They were indeed too much akin. The drift would fire without that burned. The thoughts that burned and glowed within. H. W. Longfellow. The war song of Dinah's Vor. The mountain sheep are sweeter. But the valley sheep are fatter. We therefore deemed it meter. To carry off the latter. We made an expedition. We met an host and quelled it. We forced a strong position. And killed the men who held it. On Dyfed's richest valley. Where herds of kine were browsing. We made a mighty sally. To furnish our carousing. Fierce warriors rushed to meet us. We met them, and o'erthrew them. They struggled hard to beat us. But we conquered them, and slew them. As we drove our prize at leisure. The king marched forth to catch us. His rage surpassed all measure. But his people could not match us. He fled to his hall pillars. And, ere our force we led off. Some sacked his house and cellars. While others cut his head off. We there, in strife bewildering. Spilt blood enough to swim in. We orphaned many children. And widowed many women. The eagles and the ravens. We glutted with our foemen. The heroes and the cravens. The spearmen and the bowmen. We brought away from battle. And much their land bemoaned them. Two thousand head of cattle. And the head of him who owned them. Ednifed, king of Dyfed. His head was born before us. His wine and beasts supplied our feasts. And his overthrow, our chorus. T. L. Peacock. Arethusa. Arethusa arose. From her couch of snows. In the Acroceranian mountains. From cloud and from crag. With many a jag. Shepherding her bright fountains. She leapt down the rocks. With her rainbow locks. Streaming among the streams. Her steps paved with green. The downward ravine. 
which slopes to the western gleams. And gliding and springing. She went, ever singing. In murmurs as soft as sleep. The earth seemed to love her. And heaven smiled above her. As she lingered towards the deep. Then Alpheus bold. On his glacier cold. With his trident the mountain struck, And opened a chasm. In the rocks, with the spasm. All Arimanthus shook. And the black south wind. It concealed behind. The urns of the silent snow. And earthquake and thunder. Did rend in sunder. The bars of the springs below. The beard and the hair. Of the river God were. Seen through the torrent sweep. As he followed the light. Of the fleet nymph's flight. To the brink of the Dorian deep. Oh, save me. Oh, guide me. And bid the deep hide me. For he grasps me now by the hair. The loud ocean heard. To its blue depth stirred. And divided at her prayer. And under the water. The earth's white daughter. Fled like a sunny beam. Behind her descended. Her billows, unblended. With the brackish Dorian stream. Like a gloomy stain. On the emerald main. Alpheus rushed behind. As an eagle pursuing. A dove to its ruin. Down the streams of the cloudy wind. Under the bowers. Where the. Ocean powers. Sit on their pearled thrones. Through the coral woods. Of the weltering floods. Over heaps of unvalued stones. Through the dim beams. Which amid the streams. Weave a network of colored light. And under the caves. Where the shadowy waves. Are as green as the forest's night. Outspeeding the shark. And the swordfish dark. Under the ocean foam. And up through the rifts. Of the mountain cliffs. They pass to their Dorian home. And now from their fountains. In Enna's mountains. Down one vale where the morning basks. Like friends once parted. Grown single hearted. They ply their watery tasks. At sunrise they leap. From their cradles steep. In the cave of the shelving hill. At noontide they flow. Through the woods below. And the meadows of asphodel. And at night they sleep. In the rocking deep. Beneath the Ortygian shore. Like spirits that lie. In the azure sky. When they love but live no more. P. B. Shelley. The day is done. The day is done, and the darkness. Falls from the wings of night. As a feather is wafted downward. From an eagle in his flight. I see the lights of the village. Gleam through the rain and the mist. And a feeling of sadness comes o'er me. That my soul cannot resist. A feeling of sadness and longing. That is not akin to pain. And resembles sorrow only. As the mist resembles the rain. Come, read to me some poem. Some simple and heartfelt lay. That shall soothe this restless feeling. And banish the thoughts of day. Not from the grand old masters. Not from the bard sublime. Whose distant footsteps echo. Through the corridors of time. For, like strains of martial music. Their mighty thoughts suggest. Life's endless toil and endeavor. And tonight I long for rest. Read from some humbler poet. Whose songs gushed from his heart. As showers from the clouds of summer. Or tears from the eyelids start. Who, through long days of labor. And nights devoid of ease. Still heard in his soul the music. Of wonderful melodies. Such songs have power to quiet. The restless pulse of care. And come like the benediction. That follows after prayer. Then read from the treasured volume. The poem of thy choice. And lend to the rhyme of the poet. The beauty of thy voice. 
and the night shall be filled with music. And the cares that infest the day shall fold their tents, like the Arabs, and as silently steal away. H. W. Longfellow Song A weary lot is thine, fair maid. A weary lot is thine. To pull the thorn thy brow to braid. And press the rue for wine. A lightsome eye, a soldier's mien. A feather of the blue. A doublet of the Lincoln green. No more of me you knew. My love. No more of me you knew. This morn is merry June, I trow. The rose is budding fain. But she shall bloom in winter snow. Ere we two meet again. He turned his charger as he spake. Upon the river shore. He gave his bridle reins a shake. Said, Adieu forevermore. My love. And adieu forevermore. Sir W. Scott. The two April mornings. We walked along, while bright and red. Uprose the morning sun. And Matthew stopped, he looked, and said. The will of God be done. A village schoolmaster was he. With hair of glittering gray. As blithe a man as you could see. On a spring holiday. And on that morning, through the grass. And by the steaming rills. We traveled merrily, to pass. A day among the hills. Our work, said I, was well begun. Then, from my breast what thought. Beneath so beautiful a sun. So sad a sigh has brought. A second time did Matthew stop. And fixing still his eye. Upon the eastern mountain top. To me he made reply. Yon cloud with that long purple cleft. Brings fresh into my mind. A day like this which I have left. Full thirty years behind. And just above yon slope of corn. Such colors, and no other. Were in the sky, that April morn. Of this the very brother. With rod and line I sued the sport. Which that sweet season gave. And, to the churchyard come, stopped short. Beside my daughter's grave. Nine summers had she scarcely seen. The pride of all the vale. And then she sang. She would have been. A very nightingale. Six feet in earth my Emma lay. And yet I loved her more. For so it seemed, than till that day. I e'er had loved before. And, turning from her grave, I met. Beside the churchyard you. A blooming girl, whose hair was wet. With points of morning dew. A basket on her head she bare. Her brow was smooth and white. To see a child so very fair. It was a pure delight. No fountain from its rocky cave. E'er tripped with foot so free. She seemed as happy as a wave. That dances on the sea. There came from me a sigh of pain. Which I could ill confine. I looked at her, and looked again. And did not wish her mine. Matthew is in his grave, yet now. Methinks, I see him stand. As at that moment, with a bow. Of wilding in his hand. W. Wordsworth. To Helen. Helen, thy beauty is to me. Like those Nicaean barks of yore. That gently, o'er a perfumed sea. The weary wayworn wanderer bore. To his own native shore. On desperate seas long wont to roam. Thy hyacinth hair, thy classic face. Thy naiad airs have brought me home. To the glory that was Greece. To the grandeur that was Rome. Lo, in yon brilliant window niche. How statue-like I see thee stand. The agate lamp within thy hand. Ah, Psyche, from the regions which. Our holy land. E. Poe. The skylark. Bird of the wilderness. Blithesome and cumberless. Sweet be thy matin o'er moorland and Leah. Emblem of happiness. Blessed is thy dwelling place. Oh, to abide in the desert with thee. 
Wild is thy lay and loud. Far in the downy cloud. Love gives it energy, love gave it birth. Where, on thy dewy wing? Where art thou journeying? Thy lay is in heaven, thy love is on earth. O'er fell and fountain sheen. O'er moor and mountain green. O'er the red streamer that heralds the day. Over the cloud let dim. Over the rainbow's rim. Musical cherub, soar, singing, away. Then, when the gloaming comes. Low in the heather blooms. Sweet will thy welcome and bed of love be. Emblem of happiness. Blessed is thy dwelling place. Oh, to abide in the desert with thee. J. Hogg. Fiddly. Fear no more the heat, O, oh, the sun. Nor the furious winter's rages. Thou thy worldly task hast done. Home art gone and tain thy wages. Golden lads and girls all must. As chimney sweepers, come to dust. Fear no more the frown, O, oh, the great. Thou art past the tyrant's stroke. Care no more to clothe, and eat. To thee the reed is as the oak. The scepter, learning, physic, must. All follow this, and come to dust. Fear no more the lightning flash. Nor the all-dreaded thunder tone. Fear not slander, censure rash. Thou hast finished joy and moan. All lovers young, all lovers must. Consign to thee, and come to dust. W. Shakespeare. Cumner Hall. The dews of summer night did fall. The moon, sweet regent of the sky. Silvered the walls of Cumner Hall. And many an oak that grew thereby. Now not was heard beneath the skies. The sounds of busy life were still. Save an unhappy lady's sighs. That issued from that lonely pile. Lester. She cried, Is this thy love? That thou so oft hast sworn to me. To leave me in this lonely grove. Immured in shameful privity. No more thou comest with lover's speed. Thy once beloved bride to see. But, be she alive, or be she dead. I fear, stern earl, est the same to thee. Not so the usage I received. When happy in my father's hall. No faithless husband then me grieved. No chilling fears did me appall. I rose up with the cheerful morn. No lark more blithe, no flower more gay. And like the bird that haunts the thorn. So merrily sung the livelong day. If that my beauty is but small. Among court ladies all despised. Why didst thou rend it from that hall? Where, scornful earl. It well was prized. But, Lester, or I much am wrong. Or, tis not beauty lures thy vows. Rather, ambition's gilded crown. Makes thee forget thy humble spouse. Then, Lester, why, again I plead. The injured surely may repine. Why didst thou wed a country maid? When some fair princess might be thine. Why didst thou praise my humble charms? And oh! Then leave them to decay. Why didst thou win me to thy arms? Then leave to mourn the livelong day. The village maidens of the plain. Salute me lowly as they go. Envious they mark my silken train. Nor think a countess can have woe. How far less blessed am I than them. Daily to pine and waste with care. Like the poor plant, that, from its stem. Divided, feels the chilling air. My spirits flag, my hopes decay. Still that dread death bell smites my ear. And many a boding seems to say. Countess, prepare, thy end is near. Thus sore and sad that lady grieved. In Cumner Hall so lone and drear. And many a heartfelt sigh she heaved. And let fall many a bitter tear. And ere the dawn of day appeared. In Cumner Hall so lone and drear. Full many a piercing scream was heard. And many a cry of mortal fear. The death bell thrice was heard to ring. An aerial voice was heard to call. 
and thrice the raven flapped its wing. Around the towers of Cumnor Hall, the mastiff howled at village door. The oaks were shattered on the green. Woe was the hour, for nevermore. That hapless countess heir was seen. And in that manner now no more. Is cheerful feast and sprightly ball. For ever since that dreary hour. Have spirits haunted Cumnor Hall. The village maids, with fearful glance. Avoid the ancient moss-grown wall. Nor ever lead the merry dance. Among the groves of Cumnor Hall. Full many a traveller oft hath sight. And pensive wept the countess fall. As wandering onwards they've espied. The haunted towers of Cumnor Hall. W. F. Mickle. To a skylark. Hail to thee, blithe spirit. Bird thou never wert. That from heaven or near it. Pourest thy full heart. In profuse strains of unpremeditated art. Higher still and higher. From the earth thou springest. Like a cloud of fire. The blue deep thou wingest. And singing still dost soar, and soaring ever singest. In the golden lightning. Of the sunken sun. O'er which clouds are brightening. Thou dost float and run. Like an embodied joy whose race is just begun. The pale purple even. Melts around thy flight. Like a star of heaven. In the broad daylight. Thou art unseen, but yet I hear thy shrill delight. Keen as are the arrows. Of that silver sphere. Whose intense lamp narrows. In the white dawn clear. Until we hardly see, we feel, that it is there. All the earth and air. With thy voice is loud. As, when night is bare. From one lonely cloud. The moon rains out her beams, and heaven is overflowed. What thou art we know not. What is most like thee? From rainbow clouds there flow not. Drop so bright to see. As from thy presence showers a rain of melody. Like a poet hidden. In the light of thought. Singing hymns unbidden. Till the world is wrought. To sympathy with hopes and fears it heeded not. Like a high-born maiden. In a palace tower. Soothing her love laden. Soul in secret hour. With music sweet as love which overflows her bower. Like a glowworm golden. In a dell of dew. Scattering unbeholden. Its aerial hue. Among the flowers and grass which screen it from the view. Like a rose embowered. In its own green leaves. By warm winds deflowered. Till the scent it gives. Makes faint with too much sweet these heavy winged thieves. Sound of vernal showers. On the twinkling grass. Rain awakened flowers. All that ever was. Joyous and clear and fresh, thy music doth surpass. Teach us, sprite or bird. What sweet thoughts are thine. I have never heard. Praise of love or wine. That panted forth a flood of rapture so divine. Chorus hymeneal. Or triumphal chaunt. Matched with thine, would be all. But an empty vaunt. A thing wherein we feel there is some hidden want. What objects are the fountains? Of thy happy strain. What fields, or waves, or mountains? What shapes of sky or plain? What love of thine own kind? What ignorance of pain? With thy clear keen joyance. Languor cannot be. Shadow of annoyance. Never came near thee. Thou lovest, but ne'er knew love's sad satiety. Waking or asleep. Thou of death must deem. Things more true and deep. Than we mortals dream. Or how could thy notes flow in such a crystal stream? We look before and after. And pine for what is not. Our sincerest laughter. With some pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought. Yet, if we could scorn. Hate and pride, and fear. If we were things born. 
not to shed a tear. I know not how thy joy we ever should come near. Better than all measures. Of delightful sound. Better than all treasures. That in books are found. Thy skill to poet were, thou scorner of the ground. Teach me half the gladness. That thy brain must know. Such harmonious madness. From my lips would flow. The world should listen then as I am listening now. P. B. Shelley. The Nightingale. As it fell upon a day. In the merry month of May. Sitting in a pleasant shade. Which a grove of myrtles made. Beasts did leap and birds did sing. Trees did grow and plants did spring. Everything did banish moan. Save the nightingale alone. She, poor bird, as all forlorn. Leaned her breast against a thorn. And there sung the dolefulest ditty. That to hear it was great pity. Fie, 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 now would she cry. Teru, teru, by and by. That to hear her so complain. Scarce I could from tears refrain. For her grief so lively shone. Made me think upon mine own. Ah, thought I, thou mournst in vain. None takes pity on thy pain. Senseless trees, they cannot hear thee. Ruthless beasts, they will not cheer thee. King Pandion, he is dead. All thy friends are lapped in lead. All thy fellow birds do sing. Careless of thy sorrowing. Even so, poor bird, like thee. None alive will pity me. Arth Barnfield. The Sleeper. At midnight, in the month of June. I stand beneath the mystic moon. An opiate vapor, dewy, dim. Exhales from out her golden rim. And, softly dripping, drop by drop. Upon the quiet mountain top. Steals drowsily and musically. Into the universal valley. The rosemary nods upon the grave. The lily lolls upon the wave. Wrapping the fog about its breast. The ruin moulders into rest. Looking like Lethe, see, the lake. A conscious slumber seems to take. And would not, for the world, awake. All beauty sleeps, and, lo! Where lies? Her casement open to the skies. Irene, with her destinies. Oh, Lady Bright, can it be right? This window open to the night. The wanton airs from the treetop. Laughingly through the lattice drop. The bodiless airs, a wizard rout. Flit through thy chamber in and out. And wave the curtain canopy. So fitfully, so fearfully. Above the closed and fringed lid. Neath which thy slumbering soul lies hid. That, o'er the floor and down the wall. Like ghosts the shadows rise and fall. O, oh, lady dear, hast thou no fear? Why and what art thou dreaming here? Sure thou art come o'er far off seas. A wonder to these garden trees. Strange is thy pallor, strange thy dress. Strange, above all, thy length of tress. And this all solemn silentness. The lady sleeps. Oh, may her sleep. Which is enduring, so be deep. Heaven have her in its sacred keep. This chamber changed for one more holy. This bed for one more melancholy. I pray to God that she may lie. Forever with unopened eye. While the dim sheeted ghosts go by. My love, she sleeps. Oh, may her sleep. As it is lasting, so be deep. Soft may the worms about her creep. Far in the forest, dim and old. For her may some tall vault unfold. Some vault that oft hath flung its black. And winged panels fluttering back. Triumphant o'er the crested palls. Of her grand family funerals. Some sepulcher remote, alone. Against whose portal she had thrown. In childhood many an idle stone. Some tomb from out whose sounding door. She ne'er shall force an echo more. Thrilling to think, poor child of sin. 
It was the dead who groaned within. E. Po. Spring. Spring, the sweet spring, is the year's pleasant king. Then blooms each thing, then maids dance in a ring. Cold doth not sting, the pretty birds do sing. Cuckoo, jug jug, pue, to it a woo. The palm and may make country houses gay. Lambs frisk and play, the shepherds pipe all day. And we hear a, birds tune this merry lay. Cuckoo, jug jug, pue, to it a woo. The fields breathe sweet, the daisies kiss our feet. Young lovers meet, old wives a sunning sit. In every street, these tunes our ears do greet. Cuckoo, jug jug, pue, to it a woo. Spring. The sweet spring. T. Nash. The Battle of Naseby. By Obadiah bind their kings and chains and their nobles with links of iron, sergeant in Iraton's regiment. O. Oh. Wherefore come ye forth, in triumph from the north? With your hands, and your feet, and your raiment all red? And wherefore doth your rout send forth a joyous shout? And whence be the grapes of the winepress which ye tread? O oh, evil was the root, and bitter was the fruit. And crimson was the juice of the vintage that we trod. For we trampled on the throng of the haughty and the strong. Who sate in the high places, and slew the saints of God. It was about the noon of a glorious day of June. That we saw their banners dance, and their cuirasses shine. And the man of blood was there, with his long essenced hair. And Astley, and Sir Marmaduke, and Rupert of the Rhine. Like a servant of the Lord, with his Bible and his sword. The general rode along us to form us to the fight. When a murmuring sound broke out, and swelled into a shout. Among the godless horsemen upon the tyrant's right. And hark! Like the roar of the billows on the shore. The cry of battle rises along their charging line. For God. For the cause. For the church, for the laws. For Charles King of England, and Rupert of the Rhine. The furious German comes, with his clarions and his drums. His bravos of Alsatia, and pages of Whitehall. They are bursting on our flanks. Grasp your pikes, close your ranks. For Rupert never comes but to conquer or to fall. They are here. They rush on. We are broken. We are gone. Our left is borne before them like stubble on the blast. O Lord, put forth thy might. O Lord, defend the right. Stand back to back, in God's name, and fight it to the last. Stout Skippen hath a wound. The center hath given ground. Hark! Hark, what means the trampling of horsemen on our rear? Whose banner do I see, boys? Tis he, thank God, tis he, boys. Bear up another minute, brave Oliver is here. Their heads all stooping low, their points all in a row. Like a whirlwind on the trees, like a deluge on the dikes. Our cuirassiers have burst on the ranks of the accursed. And at a shock have scattered the forest of his pikes. Fast, fast, the gallants ride, in some safe nook to hide. Their coward heads, predestined to rot on temple bar. And he, he turns, he flies, shame on those cruel eyes. That bore to look on torture, and dare not look on war. Ho! Comrades, scour the plain, and, ere ye strip the slain. First give another stab to make your search secure. Then shake from sleeves and pockets their broad pieces and lockets. The tokens of the wanton, the plunder of the poor. Fools! Your doublets shone with gold, and your hearts were gay and bold. When you kissed your lily hands to your lemons today. And tomorrow shall the fox, from her chambers in the rocks. Lead forth her tawny cubs to howl above the prey. Where be your tongues that late mocked at heaven and hell and fate? And the fingers that once were so busy with your blades. Your perfumed satin clothes, your catches and your oaths. Your stage plays and your sonnets. Your diamonds and your spades. Down, down, forever down with the mitre and the crown. 
with the Belial of the court, and the mammon of the Pope. There is woe in Oxford halls, there is wail in Durham stalls. The Jesuit smites his bosom, the bishop rends his cope. And she of the seven hills shall mourn her children's ills. And tremble when she thinks on the edge of England's sword. And the kings of earth in fear shall shudder when they hear. What the hand of God hath wrought for the houses and the word. Lord Macaulay. Rosabel. O oh, listen, listen, ladies gay. No haughty feet of arms I tell. Soft is the note, and sad the lay. That mourns the lovely Rosabel. More, more the barge, ye gallant crew. And, gentle lady, deign to stay. Rest thee in Castle Ravenchurch. Nor tempt the stormy firth today. The blackening wave is edged with white. To inch three and rock the sea mews fly. The fishers have heard the water sprite. Whose screams forebode that wreck is nigh. Last night the gifted seer did view. A wet shroud swathed round Lady Gay. Then stay thee, fair, in Ravenchurch. Why cross the gloomy firth today? Tis not because Lord Lindesay's heir. Tonight at Roslyn leads the ball. But that my lady mother there. Sits lonely in her castle hall. Tis not because the ring they ride. And Lindesay at the ring rides well. But that my sire the wine will chide. If tis not filled by Rosabel. O'er Roslyn all that dreary night. A wondrous blaze was seen to gleam. Twas broader than the watchfire's light. And redder than the bright moonbeam. It glared on Roslyn's castled rock. It ruddied all the copsewood glen. Twas seen from Dryden's groves of oak. And seen from caverned Hawthornden. Seemed all on fire that chapel proud. Where Roslyn's chiefs uncoffined lie. Each baron, for a sable shroud. Sheathed in his iron panoply. Seemed all on fire within, around. Deep sacristy and altars pale. Shone every pillar foliage bound. And glimmered all the dead men's mail. Blazed battlement and pin net high. Blazed every rose carved buttress fair. So still they blaze, when fate is nigh. The lordly line of high St. Clair. There are twenty of Rosslyn's barons bold. Lie buried within that proud chapelle. Each one the holy vault doth hold. But the sea holds lovely Rosabel. And each St. Clair was buried there. With candle, with book, and with knell. But the sea caves rung, and the wild wings sung. The dirge of lovely Rosabel. Sir W. Scott. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. In Seven Parts. Part 1. It is an ancient mariner. And he stoppeth one of three. By thy long grey beard and glittering eye. Now wherefore stopst thou me? The bridegroom's doors are opened wide. And I am next of kin. The guests are met, the feast is set. Mayst hear the merry din. He holds him with his skinny hand. There was a ship, quoth he. Hold off. Unhand me. Greybeard loon. Eftsoon's his hand dropped he. He holds him with his glittering eye. The wedding guest stood still. And listens like a three years child. The mariner hath his will. The wedding guest sat on a stone. He cannot choose but hear. And thus spake on that ancient man. The bright-eyed mariner. The ship was cheered, the harbour cleared. Merrily did we drop. Below the kirk, below the hill. Below the lighthouse top. The sun came up upon the left. Out of the sea came he. And he shone bright, and on the right. Went down into the sea. Higher and higher every day. Till over the mast at noon. The wedding guest here beat his breast. For he heard the loud bassoon. The bride hath paced into the hall. Red as a rose is she. Nodding their heads before her goes. The merry minstrelsy. The wedding guest he beat his breast. Yet he cannot choose but hear. And thus spake on that ancient man. 
the bright-eyed mariner. And now the storm blast came, and he was tyrannous and strong. He struck with his o'ertaking wings and chased us south along with sloping masts and dipping prow. As who pursued with yell and blow still treads the shadow of his foe and forward bends his head. The ship drove fast, loud roared the blast. And southward I we fled. And now there came both mist and snow. And it grew wondrous cold. And ice, mast high, came floating by. As green as emerald. And through the drifts the snowy clifts. Did send a dismal sheen. Nor shapes of men nor beasts we ken. The ice was all between. The ice was here, the ice was there. The ice was all around. It cracked and growled, and roared and howled. Like noises in a swound. At length did cross an albatross. Thorough the fog it came. As if it had been a Christian soul. We hailed it in God's name. It ate the food it ne'er had eat. And round and round it flew. The ice did split with a thunder fit. The helmsman steered us through. And a good south wind sprung up behind. The albatross did follow. And every day, for food or play, came to the mariner's hollow. In mist or cloud, on mast or shroud, it perched for vespers nine. Whiles all the night, through fog smoke white, glimmered the white moonshine. God save thee, ancient mariner. From the fiends, that plague thee thus, why look'st thou so? With my crossbow. I shot the albatross. Part 2. The sun now rose upon the right. Out of the sea came he. Still hid in mist, and on the left. Went down into the sea. And the good south wind still blew behind. But no sweet bird did follow. Nor any day for food or play. Came to the mariner's hollow. And I had done a hellish thing. And it would work, em woe. For all averred, I had killed the bird. That made the breeze to blow. Ah wretch! Said they, the bird to slay. That made the breeze to blow. Nor dim nor red, like God's own head. The glorious sun uprist. Then all averred, I had killed the bird. That brought the fog and mist. Twas right, said they, such birds to slay. That bring the fog and mist. The fair breeze blew, the white foam flew. The furrow streamed off free. We were the first that ever burst. Into that silent sea. Down dropped the breeze, the sails dropped down. Twas sad as sad could be. And we did speak only to break. The silence of the sea. All in a hot and copper sky. The bloody sun, at noon. Right up above the mast did stand. No bigger than the moon. Day after day, day after day. We struck, nor breath nor motion. As idle as a painted ship. Upon a painted ocean. Water, water, everywhere. And all the boards did shrink. Water, water, everywhere. Nor any drop to drink. The very deep did rot, O Christ. That ever this should be. Yeah, slimy things did crawl with legs. Upon the slimy sea. About, about, in reel and rout. The death fires danced at night. The water, like a witch's oils. Burnt green and blue, and white. And some in dreams assured were. Of the spirit that plagued us so. Nine fathom deep he had followed us. From the land of mist and snow. And every tongue, through utter drought. Was withered at the root. We could not speak, no more than if. We had been choked with soot. Ah! Well a day. What evil looks. Had I from old and young. Instead of the cross, the albatross. About my neck was hung. Part 3. There passed a weary time. Each throat was parched, and glazed each eye. 
A weary time. A weary time. How glazed each weary eye. When looking westward, I beheld. A something in the sky. At first it seemed a little speck. And then it seemed a mist. It moved and moved, and took at last. A certain shape, I wist. A speck, a mist, a shape, I wist. And still it neared and neared. As if it dodged a water sprite. It plunged and tacked and veered. With throats unslaked, with black lips baked. We could nor laugh nor wail. Through utter drought all dumb we stood. I bit my arm, I sucked the blood. And cried, A sail! A sail! With throats unslaked, with black lips baked. Agape they heard me call. Gramercy! They for joy did grin. And all at once their breath drew in. As they were drinking all. See! See! I cried, she tax no more. Hither to work us wheel. Without a breeze, without a tide. She steadies with upright keel. The western wave was all a flame. The day was well nigh done. Almost upon the western wave. Rested the broad bright sun. When that strange shape drove suddenly. Betwixt us and the sun. And straight the sun was flecked with bars. Heaven's mother send us grace. As if through a dungeon grate he peered. With broad and burning face. Alas! Thought I, and my heart beat loud. How fast she nears and nears! Are those her sails that glance in the sun? Like restless gossamers? Are those her ribs through which the sun? Did peer, as through a grate? And is that woman all her crew? Is that a death? And are there two? Is death that woman's mate? Her lips were red, her looks were free. Her locks were yellow as gold. Her skin was as white as leprosy. The nightmare life in death was she. Who thicks man's blood with cold. The naked hulk alongside came. And the twain were casting dice. The game is done. I've won, I've won. Quoth she, and whistles thrice. The sun's rim dips, the stars rush out. At one stride comes the dark. With far heard whisper, o'er the sea. Off shot the specter bark. We listened and looked sideways up. Fear at my heart, as at a cup. My life blood seemed to sip. The stars were dim, and thick the night. The steersman's face by his lamp gleamed white. From the sails the dew did drip. Till clomb above the eastern bar. The horned moon, with one bright star. Within the nether tip. One after one, by the star-dogged moon. Too quick for groan or sigh. Each turned his face with a ghastly pang. And cursed me with his eye. For times fifty living men. And I heard nor sigh nor groan. With heavy thump, a lifeless lump. They dropped down one by one. The souls did from their bodies fly. They fled to bliss or woe. And every soul, it passed me by. Like the whiz of my crossbow. Part 4 I fear thee, ancient mariner. I fear thy skinny hand. And thou art long, and lank, and brown. As is the ribbed sea sand. I fear thee and thy glittering eye. And thy skinny hand, so brown. Fear not, fear not, thou wedding guest. This body dropped not down. Alone, alone, all all alone. Alone on a wide, wide sea. And never a saint took pity on. My soul in agony. The many men, so beautiful. And they all dead did lie. And a thousand thousand slimy things. Lived on, and so did I. I looked upon the rotting sea. And drew my eyes away. I looked upon the rotting deck. And there the dead men lay. I looked to heaven, and tried to pray. But or ever a prayer had gushed. A wicked whisper came, and made. 
My heart is dry as dust. I closed my lids, and kept them close. And the balls like pulses beat. For the sky and the sea, and the sea and the sky. Lay like a load on my weary eye. And the dead were at my feet. The cold sweat melted from their limbs. Nor rot nor reek did they. The look with which they looked on me. Had never passed away. An orphan's curse would drag to hell. A spirit from on high. But oh! More horrible than that. Is the curse in a dead man's eye. Seven days, seven nights, I saw that curse. And yet I could not die. The moving moon went up the sky. And nowhere did abide. Softly she was going up. And a star or two beside. Her beams bemocked the sultry main. Like April hoarfrost spread. But where the ship's huge shadow lay. The charmed water burnt alway. A still and awful red. Beyond the shadow of the ship. I watched the water snakes. They moved in tracks of shining white. And when they reared, the elfish light. Fell off in hoary flakes. Within the shadow of the ship. I watched their rich attire. Blue, glossy green, and velvet black. They coiled and swam, and every track. Was a flash of golden fire. Oh happy living things! No tongue. Their beauty might declare. A spring of love gushed from my heart. And I blessed them unaware. Sure my kind saint took pity on me. And I blessed them unaware. The selfsame moment I could pray. And from my neck so free. The albatross fell off and sank. Like lead into the sea. Part 5 O oh sleep! It is a gentle thing. Beloved from pole to pole. To Mary Queen the praise be given. She sent the gentle sleep from heaven. That slid into my soul. The silly buckets on the deck. That had so long remained. I dreamt that they were filled with dew. And when I awoke, it rained. My lips were wet, my throat was cold. My garments all were dank. Sure I had drunken in my dreams. And still my body drank. I moved, and could not feel my limbs. I was so light, almost. I thought that I had died in sleep. And was a blessed ghost. And soon I heard a roaring wind. It did not come anear. But with its sound it shook the sails. That were so thin and sere. The upper air burst into life. And a hundred fire flags sheen. To and fro they were hurried about. And to and fro, and in and out. The wan stars danced between. And the coming wind did roar more loud. And the sails did sigh like sedge. And the rain poured down from one black cloud. The moon was at its edge. The thick black cloud was cleft and still. The moon was at its side. Like waters shot from some high crag. The lightning fell with never a jag. A river steep and wide. The loud wind never reached the ship. Yet now the ship moved on. Beneath the lightning and the moon. The dead men gave a groan. They groaned, they stirred, they all uprose. Nor spake, nor moved their eyes. It had been strange, even in a dream. To have seen those dead men rise. The helmsman steered, the ship moved on. Yet never a breeze up blew. The mariners all the dawn worked the ropes. Where they were wont to do. They raised their limbs like lifeless tools. We were a ghastly crew. The body of my brother's son. Stood by me, knee to knee. The body and I pulled at one rope. But he said not to me. I fear thee, ancient mariner. Be calm, thou wedding guest. Twas not those souls that fled in pain. Which to their courses came again. But a troop of spirits blessed. For when it dawned, they dropped their arms. And clustered round the mast. Sweet sounds rose slowly through their mouths. 
and from their bodies passed. Around, around, flew each sweet sound. Then darted to the sun. Slowly the sounds came back again. Now mixed, now one by one. Sometimes a dropping from the sky. I heard the skylark sing. Sometimes all little birds that are. How they seemed to fill the sea and air. With their sweet jargoning. And now, twas like all instruments. Now like a lonely flute. And now it is an angel's song. That makes the heavens be mute. It ceased. Yet still the sails made on. A pleasant noise till noon. A noise like of a hidden brook. In the leafy month of June. That to the sleeping woods all night. Singeth a quiet tune. Till noon we quietly sailed on. Yet never a breeze did breathe. Slowly and smoothly went the ship. Moved onward from beneath. Under the keel nine fathom deep. From the land of mist and snow. The spirit slid, and it was he. That made the ship to go. The sails at noon left off their tune. And the ship stood still also. The sun, right up above the mast. Had fixed her to the ocean. But in a minute she gone stir. With a short uneasy motion. Backwards and forwards half her length. With a short uneasy motion. Then like a pawing horse let go. She made a sudden bound. It flung the blood into my head. And I fell down in a swound. How long in that same fit I lay. I have not to declare. But ere my living life returned. I heard, and in my soul discerned. Two voices in the air. Is it he, quoth one, is this the man? By him who died on cross. With his cruel bow he laid full low. The harmless albatross. The spirit who bedeath by himself. In the land of mist and snow. He loved the bird that loved the man. Who shot him with his bow. The other was a softer voice. As soft as honey dew. Quoth he, The man hath penance done. And penance more will do. Part 6 First Voice But tell me, tell me. Speak again. Thy soft response renewing. What makes that ship drive on so fast? What is the ocean doing? Second Voice Still as a slave before his lord. The ocean hath no blast. His great bright eye most silently. Up to the moon is cast. If he may know which way to go. For she guides him smooth or grim. See, brother, see. How graciously. She looketh down on him. First voice. But why drives on that ship so fast? Without or wave or wind. Second voice. The air is cut away before. And closes from behind. Fly, brother, fly. More high, more high. Or we shall be belated. For slow and slow that ship will go. When the mariner's trance is abetted. I woke, and we were sailing on. As in a gentle weather. Twas night, calm night, the moon was high. The dead men stood together. All stood together on the deck. For a charnel dungeon fitter. All fixed on me their stony eyes. That in the moon did glitter. The pang, the curse, with which they died. Had never passed away. I could not draw my eyes from theirs. Nor turn them up to pray. And now this spell was snapped, once more. I viewed the ocean green. And looked far forth, yet little saw. Of what had else been seen. Like one that on a lonesome road. Doth walk in fear and dread. And having once turned round walks on. And turns no more his head. Because he knows, a frightful fiend. Doth close behind him tread. But soon there breathed a wind on me. Nor sound nor motion made. Its path was not upon the sea. In ripple or in shade. It raised my hair, it fanned my cheek. 
Like a meadow gale of spring, it mingled strangely with my fears. Yet it felt like a welcoming. Swiftly, swiftly flew the ship. Yet she sailed softly too. Sweetly, sweetly blew the breeze, on me alone it blew. Oh! Dream of joy! Is this indeed? The lighthouse top I see. Is this the hill? Is this the kirk? Is this mine own country? We drifted o'er the harbor bar. And I with sobs did pray, O oh, let me be awake, my God. Or let me sleep alway. The harbor bay was clear as glass. So smoothly it was strewn. And on the bay the moonlight lay. And the shadow of the moon. The rock shone bright, the kirk no less. That stands above the rock. The moonlight steeped in silentness. The steady weathercock. And the bay was white with silent light. Till, rising from the same. Full many shapes, that shadows were. In crimson colors came. A little distance from the prow. Those crimson shadows were. I turned my eyes upon the deck, oh, Christ! What saw I there? Each course lay flat, lifeless and flat. And by the holy rood. A man all light, a seraph man. On every course there stood. This seraph band, each waved his hand. It was a heavenly sight. They stood as signals to the land. Each one a lovely light. This seraph band, each waved his hand. No voice did they impart, no voice, but oh! The silence sank. Like music on my heart. But soon I heard the dash of oars. I heard the pilots cheer. My head was turned perforce away. And I saw a boat appear. The pilot, and the pilot's boy. I heard them coming fast. Dear Lord in heaven. It was a joy. The dead men could not blast. I saw a third, I heard his voice. It is the hermit good. He singeth loud his godly hymns. That he makes in the wood. He'll shrieve my soul, he'll wash away. The albatross's blood. Part 7. This hermit good lives in that wood. Which slopes down to the sea. How loudly his sweet voice he rears. He loves to talk with mariners. That come from a far country. He kneels at morn, and noon, and eve. He hath a cushion plump. It is the moss that wholly hides. The rotted old oak stump. The skiff boat neared, I heard them talk. Why, this is strange, I trow. Where are those lights so many and fair? That signal made but now. Strange, by my faith, the hermit said. And they answered not our cheer. The planks look warped. And see those sails. How thin they are and sear. I never saw aught like to them. Unless perchance it were. Brown skeletons of leaves that lag. My forest broke along. When the ivy tod is heavy with snow. And the owlet whoops to the wolf below. That eats the she-wolf's young. Dear Lord. It hath a fiendish look. The pilot made reply. I am a-feared, push on, push on. Said the hermit cheerily. The boat came closer to the ship. But I nor spake nor stirred. The boat came close beneath the ship. And straight a sound was heard. Under the water it rumbled on. Still louder and more dread. It reached the ship, it split the bay. The ship went down like lead. Stunned by that loud and dreadful sound. Which sky and ocean smote. Like one that hath been seven days drowned. My body lay afloat. But swift as dreams, myself I found. Within the pilot's boat. Upon the whirl, where sank the ship. The boat spun round and round. And all was still, save that the hill. Was telling of the sound. I moved my lips, the pilot shrieked. And fell down in a fit. The holy hermit raised his eyes. And prayed where he did sit. 
I took the oars, the pilot's boy. Who now doth crazy go? Laughed loud and long, and all the while. His eyes went to and fro, ha! Ha! Quoth he, full plain I see. The devil knows how to row. And now, all in my own country. I stood on the firm land. The hermit stepped forth from the boat. And scarcely he could stand. Oh shrieve me, shrieve me, holy man. The hermit crossed his brow. Say quick, quoth he, I bid thee say. What manner of man art thou? Forthwith this frame of mine was wrenched. With a waffle agony. Which forced me to begin my tale. And then it left me free. Since then, at an uncertain hour. That agony returns. Until my ghastly tale is told. This heart within me burns. I pass, like night, from land to land. I have strange power of speech. The moment that his face I see. I know the man that must hear me. To him my tale I teach. What loud uproar bursts from that door. The wedding guests are there. But in the garden bower the bride. And bridemaids singing are. And hark the little vesper bell. Which biddeth me to prayer. O wedding guest! This soul hath been Alone on a wide, wide sea. So lonely, t'was, that God himself Scarce seemed there to be. O sweeter than the marriage feast! Tis sweeter far to me To walk together to the kirk With a goodly company To walk together to the kirk And all together pray While each to his great father bends Old men, and babes, and loving friends. And youths and maidens gay. Farewell, farewell. But this I tell. To thee, thou wedding guest. He prayeth well, who loveth well. Both man and bird and beast. He prayeth best, who loveth best. All things both great and small. For the dear God who loveth us. He made and loveth all. The mariner, whose eye is bright, whose beard with age is hoar, is gone, and now the wedding guest, turned from the bridegroom's door. He went like one that hath been stunned, and is of sense forlorn, a sadder and a wiser man. He rose the morrow morn. S. T. Coleridge. The Haunted Palace. I. In the greenest of our valleys. By good angels tenanted. Once a fair and stately palace. Radiant palace, reared its head. In the monarch thought's dominion. It stood there. Never seraph spread opinion. Over fabric half so fair. Two. Banners, yellow, glorious, golden. On its roof did float and flow. This, all this, was in the olden. Time, long ago. And every gentle air that dallied. In that sweet day. Along the ramparts plumed and pallid. A winged odor went away. Three. Wanderers in that happy valley. Through two luminous windows saw. Spirits moving musically. To a lute's well-tuned law. Round about a throne where, sitting. Porphyrogene. In state his glory well befitting. The ruler of the realm was seen. 4. And all with pearl and ruby glowing. Was the fair palace door. Through which came flowing, flowing, flowing. And sparkling evermore. A troop of echoes, whose sweet duty. Was but to sing. In voices of surpassing beauty. The wit and wisdom of their king. V. But evil things, in robes of sorrow, assailed the monarch's high estate. Ah, let us mourn, for never morrow shall dawn upon him desolate winky face, and round about his home the glory that blushed and bloomed is but a dim remembered story of the old time entombed. 6. And travelers now within that valley through the red litten windows see. 
vast forms, that move fantastically. To a discordant melody. While, like a ghastly rapid river. Through the pale door. A hideous throng rush out forever. And laugh, but smile no more. E. Poe. The Bard. Pindaric Ode. Ruin seize thee, ruthless king. Confusion on thy banners wait. Though, fanned by conquest's crimson wing. They mock the air with idle state. Helm, nor hauberk's twisted mail. Nor e'en thy virtues, tyrant, shall avail. To save thy secret soul from nightly fears. From Cambria's curse, from Cambria's tears. Such were the sounds, that o'er the crested pride. Of the first Edward scattered wild dismay. As down the steep of Snowdon's shaggy side. He wound with toilsome march his long array. Stout Gloucester stood aghast in speechless trance. To arms! Cried Mortimer, and couched his quivering lance. On a rock, whose haughty brow. Frowns o'er old Conway's foaming flood. Robed in the sable garb of woe. With haggard eyes the poet stood. Loose his beard and hoary hair. Streamed like a meteor to the troubled air. And with a master's hand and prophet's fire. Struck the deep sorrows of his lyre. Hark, how each giant oak and desert cave. Sighs to the torrent's awful voice beneath. O'er thee, O king. Their hundred arms they wave. Revenge on thee in hoarser murmurs breathe. Vocal no more, since Cambria's fatal day. To highborn holes harp, or soft Llewellyn's lay. Cold as Cadwallo's tongue. That hushed the stormy main. Brave Urian sleeps upon his craggy bed. Mountains, ye mourn in vain. Madrid. Whose magic song. Made huge Plinlamon bow his cloud-topped head. On dreary Arvon's shore they lie. Smeared with gore, and ghastly pale. Far, far aloof th affrighted ravens sail. The famished eagle screams, and passes by. Dear lost companions of my tuneful art. Dear, as the light that visits these sad eyes. Dear, as the ruddy drops that warm my heart. Ye died amidst your dying country's cries. No more I weep. They do not sleep. On yonder cliffs, a greasly band. I see them sit, they linger yet. Avengers of their native land. With me in dreadful harmony they join. And weave with bloody hands the tissue of thy line. Weave the warp, and weave the woof. The winding sheet of Edward's race. Give ample room, and verge enough. The characters of hell to trace. Mark the year, and mark the night. When Severn shall re-echo with affright. The shrieks of death, through Berkeley's roofs that ring. Shrieks of an agonizing king. She wolf of France, with unrelenting fangs. That tears the bowels of thy mangled mate. From thee be born, who o'er thy country hangs. The scourge of heaven. What terrors round him wait. Amazement in his van, with flight combined and sorrow's faded form, and solitude behind. Mighty victor, mighty lord. Low on his funeral couch he lies. No pitying heart, no eye, afford. A tear to grace his obsequies. Is the sable warrior fled? Thy son is gone. He rests among the dead. The swarm that in thy noontide beam were born. Gone to salute the rising morn. Fair laughs the morn, and soft the zephyr blows. While proudly riding o'er the azure realm. In gallant trim the gilded vessel goes. Youth on the prow, and pleasure at the helm. Regardless of the sweeping whirlwind sway. That hushed in grim repose expects his evening prey. Fill high the sparkling bowl. The rich repast prepare. Reft of a crown, he yet may share the feast. Close by the regal chair. Fell thirst and famine scowl. A baleful smile upon their baffled guest. Heard ye the din of battle bray. Lance to lance, and horse to horse. 
long years of havoc urged their destined course. And through the kindred squadrons mow their way. Ye towers of Julius, London's lasting shame. With many a foul and midnight murder fed. Revere his consort's faith, his father's fame. And spare the meek usurper's holy head. Above, below, the rose of snow. Twined with her blushing foe, we spread. The bristled boar in infant gore. Wallows beneath the thorny shade. Now, brothers, bending o'er the accursed loom. Stamp we our vengeance deep, and ratify his doom. Edward, lo! To sudden fate. Weave we the woof. The thread is spun. Half of thy heart we consecrate. The web is wove. The work is done. Stay, O oh stay. Nor thus forlorn. Leave me unblessed, unpitied, here to mourn. In yon bright track, that fires the western skies. They melt, they vanish from my eyes. But oh! What solemn scenes on Snowdon's height! Descending slow their glittering skirts unroll. Visions of glory, spare my aching sight. Ye unborn ages, crowd not on my soul. No more our long-lost Arthur we bewail. All hail, ye genuine kings! Britannia's issue, hail! Girt with many a barren bold. Sublime their starry fronts they rear. And gorgeous dames, and statesmen old. In bearded majesty, appear. In the midst a form divine. Her eye proclaims her of the Britain line. Her lion port, her awe commanding face. A tempered sweet to virgin grace. What string symphonious tremble in the air. What strains of vocal transport round her play. Here from the grave, great Taliesin, here. They breathe a soul to animate thy clay. Bright rapture calls, and soaring, as she sings. Waves in the eye of he van her many-colored wings. The verse adorn again. Fierce war, and faithful love. And truth severe, by fairy fiction drayest. In buskined measures move. Pale grief, and pleasing pain. With horror, tyrant of the throbbing breast. A voice as of the cherub choir. Gales from blooming Eden bear. And distant warblings lessen on my ear. That lost in long futurity expire. Fond and pious man, thinkst thou, yon sanguine cloud. Raised by thy breath, has quenched the orb of day. Tomorrow he repairs the golden flood. And warms the nations with redoubled ray. Enough for me, with joy I see. The different doom our fates assign. Be thine despair and sceptred care. To triumph, and to die, are mine. He spoke, and headlong from the mountain's height. Deep in the roaring tide he plunged to endless night. T. Gray. Song. Where shall the lover rest? Whom the fates sever. From his true maiden's breast. Parted forever. Where? Through groves deep and high. Sounds the far billow. Where early violets die. Under the willow. Chorus. Ele loro, and k. Soft shall be his pillow. There, through the summer day. Cool streams are laving. There, while the tempests sway. Scarce are boughs waving. There, thy rest shalt thou take. Parted for ever. Never again to wake. Never, oh never. Chorus. Ele loro, and k. Never, oh never. Where shall the traitor rest? He, the deceiver. Who could win maiden's breast? Ruin, and leave her. In the lost battle. Borne down by the flying. Where mingles wars rattle. With groans of the dying. Chorus. Ele loro, and k. There shall he be lying. Her wings shall the eagle flap. O'er the false hearted. His warm blood the wolf shall lap. Ere life be parted. Shame and dishonor sit. By his grave ever. Blessing shall hallow it, never, oh never. 
Chorus. Eleu loro, enk. Never, oh never. Sir W. Scott. Kinmont Willie. Oh have ye not heard o the Fawz Sakelda? Oh have ye not heard o the keen Lord Scrope? How they hay tain bald Kinmont Willie. On Harabee to hang him up. Had Willie had but twenty men. But twenty men as stout as he. Fawz Sakelda had never the Kinmont tain. Why, eight score in his company. They banned his legs beneath the steed. They tied his hands behind his back. They guarded him, five some on each side. And they brought him o'er the lid rack. They led him through the lid rack. And also through the Carlisle sands. They brought him on to Carlisle Castell. To be at my lord Scrope's commands. My hands are tied, but my tongue is free. And we will dare this deed of owl. Or answer by the border law. Or answer to the bald bukluk. Now hod thy tongue, thou rank reaver. There's never a Scot shall set ye free. Before ye cross my castle yate. I trow ye shall take farewell o me. Fear na ye that, my lord, quo Willie. By the faith o my body, Lord Scrope, he said. I never yet lodged in a hostelry. But I paid my lawing before I geed. Now word is gained to the bald keeper. In Branksome Ha, where that he lay. That Lord Scrope has ta'en the Kinmont Willie. Between the hours of night and day. He has ta'en the table why his hand. He guard the red wine spring on high. Now Christ's curse on my head, he said. But avenged of Lord Scrope I'll be. Oh, is my bassnet a widow's catch? Or my lance a wand of the willow tree? Or my arm a lady's lily hand? That an English lord should lightly me. And have they tain him, Kinmont Willie. Against the truce of border tide. And forgotten that the bald Buchluk. Is keeper here on the Scottish side. And have they e'en tain him, Kinmont Willie. Withouten either dread or fear. And forgotten that the bald Buchluk. Can back a steed, or shake a spear. Oh were there war between the lands. As well I wot that there is none. I would slight Carlisle Castell high. Though, it were builded of marble stone. I would set that castell in a low. And sloken it with English blood. There's never a man in Cumberland. Should ken where Carlisle Castell stood. But since nay wars between the lands. And there is peace, and peace should be. I'll neither harm English lad or lass. And yet the Kinmont freed shall be. He has called him forty marchmen bald. I trow they were of his ain name. Except Sir Gilbert Elliot, called. The Laird of Stobbs, I mean the same. He has called him forty marchmen bald. Were kinsmen to the bald Buchluk. With spur on heel, and splint on spald. And gloves of green, and feathers blue. There were five and five before them a. Why, hunting horns and bugles bright. And five and five came why. Bukluk, like warden's men, arrayed for fight. And five and five, like a mason gang. That carried the ladders lang and high. And five and five, like broken men. And so they reached the Woodhouse Ali. And as we crossed the baitable land. When to the English side we held. The first O, oh, men that we met why. Way sold it be but Fawz Sakelda. Where be ye gone, ye hunters keen? Quo, Fawz Sakelda, come tell to me. We go to hunt an English stag. Has trespassed on the Scots country. Where be ye gone, ye martial men? Quo, Fawz Sakelda, come tell me true. We go to catch a rank reaver. Has broken faith why, the bald Bukluk. Where are ye gone, ye mason lads? Why, your ladders, lang and high. We gang to harry a corby's nest. That wan's not far fray Woodhouse Ali. Where be ye gone ye broken men? Quo, Faw Sakelda, come tell to me. Now Dickie of Dryhope led that band. 
and the never a word o oh, lear had he. Why trespass ye on the English side? Row-footed outlaws, stand, quo, he. The never a word had Dicky to say. S.A.E. he thrust the lance through his fa's body. Then on we held for Carlisle tune. And at Stainsha bank the Eden we crossed. The water was great and meekle of spate. But the neither a horse nor man we lost. And when we reached the Stainsha bank. The wind was rising loud and high. And there the laird guard leave our steeds. For fear that they should stamp an N.I.E. And when we left the Stainsha bank. The wind began full loud to blow. But, twas wind and wheat, and fire and sleet. When we came beneath the castle wall. We crept on knees, and held our breath. Till we placed the ladders against the wall. And S.A.E. ready was Bukluk himself. To mount the first, before us a. Uh, he has ta'en the watchman by the throat. He flung him down upon the lead. Had there not been peace between our lands. Upon the other side thou hadst geed. Now sound out, trumpets, quo, Bukluk. Let's waken Lord Scrope right merrily. Then loud the warden's trumpet blew. Oh what dare metal why, me. Then speedily to work we geed. And raised the slogan ain and a. And cut a hole through a sheet of lead. And so we won to the castle ha. They thought King James and a his men. Had won the house why, bow and spear. It was but twenty Scots and ten. That put a thousand in sick a steer. Why, coulters, and why, four hammers. We guard the bars bang merrily. Until we came to the inner prison. Where Willie O. Oh, Kinmont he did lie. And when we came to the lower prison. Where Willie O. Oh, Kinmont he did lie. O oh, sleep ye, wake ye, Kinmont Willie. Upon the morn that thou's to die. O oh, I sleep soft, and I wake aft. It's lang since sleeping was flayed fray me. G.I.E. my service back to my wife and bairns. And the good fellows that spire for me. Then Red Rowan has hent him up. The starkest man in Teviotdale. Abide, abide now, Red Rowan. Till of my Lord Scrope I take farewell. Farewell, farewell, my good Lord Scrope. My good Lord Scrope, farewell, he cried. I'll pay you for my lodging mail. When first we meet on the border side. Then shoulder high, with shout and cry. We bore him down the ladder lang. At every stride Red Rowan made. I what the Kinmont's errands played clang. Oh mony a time, quo, Kinmont Willie. I have ridden horse baith wild and wood. But a rougher beast than Red Rowan. I we my legs have ne'er best rode. And mony a time, quo, Kinmont Willie. I've pricked a horse out hour the furs. But since the day I backed a steed. I never wore sick cumbrous spurs. We scarce had won the Stainsha bank. When at the Carlisle bells were rung. And a thousand men, in horse and foot. Cam, why, the keen lord scrope along. Bukluk has turned to Eden water. Even where it flowed fray bank to brim. And he has plunged in why, uh, his band. And safely swam them through the stream. He turned him on the other side. And at Lord Scrope his glove flung he. If ye like now my visit in merry England. In fair Scotland come visit me. All sore astonished stood Lord Scrope. He stood as still as rock of stain. He scarcely dared to true his eyes. When through the, the water they had gain. He is either himself a devil fray hell. Or else his mother a witch mon be. I wadna have ridden that one water. For a, the gowd in Christentai. Minstrelsy of the Scottish border. The last man. All worldly shapes shall melt in gloom. The sun himself must die. Before this mortal shall assume. Its immortality. I saw a vision in my sleep. That gave my spirit strength to sweep. Adown the gulf of time. I saw the last of human mold. 
that shall creation's death behold. As Adam saw her prime, the sun's eye had a sickly glare. The earth with age was wan. The skeletons of nations were around that lonely man. Some had expired in fight, the brands still rested in their bony hands. In plague and famine some earth cities had no sound nor tread. And ships were drifting with the dead. To shores where all was dumb. Yet, prophet-like, that lone one stood. With dauntless words and high. That shook the sear leaves from the wood. As if a storm passed by, saying. We are twins in death, proud son. Thy face is cold, thy race is run. Tis mercy bids thee go. For thou ten thousand thousand years. Hast seen the tide of human tears. That shall no longer flow. What though beneath thee man put forth. His pomp, his pride, his skill. And arts that made fire, flood, and earth. The vassals of his will. Yet mourn I not thy parted sway. Thou dim discrowned king of day. For all those trophied arts. And triumphs that beneath thee sprang. Healed not a passion or a pang. Entailed on human hearts. Go, let oblivion's curtain fall. Upon the stage of men. Nor with thy rising beams recall. Life's tragedy again. Its piteous pageants bring not back. Nor waken flesh, upon the rack. Of pain anew to writhe. Stretched in diseases shapes abhorred. Or moan in battle by the sword. Like grass beneath the scythe. E'en I am weary in yon skies. To watch thy fading fire. Test of all sumless agonies. Behold not me expire. My lips that speak thy dirge of death. Their rounded gasp and gurgling breath. To see thou shalt not boast. The eclipse of nature spreads my pall. The majesty of darkness shall. Receive my parting ghost. This spirit shall return to him. That gave its heavenly spark. Yet think not, son, it shall be dim. When thou thyself art dark. No. It shall live again, and shine. In bliss unknown to beams of thine. By him recalled to breath. Who captive led captivity. Who robbed the grave of victory. And took the sting from death. Go, son while mercy holds me up. On nature's awful waste. To drink this last and bitter cup of grief that man shall taste. Go, tell the night that hides thy face. Thou sawst the last of Adam's race. On earth's sepulchral clod. The darkening universe defy. To quench his immortality. Or shake his trust in God. T. Campbell. Ivory. A Song of the Huguenots. Now glory to the Lord of hosts, from whom all glories are. And glory to our sovereign liege, King Henry of Navarre. Now let there be the merry sound of music and of dance. Through thy cornfields green, and sunny vines, O pleasant land of France. And thou, Rochelle, our own Rochelle, proud city of the waters. Again let rapture light the eyes of all thy mourning daughters. As thou wert constant in our ills, be joyous in our joy. For cold, and stiff, and still are they who wrought thy walls annoy. Hurrah! Hurrah! A single field hath turned the chance of war. Hurrah! Hurrah! For Ivry, and Henry of Navarre. Oh! How our hearts were beating, when, at the dawn of day, we saw the army of the League drawn out in long array. With all its priest-led citizens, and all its rebel peers. And Appenzell's stout infantry, and Egmont's Flemish spears. There rode the brood of false Lorraine, the curses of our land. And dark Mayan was in the midst, a truncheon in his hand. And, as we looked on them, we thought of Seine's empurpled flood. And good Coligny's hoary hair all dabbled with his blood. And we cried unto the living God, who rules the fate of war. To fight for his own holy name, and Henry of Navarre. 
the king is come to marshal us, in all his armor drayest. And he has bound a snow-white plume upon his gallant crest. He looked upon his people, and a tear was in his eye. He looked upon the traitors, and his glance was stern and high. Right graciously he smiled on us, as rolled from wing to wing. Down all our line, a deafening shout, God save our lord the king. And if my standard-bearer fall, as fall full well he may. For never saw I promise yet of such a bloody fray. Press where ye see my white plume shine, amidst the ranks of war. And be your oriflamme today the helmet of Navarre. Hurrah! The foes are moving. Hark to the mingled din. Of fife, and steed, and trump, and drum, and roaring culverin. The fiery duke is pricking fast across St. Andre's plain. With all the hireling chivalry of Gelders and Almain. Now by the lips of those ye love, fair gentlemen of France. Charge for the golden lilies, upon them with the lance. A thousand spurs are striking deep, a thousand spears in rest. A thousand knights are pressing close behind the snow-white crest. And in they burst, and on they rushed, while like a guiding star. Amidst the thickest carnage blazed the helmet of Navarre. Now, God be praised, the day is ours. Mayan hath turned his rein. The Mali hath cried for quarter. The Flemish count is slain. Their ranks are breaking like thin clouds before a Biscay gale. The field is heaped with bleeding steeds, and flags, and cloven mail. And then we thought on vengeance, and, all along our van. Remember St. Bartholomew, was passed from man to man. But out spake gentle Henry, no Frenchman is my foe. Down, down with every foreigner, but let your brethren go. Oh! Was there ever such a knight in friendship or in war? As our sovereign lord, King Henry, the soldier of Navarre. Right well fought all the Frenchmen who fought for France today. And many a lordly banner God gave them for a prey. But we of the religion have borne us best in fight. And the good lord of Rosny has ta'en the cornet white. Our own true Maximilian the cornet white hath ta'en. The cornet white with crosses black, the flag of false Lorraine. Up with it high. Unfurl it wide, that all the host may know. How God hath humbled the proud house which wrought. His church such woe. Then on the ground, while trumpets sound their loudest point of war. Fling the red shreds, a footcloth meet for Henry of Navarre. Ho! Maidens of Vienna, ho! Matrons of Lucerne. Weep, weep, and rend your hair for those who never shall return. Ho! Philip, send, for charity, thy Mexican pistoles. That Antwerp monks may sing a mass for thy poor spearmen souls. Ho! Gallant nobles of the League, look that your arms be bright. Ho! Burghers of St. Genevieve, keep watch and ward tonight. For our God hath crushed the tyrant, our God hath raised the slave. And mocked the counsel of the wise, and the valor of the brave. Then glory to his holy name, from whom all glories are. And glory to our sovereign Lord, King Henry of Navarre. Lord Macaulay. Sir Patrick Spens. The king sits in Dunfermline tune. Drinking the blood-red wine. Oh where will I get a skilly skipper? To sail this new ship of mine. Oh up and spake an elder knight. Sat at the king's right knee. Sir Patrick Spens is the best sailor. That ever sailed the sea. Our king has written a braid letter. And sealed it with his hand. And sent it to Sir Patrick Spens was walking on the strand. To Norway, to Norway. To Norway o'er the fame. The king's daughter of Norway. Tis thou mon bring her hame. The first word that Sir Patrick read. S.A.E. loud loud laughed he. The neest word that Sir Patrick read. The tear blinded his ee. -e. Oh why is this has done this deed. And told the king o oh, me. To send us out at this time of the year. To sail upon the sea. Be it wind, be it wheat, be it hail, 
be it sleet. Our ship must sail the fame. The king's daughter of Norway. Tis we must fetch her hame. They hoise their sails on mun and they mourn. Why, the speed they may. And they hay landed in Norway. Upon a Vaden's day. They hadna been a week, a week. In Norway but tway. When that the lords o oh, Norway. Began aloud to say. Ye Scottish men spend a, our king's goud. And a, our KNS fee. Ye lie, ye lie, ye liars loud. Foo, loud I hear ye lie. For I hae brought as much white money. As gain my men and me. And I hae brought a half fo, o, good red goud. O n t o er the c y me. Make ready, make ready, my merry mena. Our good ship sails the morn. Now ever alake, my master dear. I fear a deadly storm. I saw the new moon, late ye stream. Why the old moon in her arm? And if we gang to sea, master. I fear we'll come to harm. They hadna sailed a league, a league. A league but barely three. When the lift grew dark, and the wind blew loud. And gully grew the sea. The anchors brack, and the topmasts lap. It was sick a deadly storm. And the waves cam o'er the broken ship. Till up her sides were torn. Oh, where will I get a good sailor? To take my helm in hand. Till I get up to the tall topmast. To see if I can spy land. Oh, here am I, a sailor good. To take the helm in hand. Till ye get up to the tall topmast. But I fear you'll ne'er spy land. He hadna gain a step, a step. A step but barely aim. When about flew out of our goodly ship. And the salt sea it came in. Gee, fetch a web o oh, the silken claith. Another o oh, the twine. And wap them into our ship's side. And letna the sea come in. They fetched a web o oh, the silken claith. Another o oh, the twine. And they walked them round that good ship's side. But still the sea came in. O oh, lathe lathe were our good Scots lords. To wet their cork heeled shoon. But lang era the play was played. They wet their hats abun. And Moni was the feather bed. That floated on the fame. And Moni was the good lord's son. That never mare came hame. The ladies rang their fingers white. The maidens tore their hair. Up, uh, for the sake of their true loves. For them they'll see na mare. O oh, lang lang may the lady sit. Why, their fans into their hand. Before they see Sir Patrick Spens. Come sailing to the strand. And lang lang may the maidens sit. Why, the gowd came's in their hair. Up, uh, waiting for their ain dear loves. For them they'll see na mare. O oh, forty miles off Aberdour. Tis fifty fathoms deep. And there lies good Sir Patrick Spens. Why, the Scots lords at his feet. La Belle Dame sans mercy. Ah! What can ail thee, wretched white? Alone and palely loitering. The sedge is withered from the lake. And no birds sing. Ah! What can ail thee, wretched white? So haggard and so woebegone. The squirrel's granary is full. And the harvest's done. I see a lily on thy brow. With anguish moist and fever dew. And on thy cheek a fading rose. Fast withereth too. I met a lady in the meads. Full beautiful, a fairy's child. Her hair was long, her foot was light. And her eyes were wild. I set her on my pacing steed. And nothing else saw all day long. For sideways would she lean and sing. A fairy song. I made a garland for her head. And bracelets too, and fragrant zone. She looked at me as she did love. And made sweet moan. She found me roots of relish sweet. And honey wild, and manna dew. And sure in language strange she said. I love thee true. 
she took me to her elfin grot. And there she gazed and sighed deep. And there I shut her wild sad eyes. So kissed to sleep. And there we slumbered on the moss. And there I dreamed, ah! Woe betide! The latest dream I ever dreamed. On the cold hillside. I saw pale kings and princes too. Pale warriors, death pale were they all. Who cried, La Belle Dame sans mercy? Hath thee in thrall? I saw their starved lips in the gloom. With horrid warning gaped wide. And I awoke, and found me here. On the cold hillside. And this is why I sojourn here. Alone and palely loitering. Though the sedge is withered from the lake. And no birds sing. J. Keats. The Child and the Snake. Henry was every morning fed. With a full mess of milk and bread. One day the boy his breakfast took. And ate it by a purling brook. Which through his mother's orchard ran. From that time ever when he can. Escape his mother's eye, he there. Takes his food in th open air. Finding the child delight to eat. Abroad, and make the grass his seat. His mother lets him have his way. With free leave Henry every day. Thither repairs, until she heard. Him talking of a fine grey bird. This pretty bird, he said, indeed. Came every day with him to feed. And it loved him and loved his milk. And it was smooth and soft like silk. His mother thought she'd go and see. What sort of bird this same might be. So the next morn she follows Harry. And carefully she sees him carry. Through the long grass his heaped up mess. What was her terror and distress. When she saw the infant take. His bread and milk close to a snake. Upon the grass he spreads his feast. And sits down by his frightful guest. Who had waited for the treat. And now they both began to eat. Fond mother. Shriek not, oh beware. The least small noise, oh have a care. The least small noise that may be made. The wily snake will be afraid. If he hear the lightest sound. He will inflict th envenomed wound. She speaks not, moves not, scarce does breathe. As she stands the trees beneath. No sound she utters, and she soon. Sees the child lift up his spoon. And tap the snake upon the head. Fearless of harm. And then he said. As speaking to familiar mate. Keep on your own side, do, grey pate. The snake then to the other side. As one rebuked, seems to glide. And now again advancing nigh. Again she hears the infant cry. Tapping the snake, keep further, do. Mind, grey pate, what I say to you. The danger's o'er, she sees the boy. Oh what a change from fear to joy. Rise and bid the snake goodbye. Says he, our breakfast's done, and I. Will come again tomorrow day. Then, lightly tripping, ran away. M. Lamb. Tom Bowling. Here, a sheer hulk, lies poor Tom Bowling. The darling of our crew. No more he'll hear the tempest howling. For death has broached him to. His form was of the manliest beauty. His heart was kind and soft. Faithful below he did his duty. But now he's gone aloft. Tom never from his word departed. His virtues were so rare. His friends were many and true-hearted. His pole was kind and fair. And then he'd sing so blithe and jolly. Ah, many's the time and oft. But mirth is turned to melancholy. For Tom is gone aloft. Yet shall poor Tom find pleasant weather. When he who all commands. Shall give, to call life's crew together. The word to pipe all hands. Thus death, who kings and tars dispatches. In vain Tom's life has doffed. For though his body's under hatches. His soul has gone aloft. See, Dibden. 
the kitten and falling leaves. That way look, my infant, lo. What a pretty baby show. See the kitten on the wall. Sporting with the leaves that fall. Withered leaves, one, two, and three. From the lofty elder tree. Through the calm and frosty air. Of this morning bright and fair. Eddying round and round they sink. Softly, slowly, one might think. From the motions that are made. Every little leaf conveyed. Sylph or fairy hither tending. To this lower world descending. Each invisible and mute. In his wavering parachute. But the kitten, how she starts. Crouches, stretches, paws, and darts. First at one, and then its fellow. Just as light and just as yellow. There are many now, now one. Now they stop, and there are none. What intenseness of desire. In her upward eye of fire. With a tiger leap halfway. Now she meets the coming prey. Let's it go as fast, and then. Has it in her power again. Now she works with three or four. Like an Indian conjurer. Quick as he in feats of art. Far beyond in joy of heart. Were her antics played in THI. Of a thousand standers by. Clapping hands with shout and stare. What would little Tabby care? For the plaudits of the crowd. Over happy to be proud. Over wealthy in the treasure. Of her own exceeding pleasure. Tis a pretty baby treat. Nor, I deem, for me unmeet. Here, for neither babe nor me. Other playmate can I see. Of the countless living things. That with stir of feet and wings. In the sun or under shade. Upon bough or grassy blade. And with busy revelings. Chirp and song, and murmurings. Made this orchard's narrow space. And this vale so blithe a place. Multitudes are swept away. Never more to breathe the day. Some are sleeping. Some in bands. Traveled into distant lands. Others slunk to moor and wood. Far from human neighborhood. And, among the kinds that keep. With us closer fellowship. With us openly abide. All have laid their mirth aside. Where is he that giddy sprite? Blue cap, with his colors bright. Who was blessed as bird could be. Feeding in the apple tree. Made such wanton spoil and rout. Turning blossoms inside out. Hung, head pointing towards the ground. Fluttered, perched, into a round. Bound himself, and then unbound. Lithest, gaudiest harlequin. Prettiest tumbler ever seen. Light of heart and light of limb. What is now become of him? Lambs, that through the mountains went. Frisking, bleeding merriment. When the year was in its prime. They are sobered by this time. If you look to vale or hill. If you listen, all is still. Save a little neighboring rill. That from out the rocky ground. Strikes a solitary sound. Vainly glitter hill and plain. And the air is calm in vain. Vainly morning spreads the lure. Of a sky serene and pure. Creature none can she decoy. Into open sign of joy. Is it that they have a fear. Of the dreary season near. Or that other pleasures be. Sweeter even than gaiety. Yet, whatever enjoyments dwell. In the impenetrable cell. Of the silent heart which nature. Furnishes to every creature. Whatsoever we feel and know. Too sedate for outward show. Such a light of gladness breaks. Pretty kitten. From thy freaks. Spreads with such a living grace. O'er my little Dora's face. Yes, the sight so stirs and charms. Thee, baby, laughing in my arms. That almost I could repine. That your transports are not mine. That I do not wholly fare. Even as ye do, thoughtless pair. 
And I will have my careless season. Spite of melancholy reason. We'll walk through life in such a way. That, when time brings on decay. Now and then I may possess. Hours of perfect gladsomeness. Dot. Pleased by any random toy. By a kitten's busy joy. Or an infant's laughing eye. Sharing in the ecstasy. I would fare like that or this. Find my wisdom in my bliss. Keep the sprightly soul awake. And have faculties to take. Even from things by sorrow wrought. Matter for a jocund thought. Spite of care, and spite of grief. To gamble with life's falling leaf. W. Wordsworth. The Pilgrim. Who would true valor see? Let him come hither. One here will constant be. Come wind, come weather. There's no discouragement. Shall make him once relent. His first avowed intent. To be a pilgrim. Whoso beset him round. With dismal stories. Do but themselves confound. His strength the more is. No lion can him fright. He'll with a giant fight. But he will have a right. To be a pilgrim. Nor enemy, nor fiend. Can daunt his spirit. He knows he at the end. Shall life inherit. Then, fancies, fly away. He'll not fear what men say. He'll labor, night and day. To be a pilgrim. J. Bunyan. The Solitude of Alexander Selkirk. I am monarch of all I survey. My right there is none to dispute. From the center all round to the sea. I am lord of the fowl and the brute. O oh, solitude! Where are the charms? That sages have seen in thy face. Better dwell in the midst of alarms. Than reign in this horrible place. I am out of humanity's reach. I must finish my journey alone. Never hear the sweet music of speech. I start at the sound of my own. The beasts that roam over the plain. My form with indifference see. They are so unacquainted with man. Their tameness is shocking to me. Society, friendship, and love. Divinely bestowed upon man. Oh, had I the wings of a dove. How soon would I taste you again. My sorrows I then might assuage. In the ways of religion and truth. Might learn from the wisdom of age. And be cheered by the sallies of youth. Ye winds that have made me your sport. Convey to this desolate shore. Some cordial endearing report. Of a land I shall visit no more. My friends, do they now and then send. A wish or a thought after me. Oh, tell me I yet have a friend. Though a friend I am never to see. How fleet is a glance of the mind. Compared with the speed of its flight. The tempest itself lags behind. And the swift-winged arrows of light. When I think of my own native land. In a moment I seem to be there. But alas. Recollection at hand. Soon hurries me back to despair. But the sea fowl is gone to her nest. The beast is laid down in his lair. Even here is a season of rest. And I to my cabin repair. There's mercy in every place. And mercy, encouraging thought. Gives even affliction a grace. And reconciles man to his lot. W. Cooper. The Eve of St. John. The Baron of Smailhomie rose with day. He spurred his courser on. Without stop or stay, down the rocky way. That leads to Brother Stone. He went not with the bold Bukluk. His banner broad to rear. He went not gainst the English you. To lift the Scottish spear. Yet his plate, Jack Four was braced, and his helmet was laced. And his vaunt brace of proof he wore. At his saddle girth was a good steel spur. Full ten pound weight and more. The baron returned in three days' space. And his looks were sad and sour. And weary was his courser's pace. As he reached his rocky tower. 
he came not from where Anne Cranmore ran red with English blood, where the Douglas true and the bold Buccleuch gainst keen Lord Evers stood. Yet was his helmet hacked and hewed, his acton pierced and tore, his axe and his dagger with blood imbrued. But it was not English gore. He lighted at the chapelage. He held him close and still. And he whistled thrice for his little footpage. His name was English Will. Come thou hither, my little footpage. Come hither to my knee. Though thou art young, and tender of age. I think thou art true to me. Come, tell me all that thou hast seen. And look thou tell me true. Since I from Smailhomey Tower have been. What did thy lady do? My lady, each night, sought the lonely light. That burns on the wild watchfold. For, from height to height, the beacons bright. Of the English foemen told. The bittern clamored from the moss. The wind blew loud and shrill. Yet the craggy pathway she did cross. To the airy beacon hill. I watched her steps, and silent came. Where she sat her on a stone. No watchman stood by the dreary flame. It burned all alone. The second night I kept her in sight. Till to the fire she came. And, by Mary's might. An armed knight. Stood by the lonely flame. And many a word that warlike lord. Did speak to my lady there. But the rain fell fast, and loud blew the blast. And I heard not what they were. The third night there the sky was fair. And the mountain blast was still. As again I watched the secret pair. On the lonesome beacon hill. And I heard her name the midnight hour. And name this holy eve. And say, come this night to thy lady's bower. Ask no bold baron's leave. He lifts his spear with the bold bukluk. His lady is all alone. The door she'll undo, to her knight so true. On the eve of good St. John. I cannot come, I must not come. I dare not come to thee. On the eve of St. John the first must wander alone. In thy bower I may not be. Now, out on thee, faint-hearted knight. Thou shouldst not say me nay. For the eve is sweet, and when lovers meet. Is worth the whole summer's day. And I'll chain the bloodhound, and the warder shall not sound. And rushes shall be strewed on the stair. So, by the black rude stone, and by holy St. John. I conjure thee, my love, to be there. Though the bloodhound be mute, and the rush beneath my foot. And the warder his bugle should not blow. Yet there sleepeth a priest in the chamber to the east. And my footstep he would know. O oh, fear not the priest, who sleepeth to the east. For to Dryburg the way he has ta'en. And there to say mass, till three days do pass. For the soul of a knight that is slain. He turned him around, and grimly he frowned. Then he laughed right scornfully. He who says the mass right for the soul of that knight. May as well say mass for me. At the lone midnight hour, when bad spirits have power. In thy chamber will I be. With that he was gone, and my lady left alone. And no more did I see. Then changed, I trow, was that bold baron's brow. From the dark to the blood-red high. Now, tell me the mean of the night thou hast seen. For, by Mary, he shall die. His arms shone full bright, in the beacon's red light. His plume it was scarlet and blue. On his shield was a hound, in a silver leash bound. And his crest was a branch of the yew. Thou least, thou least, thou little footpage. Loud dost thou lie to me. For that night is cold, and low laid in the mould. All under the Eildon tree. Yet hear but my word, my noble lord. For I heard her name his name. And that lady bright, she called the knight. Sir Richard of Coldingham. The bold baron's brow then changed, I trow. From high blood-red to pale. The grave is deep and dark, 
and the corpse is stiff and stark. So I may not trust thy tale. Where fair tweed flows round holy Melrose. And Eildon slopes to the plain. Full three nights ago, by some secret foe. That gay gallant was slain. The varying light deceived thy sight. And the wild winds drowned the name. For the dry bird bells ring, and the white monks do sing. For Sir Richard of Coldingham. He passed the court gate, and he opped the tower grate. And he mounted the narrow stair. To the bartisan seat, where, with maids that on her wait. He found his lady fair. That lady sat in mournful mood. Looked over hill and vale. Over Tweed's fair flood, and Mertown's wood. And all down Teviotdale. Now hail, now hail, thou lady bright. Now hail, thou baron true. What news, what news, from Ancram fight? What news from the bold Buchluk? The Ancram moor is red with gore. For many a southern fell. And Buchluk has charged us, evermore. To watch our beacons well. The lady blushed red, but nothing she said. Nor added the baron a word. Then she stepped down the stair to her chamber fair. And so did her moody lord. In sleep the lady mourned, and the baron tossed and turned. And off to himself he said. The worms around him creep, and his bloody grave deep. That it cannot give up the dead. It was near the ringing of Madden Bell. The night was well nigh done. When a heavy sleep on that baron fell. On the eve of good St. John. The lady looked through the chamber fair. By the light of a dying flame. And she was aware of a knight stood there. Sir Richard of Coldingham. Alas! Away, away, she cried. For the Holy Virgin's sake. Lady, I know who sleeps by thy side. But, lady, he will not awake. By Eildon Tree, for long nights three. In bloody grave have I lain. The Mass and the Death Prayer are said for me. But, lady, they are said in vain. By the Baron's brand, near Tweed's fair strand. Most foully slain, I fell. And my restless sprite on the beacon's height. For a space is doomed to dwell. At our trysting place, for a certain space. I must wander to and fro. But I had not had power to come to thy bower. Hadst thou not conjured me so. Love mastered fear, her brow she crossed. How, Richard, hast thou sped? And art thou saved, or art thou lost? The vision shook his head. Who spilleth life, shall forfeit life. So bid thy lord believe. That lawless love is guilt above. This awful sign receive. He laid his left palm on an oaken beam. His right upon her hand. The lady shrunk, and fainting sunk. For it scorched like a fiery brand. The sable score, of fingers four. Remains on that board impressed. And forevermore that lady wore. A covering on her wrist. There is a nun in Dryberg bower. Ne'er looks upon the sun. There is a monk in Melrose Tower. He speaketh word to none. That nun, who ne'er beholds the day. That monk, who speaks to none. That nun was Smailhomie's lady gay. That monk the bold baron. Sir W. Scott. Leader Hawes. Sing Erlington and Cowden knows where Holmes had ants commanding. And Drygrange with the milkwhite ewes, twixt tweed and leader standing. The bird that flees through reed path trees, and gladswood banks ilk morrow. May chant and sing sweet leader haws, and bonny hounds of yarrow. But minstrel burn cannot assuage his grief while life endureth. To see the changes of this age that fleeting time procureth. For mony a place stands in hard case, where blithe folk can nay sorrow. With homes that dwelt on leader braes. And Scott that dwelt on yarrow. Minstrel burn. Epitaph on a hare. Here lies, whom hound did ne'er pursue. Nor swifter greyhound follow. Whose foot ne'er tainted morning dew. 
nor ear heard Huntsman's halloo. Old Tiny, surliest of his kind. Who, nursed with tender care. And to domestic bounds confined. Was still a wild jack hare. Though duly from my hand he took. His pittance every night. He did it with a jealous look. And, when he could, would bite. His diet was of wheaten bread. And milk, and oats, and straw. Thistles, or lettuces instead. With sand to scour his maw. On twigs of hawthorn he regaled. On pippin's russet peel. And, when his juicy salads failed. Sliced carrot pleased him well. A turkey carpet was his lawn. Whereon he loved to bound. To skip and gamble like a fawn. And swing his rump around. His frisking was at evening hours. For then he lost his fear. But most before approaching showers. Or when a storm drew near. Eight years and five round rolling moons. He thus saw steal away. Dozing out all his idle noons. And every night at play. I kept him for his humor's sake. For he would oft beguile. My heart of thoughts that made it ache. And force me to a smile. But now beneath his walnut shade. He finds his long last home. And waits, in snug concealment laid. Till gentler puss shall come. He, still more aged, feels the shocks. From which no care can save. And, partner once of Tiny's box. Must soon partake his grave. W. Cooper. Battle of Audubon. It fell about the Lammas tide. When the Muir men win their hay. The doughty Earl of Douglas rode. Into England, to catch a prey. He chose the Gordons and the Grahams. With them the Lindesays, light and gay. But the Jardines walled not with him ride. And they rue it to this day. And he has burned the dales of time. And part of Bambroshire. And three good towers on Roxburgh fells. He left them all on fire. And he marched up to Newcastle. And rode it round about. Oh, was the lord of this castle. Or was the lady Oat. But up spake proud Lord Percy, then. And oh, but he spake high. I am the lord of this castle. My wife's the lady gay. If thou art he the lord of this castle. S.A.E. will it pleases me. For, ere I cross the border fells. The tain of us Saul die. He took a lang spear in his hand. Shod with the metal free. And for to meet the Douglas there. He rode right furious lie. But oh how pale his lady looked. Frey af the castle wa. When down, before the Scottish spear. She saw proud Percy F.A. Had we T.W.A. been upon the green. And never an eye to see. I wad hay had you, flesh and fell. But your sword saw ye why me. But gee ye up to Audubon. And wait there dais three. And, if I come not ere three dais end. A fa's night ca ye me. The Audubon's a bonny burn. Tis pleasant there to be. But there is not at Audubon. To feed my men and me. The deer rins wild on hill and dale. The birds fly wild from tree to tree. But there is neither bread nor kale. To fend five my men and me. Yet I will stay at Audubon. Where you saw welcome be. And, if ye come not at three days end. A fa's lord I'll see a thee. Thither will I come, proud Percy said. By the might of Our Lady. There will I bide thee, said the Douglas. My troth I plight to thee. They lighted high on Audubon. Upon the bent S.A.E. Brown. They lighted high on Audubon. And threw their pow lions down. And he that had a bonny boy. Sent out his horse to grass. And he that had not a bonny boy. His ein servant he was. But up then spake a little page. Before the peep of dawn. O oh, waken ye, waken ye, my good lord. For Percy's heart at hand. 
Ye lie, ye lie, ye liar loud. Say ye loud I hear ye lie. For Percy had not men ye stream. To dight my men and me. But I hae dreamed a dreary dream. Beyond the Isle of Skye. I saw a dead man win a fight. And I think that man was I. He belted on his good braid sword. And to the field he ran. But he forgot the helmet good. That should have kept his brain. When Percy Y. the Douglas met. I what he was foo fain. They swacked their swords, till sere they swat. And the blood ran down like rain. But Percy with his good braid sword. That could so sharply wound. Has wounded Douglas on the brow. Till he fell to the ground. Then he called on his little foot page. And said, Run speedily. And fetch my ein dear sister's son. Sir Hugh Montgomery. My nephew good, the Douglas said. What wrecks the death of Ain? Last night I dreamed a dreary dream. And I ken the days thy ein. My wound is deep, I fain would sleep. Take thou the vanguard of the three. And hide me by the bracken bush. That grows on yonder lily lee. Oh bury me by the bracken bush. Beneath the blooming briar. Let never living mortal ken. That ere a kindly Scot lies here. He lifted up that noble lord. Why, the sought tear in his ee. -e. He hid him in the bracken bush. That his merry men might not see. The moon was clear, the day drew near. The spears in flinders flew. But Moni a gallant Englishman. Ere day the Scotsmen slew. The Gordons good, in English blood. They steeped their hose and shoon. The Lindesays flew like fire about. Till all the fray was done. The Percy and Montgomery met. That either of other were fain. They swacked swords, and they TWA swat. And I the blood ran down between. Yield thee, O oh yield thee, Percy, he said. Or else I vow I'll lay thee low. Whom to shall I yield, said Earl Percy. Now that I see it must be so. Thou shalt not yield to Lord nor Loon. Nor yet shalt thou yield to me. But yield thee to the bracken bush. That grows upon yon lily lee. I will not yield to a bracken bush. Nor yet will I yield to a briar. But I would yield to Earl Douglas. Or Sir Hugh the Montgomery, if he were here. As soon as he knew it was Montgomery. He stuck his sword's point in the ground. And the Montgomery was a courteous knight. And quickly took him by the hand. This deed was done at Audubon. About the breaking of the day. Earl Douglas was buried at the bracken bush. And the Percy led captive away. Minstrelsy of the Scottish border. Lycidas. Elegy on a friend drowned. In the Irish Channel. Yet once more, O ye laurels, and once more. Ye myrtles brown, with ivy never sear. I come to pluck your berries harsh and crude. And with forked fingers rude. Shatter your leaves before the mellowing year. Bitter constraint, and sad occasion dear. Compels me to disturb your season due. For Lycidas is dead, dead ere his prime. Young Lycidas, and hath not left his peer. Who would not sing for Lycidas? He knew. Himself to sing, and build the lofty rhyme. He must not float upon his watery beer. Unwept, and welter to the parching wind. Without the meat of some melodious tear. Begin then, sisters of the sacred well. That from beneath the seed of Jove doth spring. Begin, and somewhat loudly sweep the string. Hence with denial vain and coy excuse. So may some gentle muse. With lucky words favor my destined urn. And as he passes turn. And bid fair peace be to my sable shroud. For we were nursed upon the selfsame hill. Fed the same flock by fountain, shade, and rill. Together both, ere the high lawns appeared. Under the opening eyelids of the morn. We drove a field, and both together heard. 
What time the grey fly winds her sultry horn, Battening our flocks with the fresh dews of night, Off till the star, That rose, at evening, bright, Toward heaven's descent had sloped his westering wheel. Meanwhile the rural ditties were not mute, Tempered to the odin flute, Rough satyrs danked, And fawns with cloven heel, From the glad sound would not be absent long, and old Damoedas loved to hear our song. But, oh the heavy change, now thou art gone. Now thou art gone, and never must return. Thee, shepherd, thee the woods, and desert caves. With wild thyme and the gaddying vine o'ergrown. And all their echoes mourn. The willows and the hazel copses green. Shall now no more be seen. Fanning their joyous leaves to thy soft lays. As killing as the canker to the rose. Or taint worm to the weanling herds that graze. Or frost to flores, that their gay wardrobe wear. When first the white thorn blows. Such, Lycidas, thy loss to shepherd's ear. Where were ye, nymphs, when the remorseless deep. Clossed o'er the head of your loved Lycidas. For neither were ye playing on the steep. Where your old bards, the famous druids, lie nor on the shaggy top of Mona High, nor yet where Deva spreads her wizard stream. I me. I fondly dream. Had ye been there, for what could that have done? What could the muse herself that Orpheus bore? The muse herself, for her enchanting son, whom universal nature did lament, when by the rout that made the hideous roar, his gory visage down the stream was sent. Down the swift Hebrus to the lesbian shore. Alas! What boots it with incessant care? To tend the homely slighted shepherd's trade. And strictly meditate the thankless muse. Were it not better done as others use? To sport with Amaryllis in the shade. Or with the tangles of Neerus hair. Fame is the spur that the clear spirit doth raise. That last infirmity of noble mind to scorn delights, and live laborious days. But the fair guerdon when we hope to find, and think to burst out into sudden blaze, comes the blind fury with th abhorred shears, and slits the thin-spun life, but not the praise. Phoebus replied, and touched my trembling ears. Fame is no plant that grows on mortal soil, nor in the glistering foil. Set off to th world, nor in broad rumor lies. But lives and spreads aloft by those pure eyes. And perfect witness of all judging Jove. As he pronounces lastly on each deed. Of so much fame in heaven expect thy mead. O fountain Erethus, and thou honored flood. Smooth sliding Mincius, crowned with vocal reeds. That strain I heard was of a higher mood. But now my oat proceeds. And listens to the herald of the sea. That came in Neptune's plea. He asked the waves, and asked the felon winds. What hard mishap hath doomed this gentle swain? And questioned every gust of rugged wings. That blows from off each beaked promontory. They knew not of his story. And sage Hippotades their answer brings. That not a blast was from his dungeon strayed. The air was calm. And on the level brine. Sleek Panope with all her sisters played. It was that fatal and perfidious bark. Built in th eclipse, and rigged with curses dark. That sunk so low that sacred head of thine. Next Camu, reverend sire, went footing slow. His mantle hairy, and his bonnet sedge. Inwrought with figures dim, and on the edge. Like to that sanguine floor inscribed with woe. Ah! Who hath reft, quoth he, my dearest pledge? Last came, and last did go. The pilot of the Galilean lake. Two massy keys he bore of metals twain. The golden oaks, the iron shuts amain. He shook his mitred locks, and stern bespake. How well could I have spared for thee, young swain! Enow of such, as for their belly's sake. Creep and intrude, 
and climb into the fold. Of other care they little reckoning make. Then how to scramble at the shearer's feast. And shove away the worthy bidden guest. Blind mouths. That scarce themselves know how to hold. A sheep hook, or have learned aught else the least. That to the faithful herdman's art belongs. What wrecks it them? What need they? They are sped. And when they list, their lean and flashy songs. Great on their scrannel pipes of wretched straw. The hungry sheep look up, and are not fed. But swoln with wind and the rank mist they draw. Rot inwardly, and foul contagion spread. Besides what the grim wolf with privy paw. Daily devours apace, and nothing said. But that two-handed engine at the door. Stands ready to smite once, and smite no more. Return, Alpheus, the dread voice is past. That shrunk thy streams. Return, Sicilian muse. And call the valets, and bid them hither cast. Their bells, and florets of a thousand hues. Ye valleys low, where the mild whispers use. Of shades, and wanton winds, and gushing brooks. On whose fresh lap the swart star sparely looks. Throw hither all your quaint enameled eyes. That on the green turf suck the honeyed showers. And purple all the ground with vernal flowers. Bring the wraith primrose that forsaken dies. The tufted croteau, and pale jessamine. The white pink, and the pansy freaked with jet. The glowing violet. The musk rose, and the well woodbine, woodbine, With cowslips one that hang the pensive head. And every flower that sad embroidery wears. Bid Amaranthus all his beauty shed. And daffodillies fill their cups with tears. To strew the laureate hearse where Lysid lies. For so to interpose a little ease. Let our frail thoughts dally with false surmise. I me. Whilst thee the shores, and sounding seas. Wash far away, where'er thy bones are hurled. Whether beyond the stormy Hebrides. Where thou perhaps under the whelming tide. Visits the bottom of the monstrous world. Or whether thou to our moist vows denied. Sleeps by the fable of Belarus old. Where the great vision of the guarded mount. Looks towards Namenko's and Bayona's hold. Look homeward angel now, and melt with Ruth. And, O ye dolphins, waft the hapless youth. Weep no more, woeful shepherds, weep no more. For Lycidas, your sorrow, is not dead. Sunk though he be beneath the watery floor. So sinks the day star in the ocean bed. And yet anon repairs his drooping head. And tricks his beams. And with new spangled ore. Flames in the forehead of the morning sky. So Lycidas sunk low, but mounted high. Through the dear might of him that walked the waves. Where other groves, and other streams along. With nectar pure his oozy locks he laves. And hears the unexpressive nuptial song. In the blessed kingdoms meek of joy and love. There entertain him all the saints above. In solemn troops, and sweet societies. That sing, and singing, in their glory move. And wipe the tears for ever from his eyes. Now, Lycidas, the shepherds weep no more. Henceforth thou art the genius of the shore. In thy large recompense, and shalt be good. To all that wander in that perilous flood. Thus sang the uncouth swain to T. H. Oaks and Rills. While the still morn went out with sandals grey. He touched the tender stops of various quills. With eager thought warbling his Doric lay. And now the sun had stretched out all the hills. And now was dropped into the western bay. At last he rose, and twitched his mantle blue. Tomorrow to fresh woods, and pastures new. J. Milton. Elegy written in a country churchyard. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lea. The plowman homeward plods his weary way. And leaves the world to darkness and to me. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the sight. 
and all the air a solemn stillness holds. Save where the beetle wheels his droning flight, and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds. Save that from yonder ivy mantle toar. The moping owl does to the moon complain. Of such as, wandering near her secret bower, molest her ancient solitary reign. Beneath those rugged elms, that yew trees shade, where heaves the turf in many a mouldering heap, each in his narrow cell forever laid. The rude forefathers of the hamlet sleep, the breezy call of incense breathing morn, the swallow twittering from the straw built shed, the cock's shrill clarion, or the echoing horn. No more shall rouse them from their lowly bed. For them no more the blazing hearth shall burn. Or busy housewife ply her evening care. No children run to lisp their sire's return. Or climb his knees the envied kiss to share. Oft did the harvest to their sickle yield tea. Ere furrow oft the stubborn glebe has broke. How jocund did they drive their team afield. How bowed the woods beneath their sturdy stroke. Let not ambition mock their useful toil, their homely joys, and destiny obscure. Nor grandeur here with a disdainful smile, the short and simple annals of the poor, the boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, and all that beauty, all that wealth e'er gave. Await alike th inevitable hour. The paths of glory lead but to the grave. Forgive, ye proud, th involuntary fault if memory to these no trophies raise where through the long drawn aisle and fretted vault the pealing anthem swells the note of praise can storied urn or animated bust back to its mansion call the fleeting breath can honor's voice provoke the silent dust or flat re soothe the dull cold ear of death perhaps in this neglected spot is laid some heart once pregnant with celestial fire. Hands that the rod of empire might have swayed. Or waked to ecstasy the living liar. But knowledge to their eyes her ample page. Rich with the spoils of time did ne'er unroll. Chill penury repressed their noble rage. And froze the genial current of the soul. Full many a gem of purest ray serene. The dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen. And waste its sweetness on the desert air. Some village Hampton, that with dauntless breast. The little tyrant of his fields withstood. Some mute and glorious Milton here may rest. Some Cromwell guiltless of his country's blood. Th applause of listening senates to command. The threats of pain and ruin to despise. To scatter plenty o'er a smiling land and read their history in a nation's eyes. Their lot forbade, nor circumscribed alone. Their growing virtues. But their crimes confined. Forbade to wade through slaughter to a throne. And shut the gates of mercy on mankind. The struggling pangs of conscious truth to hide. To quench the blushes of ingenuous shame. Or heap the shrine of luxury and pride. With incense, Kindled at the muse's flame. Far from the madding crowd's ignoble strife. Their sober wishes never learn to stray. Along the cool sequestered vale of life. They kept the noiseless ten hour of their way. Yet e'en those bones from insult to protect. Some frail memorial still erected nigh. With uncouth rhymes and shapeless sculpture decked. Implores the passing tribute of a sigh. Their name, their years, spelt by th unlettered muse. The place of fame and elegy supply. And many a holy text around she strews. That teach the rustic moralist to die. For who to dumb forgetfulness a prey. This pleasing anxious being e'er resigned. Left the warm precincts of the cheerful day. Nor cast one longing, lingering look behind. On some fond breast the parting soul relies. Some pious drops the closing eye requires. E'en from the tomb the voice of nature cries. E'en in our ashes live their wanted fires. For thee, who, mindful of th unhonored dead, 
dost in these lines their artless tale relate. If chance, by lonely contemplation led, some kindred spirit shall inquire thy fate. Haply some hoary-headed swain may say, Oft have we seen him at the peep of dawn, brushing with hasty steps the dews away, to meet the sun upon the upland lawn, there at the foot of yonder nodding beech, that wreathes its old fantastic roots so high. His listless length at noontide would he stretch, and pour upon the brook that babbles by, hard by yon wood, now smiling as in scorn. Muttering his wayward fancies he would rove. Now drooping, woeful wan, like one forlorn. Or crazed with care, or crossed in hopeless love. One morn I missed him on the customed hill. Along the heath, and near his favorite tree. Another came. Nor yet beside the rill. Nor up the lawn, nor at the wood was he. The next with dirges due in sad array. Slow through the churchway path we saw him borne. Approach and read, for thou canst read, the lay. Graved on the stone beneath yon aged thorn. The epitaph. Here rests his head upon the lap of earth. A youth to fortune and to fame unknown. Fair science frowned not on his humble birth. And melancholy marked him for her own. Large was his bounty, and his soul sincere. Heaven did a recompense as largely send. He gave to Mr. Y all he had, a tear. He gained from Heaven, twas all he wished, a friend. No farther seek his merits to disclose. Or draw his frailties from their dread abode. There they alike in trembling hope repose. The bosom of his father and his God. T. Gray. On the morning of Christ's nativity. This is the month and this the happy morn, wherein the son of Heaven's eternal king, of wedded maid, and virgin mother born, our great redemption from above did bring, for so the holy sages once did sing, that he our deadly forfeit should release, and with his father work us a perpetual peace, that glorious form, that light unsufferable, and that far-beaming blaze of majesty, Wherewith he want at Heaven's high council table. To sit the midst of trinal unity. He laid aside. And here with us to be. Forsook the courts of everlasting day. And chose with us a darksome house of mortal clay. Say, Heaven L.Y. Muse, shall not thy sacred vein. Afford a present to the infant God. Hast thou no verse, no hymn, or solemn strain to welcome him to this his new abode. Now while the heathen by the sun's team untrod, hath took no print of the approaching light, and all the spangled host keep watch in squadrons bright. See how from far, upon the eastern road, the star-led wizards haste with odors sweet. O run, prevent them with thy humble ode, and lay it lowly at his blessed feet. Have thou the honor first thy lord to greet and join thy voice unto the angel choir, from out his secret altar touched with hallowed fire. The hymn. It was the winter wild. While the heaven-born child, all meanly wrapped in the rude manger lies, nature in awe to him, had doffed her gaudy trim, with her great master so to sympathize. It was no season then for her, to wanton with the sun, her lusty paramour. Only with speeches fair. She woos the gentle air. To hide her guilty front with innocent snow. And on her naked shame. Pollute with sinful blame. The saintly veil of maiden white to throw. Confounded that her maker's eyes. Should look so near upon her foul deformities. But he, her fears to cease. Sent down the meeky wide peace. She crowned with olive green came softly sliding, down through the turning sphere, his ready harbinger, with turtle wing the amorous clouds dividing, and waving wide her myrtle wand, she strikes a universal peace through sea and land, no war, or battle sound, was heard the world around, the idle spear and shield were high up hung, 
the hooked chariot stood. Unstained with hostile blood. The trumpet spake not to the armed throng. And king sat still with awful eye. As if they surely knew their Esoviran lord was by. But peaceful was the night. Wherein the prince of light. His reign of peace upon the earth began. The winds, with wonder whist. Smoothly the waters kissed. Whispering new joys to the mild ocean. Who now hath quite forgot to rave. While birds of calm sit brooding on the charmed wave. The stars with deep amaze. Stand fixed in steadfast gaze. Bending one way their precious influence. And will not take their flight. For all the morning light. Or Lucifer that often warned them thence. But in their glimmering orbs did glow. Until their Lord himself bespake, and bid them go. And though the shady gloom. Had given day her room. The sun himself withheld his wonted speed. And hid his head for shame. As his inferior flame. The new enlightened world no more should need. He saw a greater sun appear. Then his bright throne, or burning axle tree, could bear. The shepherds on the lawn. Or ere the point of dawn. Sate simply chatting in a rustic row. Full little thought they then. That the mighty Pan was kindly come to live with them below. Perhaps their loves, or else their sheep, was all that did their silly thoughts so busy keep. When such music sweet, their hearts and ears did greet, as never was by mortal finger strook, divinely warbled voice, answering the stringed noise, as all their souls in blissful rapture took. The air, such pleasure loath to lose. With thousand echoes still prolongs each heavenly close. Nature that heard such sound. Beneath the hollow round. Of Cynthia's seat, the airy region thrilling. Now was almost one. To think her part was done. And that her reign had here its last fulfilling. She knew such harmony alone. Could hold all heaven and earth in happier union. At last surrounds their sight. A globe of circular light. That with long beams the shame-fact night arrayed. The helmed cherubim. And sword seraphim. Are seen in glittering ranks with wings displayed. Harping in loud and solemn choir. With unexpressive notes to heaven's newborn air. Such music, as, tis said. Before was never made. But when of old the sons of morning sung, while the Creator great, his constellation set, and the well balanced world on hinges hung, Anna cast the dark foundations deep, and bid the weltering waves their oozy channel keep. Ring out, ye crystal spheres, once bless our human ears, if ye have power to touch our senses so, and let your silver chime. Move in melodious time. And let the bass of Heaven's deep organ blow. And with your ninefold harmony. Make up full consort to th angelic symphony. For if such holy song. Inwrap our fancy long. Time will run back, and fetch the age of gold. And speckled vanity. Will sicken soon and die. And leprous sin will melt from earthly mold. And hell itself will pass away. And leave her dolorous mansions to the peering day. Yeah, truth and justice then. Will down return to men. Orbed in a rainbow. And, like glories wearing. Mercy will set between. Throned in celestial sheen. With radiant feet the tissued clouds down steering. And he then, as at some festival will open wide the gates of her high palace hall. But wisest fate says, no. This must not yet be so. The babe yet lies in smiling infancy. That on the bitter cross. Must redeem our loss. So both himself and us to glorify. Yet first to those it chained in sleep. The wakeful trump of doom must thunder through the deep. With such a horrid clang. As on Mount Sinai rang. While the red fire and smoldering clouds outbreak. 
The aged earth aghast. With terror of that blast. Shall from the surface to the center shake. When at the world's last session. The dreadful judge in middle air shall spread his throne. And then at last our bliss. Full and perfect is. But now begins. For from this happy day. The old dragon underground. In straighter limits bound. Not half so far casts his usurped sway. And wroth to see his kingdom fail. Swinges the scaly horror of his folded tail. The oracles are dumb. No voice or hideous hum. Runs through the arched roof in words deceiving. Apollo from his shrine. Can no more divine. With hollow shriek the steep of Delphos leaving. No nightly trance or breathed spell. Inspires the paley wide priest from the prophetic cell. The lonely mountains o'er. And the resounding shore. A voice of weeping heard, and loud lament. From haunted spring and dale. EDG'd with poplar pale. The parting genius is with sighing scent. With floorin woven tresses torn. The nymphs in twilight shade of tangled thickets mourn. In consecrated earth. And on the holy hearth. The lars and lemurs moan with midnight plaint. In urns and altars round. A drear and dying sound. Affrights the flamens at their service quaint. And the chill marble seems to sweat. While each peculiar power forgoes his wonted seat. Peor and Balaam. Forsake their temples dim. With that twice battered god of Palestine. And mooned Ashtaroth. Heaven's queen and mother both. Now sits not girt with taper's holy shine. The Libic Hammond shrinks his horn. In vain the Tyrian maids their wounded Tammuz mourn. And sullen Moloch fled. Half left in shadows dread. His burning idol all of blackest hue. In vain with symbols ring. They call the grisly king. In dismal dance about the furnace blue. The brutish gods of Nile as fast. Isis and Oros, and the dog Anubis haste. Nor is Osiris seen. In Memphian grove or green. Trampling the unshowardy grass with lowings loud. Nor can he be at rest. Within his sacred chest. Not but profoundest hell can be his shroud. In vain with timbreled anthems dark. The sable-stoled sorcerers bear his worshipped ark. He feels from Judah's land. The dreaded infant's hand. The rays of Bethlehem blind his dusky eye. Not all the gods beside. Longer dare abide. Not Typhon huge ending in snaky twine. Our babe, to show his godhead true. Can in his swaddling bands control the damned crew. So, when the sun in bed. Curtained with cloudy red. Pillows his chin upon an orient wave. The flocking shadows pale. Troop to th infernal jail. Each fettered ghost slips to his several grave. And the yellow skirted fays. Fly after the night steeds, leaving their moon loved maze. But see the virgin blessed. Half laid her babe to rest. Time is, our tedious song should here have ending. Even as youngest teamed star. Hath fixed her polished car. Her sleeping lord with handmade lamp attending. And all about the courtly stable. Bright harnessed angels sit in order serviceable. J. Milton. Winter. In a drear night December. Too happy, happy tree. Thy branches ne'er remember. Their green felicity. The north cannot undo them. With a sleety whistle through them. Nor frozen thawings glue them. From budding at the prime. In a drear night December. Too happy, happy brook. Thy bubblings ne'er remember. Apollo's summer look. But with a sweet forgetting. They stay their crystal fretting. Never, never petting. About the frozen time. Ah, would twere so with many. A gentle girl and boy. But were there ever any. 
Rith not at past joy. To know the change and feel it. When there is none to heal it. Nor numb sense to steal it. Was never said in rhyme. J. Keats. Christabel. Tis the middle of night by the castle clock. And the owls have awakened the crowing cock. Two, wit, two, who. And hark, again. The crowing cock. How drowsily it crew. Sir Leoline, the baron rich. Hath a toothless mastiff bitch. From her kennel beneath the rock. Mocketh answer to the clock. Four for the quarters, and twelve for the hour. Ever and I, by shine and shower. Sixteen short howls, not over loud. Some say, she sees my lady's shroud. Is the night chilly and dark? The night is chilly, but not dark. The thin gray cloud is spread on high. It covers but not hides the sky. The moon is behind, and at the full. And yet she looks both small and dull. The night is chill, the cloud is gray. Tis a month before the month of May. And the spring comes slowly up this way. The lovely lady, Christabel. Whom her father loves so well. What makes her in the wood so late? A furlong from the castle gate. She had dreams all yesternight. Of her own betrothed night. And she in the midnight wood will pray. For the wheel of her lover that's far away. She stole along, she nothing spoke. The sighs she heaved were soft and low. And naught was green upon the oak. But moss and rarest mistletoe. She kneels beneath the huge oak tree. And in silence prayeth she. The lady sprang up suddenly. The lovely lady, Christabel. It moaned as near, as near can be. But what it is, she cannot tell. On the other side it seems to be. Of the huge, broad-breasted, old oak tree. The night is chill, the forest bare. Is it the wind that moaneth bleak? There is not wind enough in the air. To move away the ringlet curl. From the lovely lady's cheek. There is not wind enough to twirl. The one red leaf, the last of its clan. That dances as often as dance it can. Hanging so light. And hanging so high. On the topmost twig that looks up to the sky. Hush, beating heart of Christabel. Yezu, Maria, shield her well. She folded her arms beneath her cloak. And stole to the other side of the oak. What sees she there? There she sees a damsel bright. Dreyest in a silken robe of white. That shadowy in the moonlight shone. The neck that made that white robe wan. Her stately neck, and arms were bare. Her blue-veined feet unsandaled were. And wildly glittered here and there. The gems entangled in her hair. I guess, twas frightful there to see. A lady so richly clad as she. Beautiful exceedingly. Mary Mother, save me now. Said Christabel, and who art thou? The lady strange made answer meet. And her voice was faint and sweet. Have pity on my sore distress. I scarce can speak for weariness. Stretch forth thy hand, and have no fear. Said Christabel. How camest thou here? And the lady, whose voice was faint and sweet, did thus pursue her answer meet. My sire is of a noble line. And my name is Geraldine. Five warriors seized me yestermorn. Me, even me, a mate forlorn. They choked my cries with force and fright. And tied me on a palfrey white. The palfrey was as fleet as wind. And they rode furiously behind. They spurred amain, their steeds were white. And once we crossed the shade of night. As sure as heaven shall rescue me. I have no thought what men they be. Nor do I know how long it is. For I have lain entranced I wis. Since one, the tallest of the five. Took me from the palfrey's back. A weary woman, scarce alive. Some muttered words his comrades spoke. 
he placed me underneath this oak. He swore they would return with haste. Whither they went I cannot tell. I thought I heard, some minutes passed. Sounds as of a castle bell. Stretch forth thy hand, thus ended she. And help a wretched maid to flee. Then Christabel stretched forth her hand. And comforted fair Geraldine. O oh well bright dame may you command. The service of Sir Leoline. And gladly our stout chivalry. Will he send forth and friends withal. To guide and guard you safe and free. Home to your noble father's hall. She rose, and forth with steps they passed. That strove to be, and were not, fast. Her gracious stars the lady blessed. And thus spake on sweet Christabel. All our household are at rest. The hall as silent as the cell. Sir Leoline is weak in health. And may not well awakened be. But we will move as if in stealth. And I beseech your courtesy. This night, to share your couch with me. They crossed the moat, and Christabel. Took the key that fitted well. A little door she opened straight. All in the middle of the gate. The gate that was ironed within and without. Where an army in battle array had marched out. The lady sank, belike through pain. And Christabel with might and main. Lifted her up, a weary weight. Over the threshold of the gate. Then the lady rose again. And moved, as she were not in pain. So free from danger, free from fear. They crossed the court, right glad they were. And Christabel devoutly cried. To the lady by her side. Praise we the Virgin all divine. Who hath rescued thee from thy distress? Alas, alas! Said Geraldine. I cannot speak for weariness. So free from danger, free from fear. They crossed the court, right glad they were. Outside her kennel, the mastiff old. Lay fast asleep, in moonshine cold. The mastiff old did not awake. Yet she an angry moan did make. And what can ail the mastiff bitch? Never till now she uttered yell. Beneath the eye of Christabel. Perhaps it is the owlet scritch. For what can ail the mastiff bitch? They passed the hall, that echoes still. Pass as lightly as you will. The brands were flat, the brands were dying. Amid their own white ashes lying. But when the lady passed, there came. A ton of light, a fit of flame. And Christabel saw the lady's eye. And nothing else saw she thereby. Save the boss of the shield of Sir Leoline Tall. Which hung in a murky old niche in the wall. Oh softly tread, said Christabel. My father seldom sleepeth well. Sweet Christabel her feet doth bear. And jealous of the listening air. They steal their way from stair to stair. Now in glimmer, and now in gloom. And now they pass the baron's room. As still as death with stifled breath. And now have reached her chamber door. And now doth Geraldine press down. The rushes of the chamber floor. The moon shines dim in the open air. And not a moonbeam enters here. But they without its light can see. The chamber carved so curiously. Carved with figures strange and sweet. All made out of the carver's brain. For a lady's chamber meet. The lamp with twofold silver chain. Is fastened to an angel's feet. The silver lamp burns dead and dim. But Christabel the lamp will trim. She trimmed the lamp, and made it bright. And left it swinging to and fro. While Geraldine, in wretched plight. Sank down upon the floor below. O oh, weary lady, Geraldine. I pray you, drink this cordial wine. It is a wine of virtuous powers. My mother made it of wild flowers. And will your mother pity me? Who am a maiden most forlorn? Christabel answered, Woe is me. She died the hour that I was born. I have heard the grey-haired friar tell. How on her deathbed she did say. 
that she should hear the castle bell. Strike twelve upon my wedding day. O oh, mother dear! That thou wert here. I would, said Geraldine, she were. But soon with altered voice, said she. Off, wandering mother. Peak and pine. I have power to bid thee flee. Alas! What ails poor Geraldine? Why stares she with unsettled eye? Can she the bodiless dead espy? And why with hollow voice cries she? Off, woman, off! This hour is mine. Though thou her guardian spirit be. Off, woman, off, tis given to me. Then Christabel knelt by the lady's side. And raised to heaven her eyes so blue. Alas, said she, this ghastly ride. Dear lady. It hath, wildered you. The lady wiped her moist cold brow. And faintly said, tis over now. Again the wild flower wine she drank. Her fair large eyes, gone glitter bright. And from the floor whereon she sank. The lofty lady stood upright. She was most beautiful to see. Like a lady of a far country. And thus the lofty lady spake. All they who live in the upper sky. Do love you, holy Christabel. And you love them, and for their sake. And for the good which me befell. Even I in my degree will try. Fair maiden, to requite you well. But now unrobe yourself, for I. Must pray, ere yet in bed I lie. Quoth Christabel, so let it be. And as the lady bade, did she. Her gentle limbs did she undress. And lay down in her loveliness. But through her brain of weal and woe. So many thoughts moved to and fro. That vain it were her lids to close. So halfway from the bed she rose. And on her elbow did recline. To look at the Lady Geraldine. Beneath the lamp the lady bowed. And slowly rolled her eyes around. Then drawing in her breath aloud. Like one that shuddered, she unbound. The cincture from beneath her breast. Her silken robe, and inner vest. Dropped to her feet, and full in view. Behold. Her bosom and half her side. A sight to dream of, not to tell. O oh, shield her. Shield sweet Christabel. Yet Geraldine nor speaks nor stirs. Ah! What a stricken look was hers. Deep from within she seems halfway. To lift some weight with sick assay. And eyes the maid and seeks delay. Then suddenly, as one defied. Collects herself in scorn and pride. And lay down by the maiden's side. And in her arms the maid she took. Ah well a day. And with low voice and doleful look. These words did say. In the touch of this bosom there worketh a spell. Which is lord of thy utterance, Christabel. Thou knowest tonight, and wilt know tomorrow. This mark of my shame, this seal of my sorrow. But vainly thou warrest. For this is alone in. Thy power to declare. That in the dim forest. Thou heardst a low moaning. And foundst a bright lady, surpassingly fair. And didst bring her home with thee in love and in charity. To shield her and shelter her from the damp air. S. T. Coleridge. Yarrow Unvisited. 1803. From Stirling Castle we had seen. The mazy forth unraveled. Had trod the banks of Clyde, and Tay. And with the Tweed had travelled. And when we came to Clovenford. Then said my, winsome marrow. Whatever betide, we'll turn aside. And see the braes of Yarrow. Let Yarrow folk, fray Selkirk town. Who have been buying, selling. Go back to Yarrow, tis their own. Each maiden to her dwelling. On Yarrow's banks let herons feed. Hare's couch, and rabbit's burrow. But we will downward with the tweed. Nor turn aside to Yarrow. There's gala water, leader hawes. Both lying right before us. And Dryburg, where with chiming tweed. 
The Lindwhites sing in chorus. There's pleasant TV at Dale, a land. Made blithe with plough and harrow. Why throw away a needful day? To go in search of Yarrow. What's Yarrow but a river bear? That glides the dark hills under. There are a thousand such elsewhere. As worthy of your wonder. Strange words they seemed of slight and scorn. My true love sight for sorrow. And looked me in the face, to think. I thus could speak of Yarrow. Oh. Green, said I, are Yarrow's homes. And sweet is Yarrow flowing. Fair hangs the apple fray the rock. But we will leave it growing. O'er hilly path, and open strath. We'll wander Scotland thorough. But, though so near, we will not turn. Into the dale of Yarrow. Let beeves and homebred kind partake. The sweets of Burnmill Meadow. The swan on still St. Mary's Lake. Float double, swan and shadow. We will not see them, will not go. Today, nor yet tomorrow. Enough if in our hearts we know. There's such a place as Yarrow. Be Yarrow stream unseen, unknown. It must, or we shall rue it. We have a vision of our own. Ah! Why should we undo it? The treasured dreams of times long past. We'll keep them, winsome marrow. For when we're there, although tis fair, twill be another Yarrow. If care with freezing years should come, and wandering seem but folly, should we be loath to stir from home, and yet be melancholy? Should life be dull, and spirits low, twill soothe us in our sorrow. That earth has something yet to show. The bonny homes of Yarrow. W. Wordsworth. Yarrow visited. September 1814. And is this, Yarrow, this the stream? Of which my fancy cherished. So faithfully, a waking dream. An image that hath perished. Oh, that some minstrel's harp were near. To utter notes of gladness. And chase this silence from the air. That fills my heart with sadness. Yet why, a silvery current flows. With uncontrolled meanderings. Nor have these eyes by greener hills. Been soothed, in all my wanderings. And, through her depths, St. Mary's Lake. Is visibly delighted. For not a feature of those hills. Is in the mirror slighted. A blue sky bends o'er yarrow vale. Save where that pearly whiteness is round the rising sun diffused. A tender hazy brightness. Mild dawn of promise. That excludes all profitless dejection. Though not unwilling here to admit a pensive recollection. Where was it that the famous flower of yarrow vale lay bleeding? His bed perchance was yon smooth mound, on which the herd is feeding, and haply from this crystal pool, now peaceful as the morning, the water wraith ascended thrice, and gave his doleful warning. Delicious is the lay that sings, the haunts of happy lovers, the path that leads them to the grove, the leafy grove that covers, and pity sanctifies the verse. That paints, by strength of sorrow, the unconquerable strength of love. Bear witness, rueful Yarrow. But thou that didst appear so fair, to fond imagination, dost rival in the light of day, her delicate creation. Meek loveliness is round thee spread, a softness still and holy. The grace of forest charms decayed, and pastoral melancholy. That region left, the vale unfolds. Rich groves of lofty stature. With yarrow winding through the pomp. Of cultivated nature. And rising from those lofty groves. Behold a ruin hoary. The shattered front of Newark's towers. Renowned in border story. Fair scenes for childhood's opening bloom. For sport of youth to stray in. For manhood to enjoy his strength and age to wear away in. 
Yon cottage seems a bower of bliss. A covert for protection. Of studious ease and generous cares. And every chaste affection. How sweet on this autumnal day. The wildwood fruits to gather. And on my true love's forehead plant. A crest of blooming heather. And what if I enwreath my own? Twere no offense to reason. The sober hills thus deck their brows. To meet the wintry season. I see, but not by sight alone. Loved Yarrow, have I won thee. A ray of fancy still survives. Her sunshine plays upon thee. Thy ever youthful waters keep. A course of lively pleasure. And gladsome notes my lips can breathe. According to the measure. The vapors linger round the heights. They melt, and soon must vanish. One hour is theirs, nor more is mine. Sad thought, which I would banish. But that I know, where'er I go. Thy genuine image, Yarrow, will dwell with me, to heighten joy. And cheer my mind in sorrow. W. Wordsworth. Sir Hugh, or, the Jew's daughter. Yesterday was brave Halloday. And, above all days of the year. The schoolboys all got leave to play. And little Sir Hugh was there. He kicked the ball with his foot. And kept it with his knee. And even in at the Jew's window. He got the bonny B.A. flea. Out then came the Jew's daughter. Will ye come in and dine? I winna come in and I canna come in. Till I get that ball of mine. Throw down that ball to me, maiden. Throw down the ball to me. I winna throw down your ball, Sir Hugh. Till ye come up to me. She pu'd the apple fray the tree. It was baith red and green. She gave it unto little Sir Hugh. With that his heart did win. She wiled him into a e chamber. She wiled him into twa. She wiled him into the third chamber. And that was worst Oda. She took out a little penknife. Hung low down by her gear. She twined this young thing, oh, his life. And a word he ne'er spack mare. And first came out the thick, thick blood. And sign came out the thin. And sign came out the bonny heart's blood. There was nae mare within. She laid him on a dressing table. She dressed him like a swine. Says, Lie ye there, my bonny Sir Hugh. Why, ye re apples red and green. She put him in a case of lead. Says, Lie ye there and sleep. She threw him into the deep draw well. Was fifty fathom deep. A schoolboy walking in the garden. Did grievously hear him moan. He ran away to the deep draw well. And on his knee fell down. Says, Bonnie Sir Hugh, and pretty Sir Hugh. I pray you speak to me. If you speak to any body in this world. I pray you speak to me. When bells were rung and mass was sung. And every body went hame. Then every lady had her son. But Lady Helen had none. She rolled her mantle her about. And sore, sore did she weep. She ran away to the Jews' castle. When all were fast asleep. She cries, Bonnie Sir Hugh, O pretty Sir Hugh. I pray you speak to me. If you speak to any body in this world. I pray you speak to me. Lady Helen, if ye want your son. I'll tell ye where to seek. Lady Helen, if ye want your son. He's in the well sae deep. She ran away to the deep draw well. And she fell down on her knee. Saying, Bonny Sir Hugh, O pretty Sir Hugh. I pray ye speak to me. If ye speak to any body in the world. I pray ye speak to me. Oh. The lead it is wondrous heavy, mother. The well it is wondrous deep. The little penknife sticks in my throat. And I down it to ye speak. But lift me out, O, oh, this deep draw well. And bury me in yon churchyard. Put a Bible at my head, he says. And a testament at my feet. And pen and ink at every side. 
and now lie still and sleep. And go to the back of Maitland Town. Bring me my winding sheet. For it's at the back of Maitland Town. That you and I saw meet. Oh the broom, the bonny, bonny broom. The broom that makes full sore. A woman's mercy is very little. But a man's mercy is more. Anonymous. A likewake dirge. This A.E. night, this A.E. night. Every night and ale. Fire, and sleet, and candle light. And Christ receive thy soul. When thou from hence away art paced. Every night and ale. To Winnie Muir thou comest at last. And Christ receive thy soul. If ever thou gavest hosen and shoon. Every night and ale. Sit thee down and put them on. And Christ receive thy soul. If hosen and shoon thou ne'er gavest nane. Every night and ale. The wind's saw prick thee to the bare bane. And Christ receive thy soul. From Winnie Muir when thou mayst passe. Every night and ale. To brig o oh, dread thou comest at last. And Christ receive thy soul. From brig o oh, dread when thou mayst passe. Every night and ale. To purgatory fire thou comest at last. And Christ receive thy soul. If ever thou gavest meat or drink. Every night and ale. The fire soul never make thee shrink. And Christ receive thy soul. If meat or drink thou never gavest nane. Every night and ale. The fire will burn thee to the bare bane. And Christ receive thy soul. This A.E. night, this A.E. night. Every night and ale. Fire, and sleet, and candle light. And Christ receive thy soul. The red fisherman, or, the devil's decoy. O flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified. Romeo and Juliet. The abbot arose, and closed his book. And donned his sandal shoon. And wandered forth, alone, to look. Upon the summer moon. A starlight sky was o'er his head. A quiet breeze around. And the flowers a thrilling fragrance shed. And the waves a soothing sound. It was not an hour, nor a scene, for aught. But love and calm delight. Yet the holy man had a cloud of thought. On his wrinkled brow that night. He gazed on the river that gurgled by. But he thought not of the reeds. He clasped his gilded rosary. But he did not tell the beads. If he looked to the heaven, twas not to invoke. The spirit that dwelleth there. If he opened his lips, the words they spoke. Had never the tone of prayer. A pious priest might the abbot seem. He had swayed the crozier well. But what was the theme of the abbot's dream? The abbot were loath to tell. Companionless, for a mile or more. He traced the windings of the shore. Oh, beauteous is that river still. As it winds by many a sloping hill. And many a dim o'erarching grove. And many a flat and sunny cove. And terraced lawns, whose bright arcades. The honeysuckle sweetly shades. And rocks. Whose very crags seem bowers. So gay they are with grass and flowers. But the abbot was thinking of scenery. About as much, in sooth. As a lover thinks of constancy. Or an advocate of truth. He did not mark how the skies in wrath. Grew dark above his head. He did not mark how the mossy path grew damp beneath his tread. And nearer he came, and still more near to a pool, in whose recess the water had slept for many a year, unchanged and motionless. From the river stream it spread away the space of half a rood. The surface had the hue of clay and the scent of human blood. The trees and the herbs that round it grew were venomous and foul. And the birds that through the bushes flew. Were the vulture and the owl. The water was as dark and rank. As ever a company pumped. And the perch, that was netted and laid on the bank. 
grew rotten while it jumped. And bold was he who thither came. At midnight, man or boy. For the place was cursed with an evil name. And that name was, the devil's decoy. The abbot was weary as abbot could be. And he sat down to rest on the stump of a tree. When suddenly rose a dismal tone. Was it a song, or was it a moan, oh ho! Oh ho! Above, below. Lightly and brightly they glide and go. The hungry and keen on the top are leaping. The lazy and fat in the depths are sleeping. Fishing is fine when the pool is muddy. Broiling is rich when the coals are ruddy. In a monstrous fright, by the murky light. He looked to the left and he looked to the right. And what was the vision close before him? That flung such a sudden stupor o'er him. Twas a sight to make the hair uprise. And the lifeblood colder run. The startled priest struck both his thighs. And the abbey clock struck one. All alone, by the side of the pool. A tall man sat on a three-legged stool. Kicking his heels on the dewy sod. And putting in order his reel and rod. Red were the rags his shoulders wore. And a high red cap on his head he bore. His arms and his legs were long and bare. And two or three locks of long red hair. Were tossing about his scraggy neck. Like a tattered flag o'er a splitting wreck. It might be time, or it might be trouble. Had bent that stout back nearly double. Sunk in their deep and hollow sockets. That blazing couple of congreve rockets. And shrunk and shriveled that tawny skin. Till it hardly covered the bones within. The line the abbot saw him throw. Had been fashioned and formed long ages ago. And the hands that worked his foreign vest. Long ages ago had gone to their rest. You would have sworn, as you looked on them. He had fished in the flood with Ham and Shem. There was turning of keys, and creaking of locks. As he took forth a bait from his iron box. Minnow or gentle, worm or fly. It seemed not such to the abbot's eye. Gaily it glittered with jewel and gem. And its shape was the shape of a diadem. It was fastened a gleaming hook about. By a chain within and a chain without. The fisherman gave it a kick and a spin. And the water fizzed as it tumbled in. From the bowels of the earth. Strange and varied sounds had birth. Now the battle's bursting peal. Neigh of steed, and clang of steel. Now an old man's hollow groan. Echoed from the dungeon stone. Now the weak and wailing cry. Of a stripling's agony. Cold by this was the midnight air. But the abbot's blood ran colder. When he saw a gasping knight lie there. With a gash beneath his clotted hair. And a hump upon his shoulder. And the loyal churchman strove in vain. To mutter a pater noster. For he who writhed in mortal pain. Was camped that night on Bosworth Plain. The cruel Duke of Gloucester. There was turning of keys, and creaking of locks as he took forth a bait from his iron box. It was a haunch of princely size, filling with fragrance earth and skies. The corpulent abbot knew full well the swelling form and the steaming smell. Never a monk that wore a hood could better have guessed the very wood where the noble heart had stood at bay, weary and wounded, at close of day. Sounded then the noisy glee of a reveling company. Sprightly story, wicked jest. Raided servant, greeted guest. Flow of wine and flight of cork. Stroke of knife and thrust of fork. But, where'er the board was spread. Grace, I ween. Was never said. Pulling and tugging the fisherman sat. And the priest was ready to vomit. When he hauled out a gentleman, fine and fat. With a belly as big as a brimming vat. And a nose as red as a comet. A capital stew, the fisherman said. With cinnamon and sherry. And the abbot turned away his head. 
for his brother was lying before him dead. The mayor of St. Edmundsbury. There was turning of keys, and creaking of locks. As he took forth a bait from his iron box. It was a bundle of beautiful things. A peacock's tail, and a butterfly's wings. A scarlet slipper, an auburn curl. A mantle of silk, and a bracelet of pearl. And a packet of letters. From whose sweet fold. Such a stream of delicate odors rolled. That the abbot fell on his face, and fainted. And deemed his spirit was halfway sainted. Sounds seemed dropping from the skies. Stifled whispers, smothered sighs. And the breath of vernal gales. And the voice of nightingales. But the nightingales were mute. Envious. When an unseen lute. Shaped the music of its chords. Into passion's thrilling words. Smile, lady, smile. I will not set. Upon my brow the coronet. Till thou wilt gather roses white. To wear around its gems of light. Smile, lady, smile. I will not see rivers and hastings bend the knee. Till those bewitching lips of thine. Will bid me rise in bliss from mine. Smile, lady, smile. For who would win? A loveless throne through guilt and sin. Or who would reign o'er vale and hill? If woman's heart were rebel still. One jerk, and there a lady lay. A lady wondrous fair. But the rose of her lip had faded away. And her cheek was as white and as cold as clay. And torn was her raven hair. Ah, ha, said the fisher, in merry guise. Her gallant was hooked before. And the abbot heaved some piteous sighs. For oft he had blessed those deep blue eyes. The eyes of Mistress Shore. There was turning of keys, and creaking of locks. As he took forth a bait from his iron box. Many the cunning sportsman tried. Many he flung with a frown aside. A minstrel's harp, and a miser's chest. A hermit's cowl, and a baron's crest. Jewels of luster, robes of price. Tomes of heresy, loaded dice. And golden cups of the brightest wine. That ever was pressed from the burgundy vine. There was a perfume of sulphur and nitre. As he came at last to a bishop's mitre. From top to toe the abbot shook. As the fisherman armed his golden hook. And awfully were his features wrought. By some dark dream or wakened thought. Look how the fearful felon gazes. On the scaffold his country's vengeance raises. When the lips are cracked and the jaws are dry. With the thirst which only in death shall die. Mark the mariner's frenzied frown. As the swirling wary settles down. When peril has numbed the sense and will. Though the hand and the foot may struggle still. Wilder far was the abbot's glance. Deeper far was the abbot's trance. Fixed as a monument, still as air. He bent no knee, and he breathed no prayer. But he signed, he knew not why or how. The sign of the cross on his clammy brow. There was turning of keys, and creaking of locks. As he stalked away with his iron box, oh ho! Oh ho! The cock doth crow. It is time for the fisher to rise and go. Fair luck to the abbot, fair luck to the shrine. He hath gnawed in twain my choicest line. Let him swim to the north, let him swim to the south. The abbot will carry my hook in his mouth. The abbot had preached for many years. With as clear articulation. As ever was heard in the house of peers. Against emancipation. His words had made battalions quake. Had roused the zeal of martyrs. Had kept the court an hour awake. And the king himself three quarters. But ever since that hour, tis said. He stammered and he stuttered. As if an axe went through his head. With every word he uttered. He stuttered o'er blessing, he stuttered o'er ban. He stuttered drunk or dry. And none but he and the fishermen. Could tell the reason why. 
W. M. Prade. Boadicea. An Ode. When the British Warrior Queen. Bleeding from the Roman rods. Sought, with an indignant mien. Counsel of her country's gods. Sage beneath a spreading oak. Sat the druid, hoary chief. Every burning word he spoke. Full of rage and full of grief. Princess. If our aged eyes. Weep upon thy matchless wrongs. Tis because resentment ties. All the terrors of our tongues. Rome shall perish, write that word. In the blood that she has spilt. Perish, hopeless and abhorred. Deep in ruin as in guilt. Rome, for empire far renowned. Tramples on a thousand states. Soon her pride shall kiss the ground. Hark! The Gaul is at her gates. Other Romans shall arise. Heedless of a soldier's name. Sounds, not arms, shall win the prize. Harmony the path to fame. Then the progeny that springs. From the forests of our land. Armed with thunder, clad with wings. Shall a wider world command. Regent Caesar never knew. Thy posterity shall sway. Where his eagles never flew. None invincible as they. Such the bard's prophetic words. Pregnant with celestial fire. Bending as he swept the chords. Of his sweet but awful lyre. She, with all a monarch's pride. Felt them in her bosom glow. Rushed to battle, fought, and died. Dying, hurled them at the foe. Ruffians, pitiless as proud. He then awards the vengeance due. Empire is on us bestowed. Shame and ruin wait for you. W. Cooper. On the departure of Sir Walter Scott from Abbotsford for Naples, 1831. A trouble, not of clouds, or weeping rain. Nor of the setting sun's pathetic light. Engendered, hangs o'er Eildon's triple height. Spirits of power, assembled there, complain. For kindred power departing from their sight. While Tweed, best pleased in chanting a blithe strain. Saddens his voice again, and yet again. Lift up your hearts, ye mourners. For the might. Of the whole world's good wishes with him goes. Blessings and prayers in nobler retinue. Then sceptred king or laureled conqueror knows. Follow this wondrous potentate. Be true. Ye winds of ocean, and the midland sea. Wafting your charge to soft Parthenope. W. Wordsworth.